So today we start off with Navi Mumbai. Yes. Navi, yes. Navi. Navi Mumbai team ready? Anybody from Navi Mumbai can confirm? Doctor Vira, ready? There are already a few. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Doctor Vira. How are you? Yes, sir. Fine, sir. Okay. Sir, I think uh, yes. almost uh, all the cadets from that is uh, delegates from all the teams uh, joined. Very good. Very good. Excellent. So Navi Mumbai is ready, na? Yes, sir. And uh, your guide is Mr. Ajay Chatterjee. Ajay, Mr. Ajay Chatterjee is he there? I don't think he has come in as yet. Cool. I have to change my. I I have to just leave the meeting and come back in my new.
डॉक्टर योगमाला आई थिंक मिस्टर नैयर इज वेटिंग टू बी लेट इन यू जस्ट कैन कन्फर्म आई जॉइन हिज जॉइन थैंक यू गुड मॉर्निंग राजीव very good morning trust this works as a yes. voice check also yes <laughs> it does good, good morning, morning sir. sir good morning dr yogmala good morning everyone judges judges have logged in uh, mr ramamurthy is there uh captain saggi may not be there Good morning, Mr. Rama Murthy. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Good morning, sir. How are you? I am fine. Wonderful. Hmm. Rajiv, you give Mr. Uh, Minotra call. Mr. Doji. Good morning to you. Eight forty-five. There's still time. A couple of minutes. Eight forty-five. Uh, judges and guides. Sir, you are happily on the twenty-fifth floor. Twenty-fifth floor. Yes. Okay. I'm very happy. Yes. Only thing is some repair work is going on on the thirty-sixth floor. I hope they don't keep disturbing me. That's all. Good morning, Mr. Agarwal. Why, sir? The picture is so blurred. I don't know. I think. Uh, Sir, the light is coming from behind you. If you keep it in front, it will come out brighter. No, no, that is I. I'll change the background. Okay, background yeah, is exactly. the problem. Mm -hmm. Something fundamentally wrong. Ajay, will you call Mr. Mehra? Sorry, sir. Yes, 
सर दत्ता हाँ दत्ता सर So, Captain Sagi is not there, and the judge is Mr. Datta. Mr. Ajay Chatterjee is not joined. If you people allow, I'll, I will take one minute to go out and uh, I mean to re-log myself. Yes, sir, please. Okay. If you don't but it is looking much better now, sir. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to do that. Just a minute, I'll re -log. Mr. Ajay Chatterjee is there. Good morning, Mr. Chatterjee. Chatterjee, sir, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chatterjee. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Loud and clear, sir. Yeah. So, today, sir, I think all been are present now. And I see only one judge, Mr. Ramamurti. Yes, sir. Mr. Datta is just joining. Okay. What about Sagi? Mr. Sagi might be on the road right now. So, depending on his connectivity, otherwise he'll be watching the uh, this uh, recordings. Good. Because today he may be a bit on the road. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mr. Datta. Good morning. Can you see me? Good morning, sir. Yes, Ajinto, I can see you. Yeah. You can see me? So put state control behind you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Good morning, Murti, sir. Very good morning. All good? All good. N NMC all have joined, I think. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. So you can, if the judges Thank agree, you, you can uh, start, Thanks. I suppose. Yes, sir. Thank you. I will request Gaurav. Yes, sir. And we'll all go on mute. And uh, just for information, who is the chairperson who is going to do this? Uh, Rajiv Nair or somebody else? Rajiv. 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 There's no doubt on that, sir. Rajiv. Pardon? There's no doubt on that, sir. Uh, Rajiv will be chairing the sessions. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, warm welcome to all of you all. Welcome to yet another exciting mock, session, mock IMO session where the future leaders of Maritime India battle it out, this time on a Marpol topic, action plan for marine plastic later. This, as you know, is the first program of this kind in line with the country's identified requirements of training future leaders of Maritime India in matters of IMO. As you know, the competition is being held for two topics. One, and second on Marpal. And second on Marpal. The uh, HW round, uh, intra campus round, was completed most successfully last, last week. And today and tomorrow's intra campus round is about tackling marine plastic litter. A total of 79 teams from six campuses registered for this topic, out of which only 42 teams reached this stage. 
and will compete over the next two days to continue to the next round. A core committee of four has been working on this event for the past six months to bring it to this stage of fruition. The four uh, core committee members are Mr. Rajiv Nayar, a graduate of DMIT 83-87. Rajiv is the person who conceptualized this event from scratch. After 26 years in shipping in various capacities, afloat and ashore, he moved to the oil industry where he was CEO of SR Oil Field Services India. Since his separation from uh, SR in November 2020, Rajiv has been a maritime consultant he has been actively involved with the STCW code as part of the team which works on various aspects of the STCW subcommittee of IMO and has extensive experience at various sessions at the IMO. Mr. Rajesh Doshi, the second member of the uh, core committee, represents the Mumbai branch of the Institute of Marine Engineers. A DMD graduate of 1975, he is currently promoter director of Dwarka Kutch Ferries and Tourism Private Limited which has successfully uh, proven the concept of operating a modern passenger ferry between Okha and Manvi across the Gulf of Kutch. Mr. Doshi is always willing to share his experience and his vision for the future of inland waterways, coastal shipping, as well as education and training. He believes in sharing his knowledge to a large extent. Dr. Yogmala has been a pillar of strength and an assistant professor of law at the Kochi campus of the IMU, with expertise in international maritime law, IMO conventions, hazardous waste, commercial arbitrations, and, and what have you. A PhD in international maritime law, she has to her credit 10 peer-reviewed research papers as, and is a much sought after resource person for uh, formulating uh, course modules. I am Commander Gaurav Agarwal, retired. I represent the DMT Mary alumni a graduate of DMT 1995, I am active in, uh, in alumni affairs and believe in giving back to the alma mater. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that this is a unique blend of academia, alumni, industry, and uh, professional bodies who have gotten together to make this event a success. We have with us for the Marpal session a panel of three extremely eminent judges. Mr. M. V. Ramamurthy. Mr. M. V. Ramamurthy has just retired from Reliance uh, Industries as President Shipping. He is a graduate in Mechanical Engineering, postgraduate in Shipbuilding and Naval Architecture, a past president of the Institute of Marine Engineers India, and an honorary fellow of the Company of Master Marinos of India. His experience includes about 10 years as seagoing marine engineer, 8 years in shipbuilding, and 35 years in operation of, of shipping liquid bulk handling terminals and associated development and new build projects. I think this adds up to a total of 53 years. Well, my age is 57. And, and that is Mr. Ramamurthy experience. Mr. Ramamurthy has been uh, an Indian delegate to several IMO uh, MEPC meetings for many years, being part of its working and correspondence group. Welcome, Mr. Ramamurthy, sir. Thank you. Captain M. M. Sagi. Captain M. M. Sagi is superannuated as nautical advisor to the government of India. He's an extra master and master in business and administration. He has been a trustee of the Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust, Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust, Mumbai Port Trust, and Kandla Port Trust. He has led the Indian delegation to the Maritime Safety Committee of the IMO and the International Oil Pollution Compensation Fund on numerous occasions. He has been the leader of the Indian delegation to the Nairobi Wreck Removal Convention. He is actively associated with developments and reforms related to shipping, port, logistics, coastal shipping, inland waters, training, marine casualties, maritime legislation, and other maritime concerns. Mr. Asintya B. Datta. Mr. Datta is a marine engineer from Calcutta uh, DMT 1983-87. He joined SCI as fifth engineer and continued his fleet service in 2002, <coughs> around 15 years at various ranks, including seven years as chief engineer. After two years ashore in SCI, 
He joined the DG Shipping in November 2004 and continued there in 2019 as as Deputy Director General Shipping Technical. Presently, he is holding the responsibility of the Secretary with the Indian Ocean MU Secretariat. He has represented India either as member or as the head of various Indian delegations uh, to uh, sessions and meetings of the IMO, which include MEPC, HTW, greenhouse gases, low sulfur fuel oil steering committee of the CO2 update study, etc. That, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Mr. Datta. We are glad to have you with us here today. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the eminence of our judges. And I'm sure there is no doubt as to their standing in the, uh, in the industry. Now, continuing with the program, I now hand you over to Mr. Rajiv Nayar to, ac to acquaint you with the methodology of this unique session. I would like to remind you that Mr. Rajiv Nayar is the chief architect of this, uh, of this competition. Over to you, Rajiv. Thank you, Gaurav. And thank you, judges. Thank you, guides. Thank you, campus coordinators for being here. And now I will start with the participants. Dear delegates, to me, you are now delegates, and I'll be taking on the role over the next couple of days of steering you through two days at the various campuses, campus by campus. Before I dawn on that role, just a thought as what we are trying to do. We know in classrooms and everywhere, you do get taught regulations. You imbibe them, you understand them, but this is our effort to make you really understand how regulations come about, because we believe that is equally important to understand regulations in the future, which you will be exposed to, and we hope in the future you will be part of decision-making processes. So develop, to develop that competence is an effort of this of ours. So what we have tried to do is bring you, run you through a sort of an IMO session. How does it actually happen? Of course, a session like MFCPC would run across a full week, five, six days. We are trying to do it in a shorter version. So it is a bit condensed, but just to give you a flavor of how things work, how important it is to understand how to gain confidence of other member states so that proposals can move forward. So how does it actually work? We took you through the first step, which is uh, writing of papers. And that is the first step which took place, which you have completed. Now you would have noted that some of you moved into the intra campus, some of you did not. Don't take this as an opportunity where you have gone out of the race. Take it as an opportunity where you have learned seeing the papers of those who have progressed to the next session as what they did, which brought them to that. But please take this understanding with you that to really put your views across at IMO, you do require to submit papers. And that is the only way to go. So paper presentation is one of the most important aspect of IMO, which is now done. Now you land up today at the session of IMO to discuss your papers. Having reached there, there is a certain process which is followed in IMO. O opening of the IMO by somebody like Secretary General would be carried out. You would have a predefined agenda. The agenda would be run through. And then a chairman from the member states would be appointed. A vice chair from the member states would be appointed to conduct the session. We do appreciate that this is the first time Therefore, we felt that rather than appoint from among the delegates who are here and expose them to something which for a first time would be slightly difficult, I have taken on the role of guiding you through that part. But please do remember it's only about the member states, their chairman, their vice chairman conducts the proceedings. Then it goes as per the agenda listed. And the first thing to get adopted is the agenda. And then the various topics come in. So one of the agenda items would be development of an action plan to address marine plastic litter from ships. 
this agenda item, which is what we are going to pick up today and move forward on that to try and see if a consensus can be built up among the member states as what is the best way forward. The consensus is what will drive the regulations. So that is what we are going to do over the next six campus sessions today and tomorrow. There are certain aspects which happen at IMO means the papers which get support from other member states substantially, that means by a majority, move to working groups for further work because it is not, it is ideal if one paper has everything which the world wants. But you would have possibly seen that is why we gave you six sort of different criteria to think about. Not everybody is thinking along the same lines, even though the problem is the same because of their local issues. So the approach of a developing country, a developed country, all would be different. And mind you, while NGOs may be there, the voting rights remain only with the sovereign states member of IMO. So that is what we try to bring to this floor to you, that you will find that there are differences, how, how you view a problem, how you give your solutions, depending on which nation, sovereign state you are representing. So that is why we brought it into sort of six categories. Ideally, you can understand that at an IMO, there would be a lot many more individual national interests and each having its own uh, views, its own desires, its own aims and targets to accomplish. So having this sort of gelled into a consensual approach, part of the work is done in working groups, which we are not doing at this stage, because you can understand spread over over five days and doing it in two hours is a very different thing. But we hope to bring you a flavor of that as we move to the next round where some of your papers will qualify to go to. So the way we will run it now, and this is again some deviations which I'll point out along the way what we do from IMO so you have clarity. Let us say we now have the Navi Mumbai campus which has got seven paper submissions which have qualified for this round. So for us now you are seven member states on the floor of the house and you seven member states will be invited in the order A, B, C, D, E, F. If there are two Bs, it will be B1, B2, whatever the naming will be in that way, you'll be invited one by one to introduce your paper. Here is our first deviation. At IMO, presentations are not permitted. There the introduction means you are introducing what you have put in your paper because everybody has come reading your paper, but they want to hear your views in a summary format to then be able to respond to what they agree with, what they feel could be improved, or what they feel is not in their interest. Mind you, it is not a question and answer which happens at this intervention. It is not a debate. You are not going to earn brownie points by sort of criticizing them. You have to appreciate it's a national view expressed by a sovereign state. And what is your aim is to ensure that you either are aligned with that or you want that proposal if it is moving forward to have views which align it with your aims and objectives. So it's more of a collaborative effort and not a sort of a adversary effect, effort unless it's something so drastic that it really is something which is not acceptable to you. So your language, your approach, your respect to your co-delegates is extremely important. So the sequence we'll follow is rather than have a bunch of papers which have commonalities expressed, we will go one by one to make it a simpler process. In addition, we have allowed you in this round to make a presentation. That is because presentation is also an important competence to gain, which we appreciate from the Institute's point of view. And so we give you an opportunity, plus developing the skills for just introduction by verbal would possibly come better after this round. So we would give you an opportunity to present. And thereafter, I will open the floor to the delegates 
to comment on that from that campus only. No other campus will interfere in a particular campus affairs, this intra campus. So the delegates will give their interventions. This way, I will treat starting with Navi Mumbai seven submissions one by one. Then I will take a short break to summarize my notes and give you a conclusion of how that Navi Mumbai session went. This is the process we will follow. A bit of a sort of a housekeeping advice, which you should get used to as delegates. When I start the process and say, let's say uh, the first paper starts, team A1, introduce your paper. This is the only time you will take the floor without raising your hand. Once you're finished, you'll say thank you and you'll again mute yourself. After that, any intervention, anybody wants to take the floor, requires to raise his hand. Please do not unmute yourself and start speaking unless you're invited after raising your hand to speak. So with this background, I will now hand it over to Gaurav to take it forward so that we can start the Navi Mumbai session. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv. <clears throat> I think you explained it in, in a very uh, neat and concise manner, uh, amplifying all the instructions and guidelines, which will go a long way towards making these participants the future leaders of Maritime India. Now, uh, it is my honor to introduce the Navi Mumbai Marpol Guide, Mr. Ajoy Chatterjee. Mr. Ajoy Chatterjee sailed as engineer officer on various ocean going ships for 12 years out of which six were as chief engineer. He's a former chief surveyor and additional director general with the government of India and chief examiner of uh, engineers. He superannuated from the DG shipping on 31st December 2008 after more than 25 years of service with the DG shipping and allied offices. After retirement, on invitation, he served for nine years from 2010 to 2018, from January 2010 to December 2018, as a principal and head of the Great Eastern Institute of Maritime Studies, Lonavla, during which period he was also a member of the academic and executive councils of the IMU. During his service with the DG Shipping, he was privileged to lead several Indian delegations to the IMO. In fact, his experience is so rich that even today he is in great demand with the IMO, who keep engaging him for, as a consultant from time to time. He has authored one book. Auditing the ISM, which is a guide for ISM auditors. Thank you very much, Mr. Chatterjee, for agreeing to be a guide for this event. And welcome to this show. I also uh, have the honor to uh, introduce the Navi Mumbai campus coordinator, Dr. G. Veera Santil Kumar, ME, PhD. Dr. Veera Santil Kumar is an assistant professor with the Indian Maritime University at the, Mum at the Navi Mumbai campus. He has published around 40 papers in international journals and conferences and authored two books. He has vast teaching experience of around 18 years. He completed his PhD in 2017. Thank you, uh, Dr. Santhil Kumar, uh, for the good job done as the campus coordinator for the Navi Mumbai campus. I now hand over back to Mr. Rajiv Nayar and request him to chair the first session. Over to Rajiv. Thank you. Good morning, delegates. Welcome now to the agenda item, development of an action plan to address marine plastic litter from ships. We have seven submissions on this from Navi Mumbai, from A2, B2, B3, C1, D1, E1, F2. I now invite A2 to take the floor and introduce the paper. Thank you, Chairperson. <clears throat> Greetings to the respected Chairperson and distinguished delegates present today. This presentation will provide potential solutions for efficiently facing the issue of marine plastic pollution. Our first amendment says to mark the fishing gears with a unique identity in order to facilitate identification of its owner for effectively reducing the intentional or unintentional abandonment or discharge of fishing gates. 
a robust method needs to be advised that can help in identifying the owner of the discarded or abandoned fishing gear and further strict actions can be taken to make the owners of the fishing gears and the parties engaged in fishing operations to accurately comply with the regulations another issue is the end product of the degradation since biodegradable materials finally degrade to carbon dioxide methane and water they do not have any additional impact on marine ecosystems once they have been degraded nylon nets on the contrary may well lose their go scale fishing capacity when they degrade but they do not disappear from the system they may degrade into smaller particles that will continue to disturb various processes in the marine ecosystem a study reveals that 70% by weight of microplastics were found floating on the ocean were related to fishing a manufacturing method for fishing nets have recently been developed that uses biodegradable resin which can be decomposed by microbial action after a certain amount of time underwater drawback with such nets is their price which is higher as compared to the traditional nylon nets which would not encourage a fisher to purchase it unless the net offers some other economic benefits that offsets the high purchase price adoption of biodegradable fishing nets will likely have to be supported by some sort of subsidies authority should be able to identify even the smallest of the vessels and should be inspected on a regular basis so that the fishers and other vessels owners cause less pollution to their fishing gears through their fishing gears and other plastic materials that are in use and with this we would like to shift our focus to another issue as we all understand majority of the marine plastic litter is a result of operations by fishing vessels only less than 1% of the total vessels entered in fishing have a gross tonnage of over 100 tons rest of it has no obligation to implement and maintain a plan or a record book and this increases the risk of illegal disposal and with this we would like to suggest our next amendment an amendment to make the vessels with less, with less than 400 gross tonnage to maintain a proper and strict garbage record book with serious consequences if done otherwise with no relaxation given to the vessels under 100 gross tonnage and with a timely inspection of the record books under mapol nx5 a global ban on the discharge of fishing gears and a mandatory reporting of ald fg to the organization is prescribed this can be accomplished only if the owner of the fishing gear so lost can be identified it is evident from a large volume of fishing gear found in the oceans that the regulations are not being complied with if they were they would be reported to the flag state or the coastal state in accordance with regulation 10.6 which is not the case as reporting requirement is barely implemented In spite of the global ban on discharge of fishing gear in the sea, it is a fact that fishing gear represents the largest category in terms of volume. A research demonstrated that fishing gear is being intentionally discarded from fishing vessels into the sea, which is a practice in full contravention of the regulation of Annex Five. Coming to our next amendment, we would like to suggest that the marine litter already present in the oceans must be picked up as soon as possible. this is because even if the litter is no longer able to ghost fish it's constantly moving to the areas which are either inaccessible or difficult to reach and the litter is continuously breaking down into microplastics and microplastics macroplastics this is a serious issue as marine life cannot differentiate between food and very small size microplastics another similar topic of concern in relation to marine litter is microbeads Microbeads are non-biodegradable, and this means they stay in the environment for a long period of time. Microbeads cannot be disposed of, though natural and eco-friendly alternatives of microbeads are available and should be considered. As being natural, they do not send off toxic materials into into the oceans. Concerned authorities should work towards clearing out litter before they reach the deep trenches in the vast seas. Passengers getting on board should be in, instructed to strictly follow or adhere to no microbeads product policy or they should be provided with biodegradable replacements so that the release of microbeads during during a voyage can be minimized to some respectable extent they should also be counseled on why saving aquatic fauna is of great concern and how civilians can contribute towards the same as when counseling is done just prior to getting on board it would induce a much greater and positive impact than in general although discharge of all other garbage including plastic is barred 
compliance with these guidelines relies totally upon waste management practices on board vessels our primary concern should be focused on prevention of loss of fishing gear educating fishermen would be valuable for raising the awareness in relation to aldfg low awareness levels in the countries with coastlines have led to the contamination and accumulation of plastic waste in the surrounding water bodies hence an urgent need to spread the awareness among the locals is observed as the ingestion of microplastic by aquatic life represents a potential risk even to the human health by means of seafood consumption along with the organisms at higher trophic levels in continuation to the problem with of microbeads and non reusable plastics we would like to bring in our next amendment which says to prohibit the use of plastic products that come under type 6 category of plastics and replacing them with reusable and recyclable products on board ship rendering them as non recyclable and non reusable we would like to bring our presentation towards the end with our last amendment an amendment for certifying the compliance with marpol nx5 which must be carried on board ship as a proof of compliance with the regulations it is well known that the regulations to carry a statutory certificate on board of marpol nx is other than for nx5 are already in force the most important feature of marpol nx5 when it comes to tackling the issue of marine plastic pollution is the complete ban on disposable of plastics into the environment this strongly indicates the requirement of statutory certificate for nx5 and with this we would like to conclude our presentation i would like to thank the chairperson for giving us this opportunity thank you thank you a2 i now open the floor for interventions i see the card of b2 is up b2 the floor is yours thank you chairperson for giving me this opportunity Group B wants to appreciate Group A for its idea of replacing epoxy pens with Renault Dolphinus. Also observed that they have put emphasis on the port reception facilities and other constructive measures, which is in alignment with this Category B. Therefore, Category B wants to support Category A. However, wants to address certain problems and suggest possible solution to it, which they might take. Number one. marine debris law and policy in certain countries marine pollution as a distinct subject has neither been dealt within a policy nor economics in certain countries in tackling marine litter certain policies has been restricted to the ban of only single use plastic a fact that is evidenced by the international report of the marine litter legislation by the united nations environment program in 2016 number 2 The major problem in certain countries is ship breaking yard. The persistent organic pollutants are chemicals that are highly toxic. Remain intact in environment for long period become widely distributed geographically, bioaccumulate through the food web, accumulate in fatty tissue of living organisms and pose a serious risk to them. Suggestion that category B wants to give and other member state might implement. Creation of recycling ships act in countries where there is a poorly developed standard for ship recycling as these are one of the major source of marine plastic litter and also should have better port reception facilities as according to FAO reports countries which had better port reception facilities for fishing has lesser number of ALDFG at seabed and vice versa example can be taken from countries like Egypt ongoing project for mediterranean sea is some like swim h2020 efh eg3 and ssfa medpol which is based on the assessment of marine litter in egyptian mediterranean coastline the process undergoes like select two beaches per country country close to river mouth as appropriate identify the local partner in charge of the project carry out national workshop to disseminate best practices related to adopt beach measures investigate and record on a periodic basis the contribution of local rivers on marine litter found on beaches undertake periodic clean up of the selected beaches prepare periodic reports on the activities undertaken i find the member state would find this suggestion useful and might implement in their program thank you chairperson for giving me this opportunity thank you b2 i see no further cards on the floor Okay, I see now B three has raised a card. B three, uh, if you could 
in concise form give your intervention please meethi go ahead thank you chairperson for giving me the opportunity to speak on this platform and i would like to support the i would like to support the ideas of uh, team b3 and they are um, on my basis they are appropriate and can be implemented and i completely support the ideas of b3 thank you very much uh, to uh, understand clearing you are supporting the proposal of a2 b3 is that correct yes a2 on my back a2 yes the team a2 i am supporting thank the you very much Thank you, B three, for this clarification. D one, I see your card is up. The floor is yours. Thank you, Chair, for giving the floor. Uh, I agree with the point of the proposal of statutory certificate for the annexure five uh, given by the team A one. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you, D one. I see no further. cards on the table and i assume that the rest of the member states do not have views on this particular paper thank you moving that with that uh, i move on to b2 you may kindly introduce your paper thank you sir person for giving me this opportunity Good morning to our honorable chief, uh, honorable chairperson, our panel of judges, and delegation of member state from various countries. For I have learned to look on nature not as in the hour of thoughtlessness, youth, but hearing often time the still sad music of humanity. With this thought by William Wordsworth, Category B wants to elaborate the dangers of LDFG and an ardent need for amendment of Marple and Exerfine. Let us give a peek into a small documentary by Food and Agricultural Organization of the United States, United Nations. Without the ocean, I would not exist. The source of life for me and my family. My father taught me that it's our duty to respect it and keep it that way. Teach my body to respect the ocean. The species is not as easy as it is to be when I was young. We don't treat the ocean with the same respect. Is this what we want to leave for future generations? Our oceans give us so much. Should take care of them in return. These are the very truth of countries like Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia. depends on aquaculturing and tourism as a major source of income now on assessment of danger in kuala nerus and kuantan port of malaysia water samples were collected from two areas kuala nerus and kuantan port as these regions were center of human activity causing damage to marine environment using the atr fpir analysis the possible polymer materials which were found polyester polystyrene polyamide polyvinyl chloride and polypropylene why aldfg is a problem according to the jism report the small scale fisheries sector provide food and supports livelihood for local population around the world employing estimated 37 million people with an additional 100 million employed in associated activities such as processing and marketing while large scale fisheries account for half of the total global fish production used for direct human consumption only 10% of the total global captured fisheries workforce is represented in the large scale fisher industries thus the problem of aldfg is dynamic 
which affects the land, ship, and the sea. If we go into the roots of the problem, study shows that large predators like Mediterranean fin whale, which is the largest filter feeder, can swallow up to 70,000 liters of seawater at one go, which also allow her to swallow plastic in large quantities. Not only by ingested directly by aquatic life, plastic particles are also eaten by absorption, absorption by the surface. About 46% of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is represented by the fishing gears, and about one third of the marine litter in European seas, which goes to 11,000 tons per year. Every year, 640k tons of lost or abundant fishing equipment and gears enters the ocean, equivalent in weight more than 9,000 blue whales. The diagram which we see beside is the spatial distribution of abundant lost and otherwise discarded crab pod densities in Chesapeake Bay, according to a report by Chesan. Reasons for the loss of the gear? Sea flow topography. Tides, tents, waves, and heavy winds also play a role in gear losses. Wildlife interactions with fishing gear can also cause foul damage and move gear off position, which can lead to gear losses. Gear conflicts primarily occur in areas where there is a high concentration of fishing activities. Passive gears such as spots and set inlets are particularly prone to being towed away or extremely fouled, either intentionally or deliberately. By active gear such as trawls, trawls or bridges in places where they are used concurrently, thus we can conclude from this if human fallacies are neglected, nature fallacies can never be neglected. Thus, the main culprit behind the game is the hostility of the nature forces which cannot be avoided. So there must be a cure beforehand to give away for any mistakes done and done. As discussed earlier, from the diagrams we can see there is a tangled aquatic life by fishing here. There is a tangled propeller and we can see remains of the LDFG on land. Group B would like to provide a solution to the problem by proposing following amendments to Marcon and Exer 5, as well as some general advices to other member states. We must keep in mind that though human mistakes can be reduced, natural methods of gear loss cannot be ignored. For these reasons, remedy should be strong to extract what already has been lost. Proposal Fishing vessels, irrespective of their tonnage, must have garbage record book being carried on board as well as each fishing vessel must have a local identification number for record keeping. Advice, fishing gear must be marked to provide a simple, practical, economical and verifiable means of identifying ownership of fishing gear or oceans of fishing gear as well as their connection to vessel or vessels or operator or operators conducting the fishing operation in the event of accidental loss or discharge. Record keeping should be on both hands, that is, fishing vessels and port reception facilities. Therefore, there must be some means of simultaneous exchange of data. Proposal, digital garbage record book, which needs to be updated each and every time action of dumping LDFG is carried out. Advice, only 150 countries has ratified Marco and Exa 5. So the committee demands participation of more countries. Indeed, the large volume of fishing gear found in the oceans is certainly not falling under the exceptions as provided under Regulation 6. Proposal, revision of Regulation 6 of Annex 5 and inclusion of new and newer LDFG types in it. Advice, imposing a fine if on investigation and proven that it is caused by human failure and not natural cause. Last but not the least, plastic cannot be replaced by steel or wooden stuff, as both has its own disadvantages and weightage of carriage and cost. However, plastic can be replaced with non-toxic and non-harmful methods, proposal, banning of single-use plastics on board, and use of HDPE and polypropylene, which is EPA approved on board. Advice, DR scheme and plastic scan scheme to be introduced on board. Category B, the Federation of Malaysia being a tourism, third largest contributor to Malaysia's GDP, and fishing reliant country, intends to clear its waterways from LDFG, 
support its member state in this cause. However, the ideals are open to challenge and welcome other member states to scrutinize the idea, which may see the light of improvisation. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to express our opinion. Thank you very much, B2, for your movie presentation as well as the presentation. I now open the floor for interventions. I see the card of A2 is up. A2, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairperson. We would like to agree on the uh, uh, amendments and solution put forward by B2 on the matter of ALDFG. Thank you, sir. Thank you, A2. I now invite B3 to take the floor. B3, you had raised your card. Uh, have you withdrawn your card? Then I will move on. I see the card of D1. D1, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairperson, for giving me this opportunity. Our team agrees to the point of labeling of fishing nets given by team B2. But we have a disagreement in labeling it with IMO ship number as every fishing vessel doesn't have a IMO ship identification number. Thank you, sir. Thank you, D1. Uh, B2, you can please stop your presentation. Any other member state would like I see no further cards on the table, so I assume there is no further comment on this. OK. I now request B3 to take the floor and introduce their paper. Thank you so much, Honorable Chairperson, for providing us this opportunity. A very warm and good morning to our honorable chairperson and our fellow delegates plastic a synthetic organic polymer made from petroleum has covered almost all the requirements and necessity of our day-to-day -day life with its widespread use and its widespread applications. At the same time, it results into a horrific catastrophe when it comes to its dumping, as it drifts for a quite a long time in our ocean and its incineration can contribute in the global warming. I would like to affirm my statement with the following data included. The use of plastic continues to grow globally by 2015 Mankind has produced 8.3 billion tons of plastic. In this case, 6.3 billion tons have already been disposed of and another 8 million tons are dumped into our oceans every year. Marine litter is of course a pressure upon marine habitats and species, ecosystem, services and human welfare. Measuring impacts from marine litter is complex. Harm caused by plastic marine litter is social, economic, and of course, environmental degradation and destruction. Uh, B3, uh, do you have a now presentation? challenges that are imposed. Uh, if you're trying to present, your presentation has not come on. Or if you have no presentation, just tell me. That's fine. Okay, sir. That's my bad. I'm sorry, sir. Sir, so is this visible now? Not yet. If you are having technical difficulty, you can do it verbally. 
sure sir go ahead sir so i would like we, to go verbally sir. we will not expect a presentation from you but we'll take your speech go ahead okay sir approximately the challenges imposed on us are approximately 53000 merchant ships are registered by the international maritime organization globally in 2020 international maritime trade has reached a total volume of cargo of 11 billion tons in 2018 and in the last 30 years the global ocean cruise industry has grown from 4 million passengers per year to an estimated 27 million the large scale fishery sector is characterized by large high capacity vessels which may be equipped with on board freezing and processing facilities now the shortcomings of marpol nx5 which we would like to highlight is it is difficult to detect violations at sea and often impossible to link debris with a particular ship legislation is often ignored by other types of vessel and shipping still significantly contributes to plastic pollution nx5 fails to impose record keeping requirements for the handling of garbage for ships under 400 gross tonnage this means that most of the global fishing fleet is not require record discharge operations this gap in control could be one of the reasons why fishing vessels often discharge plastic debris into sea additionally some reported case of violation of nx5 remain unpunished namely beside the port state jurisdiction marpol bestows the flag state jurisdiction the flag state is under the obligation to investigate cases of ships violation of nx5 however it seems flag states failed to exercise effective jurisdiction the rules and regulations put forth and decision taken by our merit industry has a very significant role to play and has direct effect on a sustainable and a better pollution free world so i would like this opportunity to suggest some of my proposals our proposals so the require enhancement for, of compliance with marpol nx5 regulations every country should set up a board which involves a research team with following objectives number 1 would work on sustainable development of marine industry that is very necessary measures to provide an alternative of orthodox plastic use and would work on its recycling of at least 70% recycling rate would check the rate of pollution in every 3 months every country should raise the standard of their sea water to special waters and implement strong laws against dumping of plastic waste proper authorities should be authorized to survey the ocean waters at regular intervals collectively that will have the authority to charge the companies or penalize the action taken towards the pollution shipping organizations ought to be requested to get ready appropriate waste administration plan for vessels and ought to be given more canvasion to utilize items that are biodegradable when unloaded that is solid substitution of plastics now ship passengers have a significant role in protecting maritime habitat and it's important to raise their awareness about plastic pollution a change of the policy makers is to communicate environmental information and to spread awareness in such a way that will affect the disposal practices the fact that plastics may extend the adverse impacts on human health could be used to increase concern about incidence of plastic in the marine environment and support of marine policy now marpol nx5 amendments which we would like to propose marpol nx5 amendment mepc 220 provides the guideline for the development of garbage management plants a proper waste recycling data should be included that will portray the amount of garbage recycled by the waste produced in the ship along with the enhancement of regulation 9 by making a separate department of port state officers who will carry out the survey of their respective port waters and their respective state waters including nearby areas in regular intervals of time in a year 
for say three months for every three months and submit its final report to the respective organization for further actions government should make proper examinations and checkups should be carried out to ensure the legislation that are followed strictly so as to decrease the illegal discharge of garbage regulation 1.2 of annex 5 deals with the cargo residues that are remnants of any cargos which are not covered by other annexes to the present convention can be amended by including a practice in which all the practice regarding generation discharging or incineration of garbage should not be noted down should always noted down digitally and proper electronic report or e-report should be submitted with proper proof to the concerned authority for example port fa facilities or any separate organization and along with it imo can make a right incentive by suggesting companies and port facilities to start rewarding the skippers based on the amount of garbage litter they proper managed or returned to the port for its further recycle or sustainable jumping. With this, the famous quote of Oscar Wilde, I would like to conclude our speech with, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, but we do borrow it from our children. So I now invite the committee to consider the proposal and put forward in this document and take action as appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, B3, and great to see that you were able to catch up with your presentation, which I hope all the delegates were able to uh, take note of. And if any delegate would feel that uh, because of the technical issues, the presentation was run through fast, they would, in a break, take advantage of that. I'm sure the B3 would uh, be able to show it to delegates during a break as well. So I leave that option to you and other delegates. I now open the floor for interventions. I see the card of A2 is up. A2, the floor is yours. Thank you, respected chairperson. Uh, I would like to say that the overall ideas and proposal from team B3 was great. So me and my team, A2, supports team B3. Thank you. A2, I see the card of D1 up. D1, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair, for giving the opportunity. Um, our team supports the Team B3. Uh, and we would like to say that their idea is good. And we would like, need to discuss more on it. So let us have a working group, form a working group regarding this to discuss more on it. Definitely your observation noted D1 and yes, uh, thank you for your intervention. But to just be clear, what you feel is that the ideas are good and you would like to have more discussion on them. Is that correct D1? Yes, sir. Thank you very much D1. I see no further cards on the floor. And with that, I ask C1 to introduce their paper. Yes, sir. Good morning, everyone. I am the delegate of the United Kingdom. I would like to thank the chair and committee for giving me this opportunity to raise our motion. More than 150 million tons of plastics have been estimated to be accumulated in the world's ocean, while 4.6 to 12.7 million tons are added every year. Marine litter is one of the fastest growing threats to the health of the world's ocean, while taking into account its accumulation and dissemination. It is generally assumed that majority of plastic waste entering the world's ocean comes from land-based sources, yet marine litter resulting from sea-based activities such as fishing, aquaculture, shipping, ocean dumping, and other ocean-based activities that has not been specifically quantified on any scale, and its contribution to the global burden of plastic debris in the world's ocean is poorly understood. Plastics are used for a range of marine purposes, 
including but not limited to packaging, ship construction, disposable eating utensils, bags, sheeting, floats, fishing nets, fishing lines, strapping bands, wire rope with synthetic fiber sheet, combination wire rope, and a plenty of other manufactured plastic items. Microplastics have been detected in the world's marine environment, and it is a serious issue because microplastics are of same size as some of the fish, and they can be taken up by organisms, including those that are important for commercial fishing. A few of the ways people are subconsciously absorbing microplastics are by getting a drink of water, fish, shellfish, and sea salt. Microplastic fragments that are floating on the ocean surface can cause damage to marine life. Usually, the suspected sources of microplastics are degraded consumer plastic goods and synthetic textile fibers. New studies suggest that much of the blame lies with the protective hull coatings on ships. Particles such as polyvinyl chloride, acrylate polymers, and polycarbonates, etc., originate from ship coatings where these particles are used as binders in acrylic paints or epoxy resins. The best way to reduce marine pollution is to eliminate the root cause of it, that is, waste production. The following attempts by ship's crew members can lead to the reduction of unnecessary garbage generation, thus reducing the cost paid by the company to dispose of garbage to shore facilities. Cooking in adequate quantity as per persons on board, thus reducing unnecessary wastage of food. Returning the extra packaging and plastics to the supplier immediately whenever provisions or any equipment comes on board. Disposing damage, lining, and packaging materials generated in the port during cargo discharge at the port reception facilities itself. Use of reusable bottles and utensils. Plastic garbage bags should be replaced with marine biodegradable reuse bags for disposing of food waste. Incinerators should be used efficiently. Putting garbage in their allotted color coded bins. The ship owners and marine operators should effectively prepare constitute and implement a waste recycling and management pl plan for recycling techniques and procedures that could be carried out at sea. Following are the remedial actions and plausible proposals that are suggested for improving domestic microplastic management. Establish a mechanism of multi governments and authorities from national environmental supervision departments at all levels to formulate concrete monitoring indicators, standards and measures for the emission of microplastic pollutants and the protection and use of plastic products both in land and sea areas. Regular monitoring and inspection are required in order to enhance implementation and enforcement and set up the corresponding measures for the penalty of excessive discharge for improper treatment, illegal dumping and leakage to prevent, reduce and control the sources and pathways of microplastic at all stages from plastic waste generation, collection, transportation and other processes. In order to identify the main sources and distribution of waste, plastic and microplastic pollution, more research is required to fill data and technology gaps. Develop an advanced domestic microplastic management mechanism. Along with these, carry out awareness raising and educational campaigns targeting public and stakeholders to encourage involvement in ma marine microplastic actions, guide consumption habits and patterns of consumers avoiding products containing microbeads, to reduce discarding deliberately and availability of single-use plastic items and minimize the amount of abandoned fishing gear. Governments are increased to support research and development of technology that facilitates complaints of ships and ports with MARPOL Annex 5 regulations. The research should concentrate on minimization of plastic material used for packaging, shipboard garbage handling systems, ship provision innovations to attenuate garbage generation, loading, unloading, and cleaning, te cleaning technologies to reduce tonnage, spillage, and cargo residues, new ship construction design to facilitate garbage management and transfer, and to attenuate retention of cargo in ship halls, wharf and bed design to facilitate garbage management and transfer. Proposal, as we all know, we already have an International Oil Pollution Prevention Certificate, International Air Pollution Prevention Certificate, International Sewage Pollution Prevention Certificate, it is equally important to issue a statutory certificate to control plastic pollution. Along with placards, garbage management plans, and garbage record keeping in Regulation 9, an international plastic pollution prevention certificate also could be issued. It shall be issued for a period specified by the administration, which shall not exceed five years from the date of issue. No extension of the five-year pe period of validity of the international plastic pollution prevention certificate shall be permitted. Thank you, Chair, for giving us the opportunity. Thank you very much, Sivan, for your 
introduction of the paper, I now open the floor for interventions. I see the card of B2 is up. B2, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairperson and distinguished delegates. We support the proposal made by Category C and we are looking forward to have a working group set up at this session for discussion of introducing International Plastic Pollution Prevention Certificate for SHIP. However, we also advise to cover the following areas under the certification but not limited to paints falling from ship's hull. We recommend the committee to consider a two-layer eco-friendly painting on ship's hull with ban on ferric red paints, which is devastating for aquatic life. In addition to this, there might be a thickness indicator at the bottom of the hull, which gives off an alarm which, when the considerable amount of paint falls off. The certification might also include section for abandoned, lost, discarded fishing gears, ALDFGs from fishing vessel and other unmarked item on board. We further recommend the working group to consider the content of a garbage record book as a base and a key document for formulation of International Plastic Pollution Prevention Certificate. This will prevent the introduction of an entirely new methodology and recording system, particularly for the certification. Hence, ship's administrative load might be avoided. We also propose the committee to work on a digitalization of a garbage record book so that it can be surveyed, audited easily by administration and research organization via online media regularly, ensuring the operation of vessel under the International Plastic Pollution Prevention Certificate throughout the certified duration and might reduce the administrative load for reissue of certificate after every five years. Thank you, Chairperson and all delegates. Here I conclude. Thank you, B2. D1, the floor is yours. Thank you, respected Chair, for giving me this opportunity. We will also support the proposals given by Team C1 to reduce the marine plastic litter. Thank you, sir. Thank you, D1. I see no further cards on the table. Okay, with that, I invite D1 to introduce their paper. Thank you, Chairperson, for giving me this platform. A very good morning to the respected Chairperson, fellow delegates, and all the viewers present over here. As we all know, plastic has become an inevitable substance used in various forms in our daily lives. From a small plastic button to the largest plastic fishing net, it's difficult for us now to live without plastics. The marine plastic litter has increased enormously these years, and they majorly consist of fishing nets, fishing gears, plastic bags, plastic bottles, straws, and several other microplastics. So we would like to address the marine plastic litter produced in passenger vessels other than the garbage disposed of and the measures to reduce plastic litter aboard. Plastic bottles are the most mishandled plastic waste and there are 66 times as many bottles as there are human beings on the planet. More than 40 billion plastic bottles were sold in 2016 across the world, up from around 300 billion a decade ago. 14% of all litter is from drink containers, and less than half of the bottles bought in 2016 were recycled. Plastic straws are used frequently and it almost goes over 4 billion every year. It is a serious concern now that it is estimated that only 7.5 million straws are required to pollute a developed country's coastline. Now what are the problems created? The straw not only causes worldwide plastic litter, but also endangers the aquatic life in seas and waterways. There are cases reported about straws getting stuck inside the noses of tortoises and many other organisms. Plastic bottles release microplastics, which get swallowed by aquatic life, especially creatures like seals, which causes diseases and also hinder the reproduction. Plastic water bottles may act as a trap or shelter for small fish, but the larger animals may not get stuck inside the bottles, 
but they do try to consume and break down anything that may contain a prey. Even if larger marine animals manage to avoid eating plastic, they are often consuming animals who have already ingested these microplastics. These toxic elements eventually work their way up the food chain while damaging all forms of marine life. And as we know, humans do have seafood, out of which a large amount of them are ingested by these microplastics, eventually damaging our own health. Now, we would like to propose the following measures to reduce marine plastic pollution. Along, along with the efficient garbage management plants and recycling methods, the deposit return scheme, DRS, can be introduced in which drinking bottles with plastic, glass, and metal drinks containers at the purchase time will be more expensive than usual. But when the bottle is put back to the retailer and then posted into the reverse vending machine, you will get your extra deposit back. In many passenger vessels, a new water bottle is distributed once the old one gets finished. This in turn makes the number of plastic bottles going to be discarded into huge amounts. So the big passenger vessels are recommended to provide every passenger with a bottle, maybe plastic or steel, which could be reused throughout their voyage. This can drastically reduce the plastic bottle waste generated. Now many a times, we humans do have a bad habit of throwing away plastic bottles into the ocean. Because we think, what could a small plastic do to the vast ocean? To avoid this, the passenger vessels can also buy water bottles in bulk amounts, where the water packaging company can attach QR codes stating that these bottles are being sold or distributed to the specific passenger vessel. Now, if the bottle is deliberately thrown away by any passenger or is being dumped into the sea, then on finding these bottles, authorities can take necessary action against these vessels. In the case of straws, there are so many alternatives to plastic straws on the market. The easiest and cheapest method is the power to refuse a straw and drink straight from the glass. If this cannot always be done, invest in a reusable option. There are so many alternatives to plastic straws made from glass, stainless steel, silicone, bamboo, paper, hay, and grass. People still buy plastic bags and bottles even after so many safer alternatives have been released and it is because of its cheap price. And the best way to tackle it will be by increasing taxes on plastic goods. Individual consumers are required to pay a tax per plastic bag. Now this will result in an estimated 90% reduction in plastic bag used in the first year. Moreover, when plastic goods start to have prices near or the same as their alternatives, then there will be a drastic fall in the use of plastic material. The member countries can require manufacturers and producers of plastic bottles and other plastic waste to take them back and recycle. A complete ban on single-use plastic bottles should be strictly implemented and banned on the ships. The Annex I proposes the garbage management plan for the ships of 100 gross tonnage and above. If the ships below this category are also included, the pollution caused by these vessels can also be minimized. As per Annex 5, only vessels of 400 gross tonnage and above are required to maintain a garbage record book. The ships below this category are also included and provided a garbage record book to record all disposal and incineration operations. As per Annex 5, the garbage record book is analyzed in an interval of two years. Now, this can be revised in such a way that the garbage record book should be analyzed by the authorized personnel in every port when the ship approaches or departs. The amendments can be revised in such a way that along with regulation and implementation, it can also focus in enforcement. Among all the IMO MARPOL annexes, only Annex 5 does not require a statutory certificate. This can be revised and can be made strict statutory survey and certificates can be introduced for MARPOL Annex 5 so as to conserve our flora and fauna. I would like to conclude here and the session is invited to consider the plan of action. Thank you, Chairperson, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, everyone. And I now open the floor for interventions. A2, the floor is yours. Thank you, respected Chairperson, for giving me this opportunity. I appreciate the point of marine plastic litter because of plastic bottle and straws, which main source in marine is passenger vessel. Team has successfully described all the points, problems, and effective solution like DRS scheme and apply QR code for passenger vessel. But one point that is, the team has only discussed a single problem of 
plastic bottles the main other factors like ldfg solution or pollution because of merchant vessels still remain covered by them so but overall we team a2 supports team d1 thank you but i suppose uh, every drop counts so if every small part is taken care of somewhere we will be able to chip away at the bigger problem also i am sure so thank you for showing your support even to these small things which actually when you take in totality and uh, look at the statistics do not remain so small i think uh, plastic bottles forget about passenger vessels but overall is also a huge number when you look at the production amount and i do recollect some statistics to that effect so great uh, yes fishing gear is important agreed so are these other things and i think we require to have a cumulative effort as highlighted by many member states so taking that b2 the floor is yours Thank you, Chairperson, for giving me this platform. The proposed idea by Category D over the implementation of deposit return schemes on the passenger ship is remarkably effective and practical, as it can contribute to reduction in waste management, collection cost, and improve the quality of marine water. We are looking forward to have a working group formed at this session for the discussion to consider vessel below 400 gross tonnage to have a garbage record book. And vessel below 100 gross tonnage to have a garbage management plan. We also propose to consider the digitalization of the garbage record book so that it can be surveyed and audited, audited easily by administration. We further recommend the inclusion of the two plastic stands developed by the social enterprise Serious Business and IUCN, which was launched at the Ocean Plastic Crisis Summit at London, UK 2018, might help in the action plan to address marine plastic litter from the ship. It allows companies to measure how much plastic they use and how much plastic waste is generated along their value chain. Based on the result, they receive recommendation on potential improvements to their work, enabling them to save money while reducing plastic pollution. In addition to that, we would like to emphasize the significance of informal waste sector in waste management. As in a report made by the IUC and Environmental Law Center, as a part of Mar Plastics project to study and develop report on the existing EBI policy and legal processes. It finding all points to the necessity to address the informal waste sector participation in emerging new waste management schemes. Thank you, Chairperson and respected delegates. Here I conclude. Thank, thank you, B2. And if you would like to share all these uh, best practices, other industry practices which you mentioned in your intervention, you could give a note uh, on that and we could circulate it as an information paper for other member states also. I now invite C1 to take the floor. And our panel can't hear C1, cannot hear, can't hear. Uh, team C, somebody can help out Vitan because it appears he is not able to unmute. Team C1, I will just wait for a few more seconds to see if you can sort out your technical issue. Anybody else from Team C1 would like to help out Vitan? I see no response. I see your hand is still raised. C1, C1, are you able to sort sort out your? Okay, C1 has dropped his card. So I assume C1, we will move on. And you can try and sort out your technical issues separately. Uh, I now invite Ewan to take the floor and introduce their paper. Uh, 
good morning respected chairperson and all the delegates our objective is not to try and persuade you to take a stand on this issue but we would like to try and present both sides of the issue to you in order to highlighting the impacts of marine litter which are harmful to aquatic life or marine ecology and will put appropriate comments and suggest some measures to limit it as far as possible pollution is the world's ocean poses a significant danger to marine life and is seen as one of the most serious issues while there are several sources of marine pollution one cause of concern is ship generated trash around 80% of global marine pollution is caused by land based sources such as affluent runoff fertilizer discharge and untreated sewage including plastic excess nutrients from sewage outfalls and agricultural runoff have increased the occurrence of low oxygen areas known as dead zones where most of the marine species cannot exist resulting in the collapse of some ecosystem annex 5 was designed with a common aim it gives recommendations for reducing pollution caused by litter which is classified as all types of ritual domestic and operational waste excluding fresh fish and portions thereof created during the normal operation of the ship and liable to be disposed of constantly or seldom this paper indicates that shipboard mismanagement of fishing gear is enough to warrant going further of and addressing the use of disincentives measures to curb fishing gear discharge into the ocean as well as coherent response with marpol and x5 the relevance of a clean ocean the ocean is an important source of food especially for people living in the world's poorest countries many people are relying on fish as their primary source of protein fisheries and aquaculture directly or indirectly bolster the livelihoods of about 540 million people that is 8% of the global population there are currently approximately 500 dead zones or hypoxia in the total global surface area more than 2.5 million square kilometers almost roughly comparable to united kingdom further eutrophication may contribute to the development of cv and microorganisms leading in algal bloom these blooms may be hazardous causing huge fish mortality poisoning seafood and disrupting ecosystem refuse can amass in large floating garbage patches or wash up on the coast plastics drift in the ocean releasing toxins as they disintegrate into dangerous microscopic particles that animals default for sustenance all such nanoparticles can aggregate marine animals and birds cause them to become sick as they occur in the stomach every day minor oil spills occur as a result of drilling mishaps or leaking motors victimizing birds marine creatures phytoplankton fish and fish creation all shippers transporter transportation companies and operators should reduce quantity of trash and garbage they carry on board the rubbish management plan on board a ship must include ship specific waste minimization or abatement all stakeholders should assess how to minimize trash involved with ship provisions food and cargo as they are required to minimize a wide variety of garbage accumulation on board a ship or vessel abandoned fishing gear can have repercussions on the aquatic domain as well as pose navigational threats or impediments or to a ship vessel in transit moreover fishing vessel operators are urged to strictly and document in laws the laws of discharge of fishing equipment as well as other fishing lines shall be noted in the garbage record book or the ship official log book as prescribed and listed in marpol annex 5 regulation 7.1 and 10.3.6 authorities are recommended to undertake and actively engage in research and technical development to minimize potential litter and its repercussions on the maritime domain 
emphasizing the area that required more consideration and a rapid pace over pace to overcome the development of the cycling methodology garbage should be carried out across ship to designated retention and disposition facilities garbage must always be stored in a manner that eliminates unsafe conditions there are in the following discussion the required enhancement to mapol and x5 compliance are as follows recognizing that direct compliance of mapol and x5 regulations primarily at open ocean is challenging authorities are recommended to adopt not just restrictive and punitive measures that are in accordance with the international law but also preventive and good regulatory but also mitigation as well as the eradication of any impediment the emergence of positive incentives and practices to persuade more effective compliance and progression of consensual initiatives within regulated community when developing programs and jurisdiction to help ensure annex compliance countries should assign competent authorities to oversee and support compliance as well as provide statutory rights competent training budget and equipment to incorporate the objectives and goals of the mapol and x5 rules into its operation as a corollary owners and operators must maintain placards waste management strategies and garbage records updated with the altered garbage discharge categorization it should be noted that the prerequisites for keeping the garbage record book on board ship remain constant and record books along with digitalization of the records must be done in order to easy access to records and also to reduce dependency on the physical paperwork on board date and time of discharge name of the port or facility or vessel garbage type discharge and expected quantity released in cubic meters for each category thank you chairperson for giving me this floor thank you very much even i see uh, mr datta wants to come in with a comment is it on the quality of audio mr datta uh, please go ahead mr datta yeah thank you very much uh, no there is no problem with the audio i just wanted to ensure that timing is been recorded during the support or interventions thank you yes i am doing the needful and i will uh, adhere to the guidelines which we have given so thank you thank you very much uh thank you even i now open the floor for interventions uh, before i do that i i am not a uh, expert on technical matters but uh, i did feel there was some distortion in voice when the uh, slide background was animations i don't know maybe some expert can help and guide the students if that eats up your bandwidth a bit more than a Uh, non video background if you use in presentation and your audio may be more clear we could hear what you said even but i felt there was a bit of distortion i don't know if that would be the cause or not that's for future preparation at imo of course you are not going to do presentations this is only at the mock session uh, even you want to uh, say something to that i saw your card raised Yes, sir. Actually, there was a bandwidth problem here in my area. There is raining, so it might be that problem. Right. Okay. Thanks. But you may take up with your IT and uh, get this information for your future uh, learning. I I don't know whether it has any impact or not. So thank you. I open now the floor for uh, interventions. I see the card of B two is raised. B two, go ahead. thank you chair quoting from group e's paper page 6 proposal point 20.1 it should be noted that the criteria for maintaining the garbage record book on board ship remain constant and record books together with the receipts acquired from receiving facilities must be kept for 2 years from the date of the final entry for examination by authorities group b supports the points that group b has proposed fishing is extremely important to the economy of panama being the second largest product exported and it represents a huge source of employment for the coastal population it is estimated that a total 
1500 industrial fishermen um and 13062 of individual fishermen depend on this activity and that 37500 depend on the processing activity fishing on a large scale takes place along the pacific coast so it is a matter of great importance as well as concern for the fishing community having said that we would like to suggest some points to consider towards our common goal that is reduction of marine litter first authorization of each and every fishing vessel respective of their tonnage is advised to have a garbage port reception facility economical and verifiable means of identifying uh core committee i have a query are you also having difficulty in hearing the complete sentences of b2 or is it only my system which is having this difficulty no he is not audible i can't hear him yeah same here Uh, i don't i i don't think we can also hear okay okay so since the problem at b2's end b2 not hear what b2 jeremy is saying thank you chairman sir for giving me this opportunity fishing is extremely important in economy of panama being the second product exported after the banana it represents a considerable source of employment for the coastal population Group B finds strong resemblance to the very ideals of Group E and support each and every point they have proposed. I would to, like to add some more point to their proposal, as the as the category B finds a lack of proper cut proposal in their paper. Panama ratifies the agreement on the sea rights in 1996, which states that any fishing vessel of more than 10 GRT is referred as industrial vessel, and anything lesser than that is artisanal vessel. same law establishes that there is no need of licenses for the sportive fishing an activity that has greatly increased in the last years making difficult the implementation of an ecosystem conservation program the several obstruction to the panama fishing industry is posed by such unattended fact such as deposition of large number of coast gear in caribbean sea large number of marine litter from within 12 nautical miles of panama's territorial sea area thus problem like this may result in decline in fishing industry in panama and also in countries like honduras and marshall islands face the same problem thus it is a suggestion from the group b that category he might take authorization of each and every fishing vessel irrespective of their tonnage must contain a digital garbage record book which they have mentioned it is appreciative and their respective port facilities must do an annual survey in their respected sea area fishing gear must be marked to provide a simple practical economical and verifiable means of identifying ownership of fishing gear or portions of fishing gear as well as their connection to the vessel because category d solely thinks that fishing vessels need not be marked with imo identification number but we have mentioned it is the local identification number which the fishing vessel should be marked with thank you chairperson thank you so that i have clarity on what you said is that what you are proposing is your second like you supporting a proposal of a digital record book for every fishing vessel irrespective of its tonnage and of course the regulatory check on the record books is that affirmative yes sir person affirmative okay so so you want the 400 ton gt 100 gt everything to be taken off and simply say all fishing vessels to have a digital record book garbage yes sir book. yes chairperson thank you b2 for clarifying that i see no further 
cards on the table so i now invite f2 to introduce their paper good morning chairperson and all my delegates i would like to propose amendment to marco the next five um ensuring efficient plastic litter management and reduction and amendment to marpol nx5 extension the most disturbing and dangerous impact on marine plastic are the ingestion suffocation and entanglements of hundreds of marine species as the marine wildlife mistake plastic as their prey and accumulation of plastic take place in their stomach while ultimately causes death in order to avoid the plastic net use of jute nets should be promoted as they are naturally available and cheap in price single use plastic implementation of regulation that control the use of single use plastic on board should be considered essential single use plastic should be replaced by some other alternatives like copper bottle bottles or steel bottles which can be reused and with the help of strict implementation of regulations garbage management plan every ship of 100 gross tonnage and above and every ship certified to carry 15% or more are fixed or floating platform shall carry a garbage management plan whereas the small boat and yards don't have any garbage management plan the amount of waste marine litter we think a tanker can produce so as a small boat as well and also they are mostly related to fishing they use plastic nets and other things in order to, for their businesses the government body should provide them a garbage disposal unit on ports and a garbage management plan on the ports should be free of cost in the initial phase so that we can make local fishermen get used to it to promote this idea the imo should advise the fishermen not to throw their waste into the water instead give them in the garbage management plan on port and to start this scheme the government should give a small amount of money as per how much marine waste they are carrying in the garbage management plan log book when it comes to the log book for garbage record book the log book is only 400 gross tonnage and above whereas it should be mandatory for 100 gross tonnage ship as well as per my suggestion that the log book should be considered for the small boats and yachts as well log book language should be in their local languages log book should should not be bound by just two or three languages it you to use how to use a log book there should be training session about marine pollution and use of log book so that it will create awareness and also promote the use of log book and garbage management plan and to get help from the fishermen about the garbage and log book maintenance the local government should work with imo to provide them tax relaxation or some more money to implement the scheme across the local fishermen thank you sir i would like to conclude thank, thank you, you very person. much thank you very much f2 i now open the floor for interventions i see the card of even up even the floor is yours thank you sir for giving me the opportunity as a team fn says about the log book the log book is quite considerable we should uh, have to collect all the data regarding this in the proper log book so that the pollution can be minimized so team even is in favor of the team f2 thank you sir thank you even and i see no further cards on the table okay i assume no other member state has any other comment on this at the moment so what we will do is having come to the seventh paper presentation we will now take a 10 minute break and i'll be back with you at 10:38 to present my summary of the papers presented by navi mumbai campus 
So a short break, 10.38, see you back, delegates. Thank you.
I am actually going to take two minutes more. So if you can just hold on while everybody else also joins in, just give me one or two minutes more. Yes, Chairman, just inform me I am back. Ramuti here. Aye, aye, sir. Thank you very much for your patience, delegates. And it is somehow, uh, I must say, I must compliment that the data you've given me so much that I needed extra time to sort of assimilate all the ideas, concepts, and the research which you have brought to the table. So thank you for your active participation. I will now try to summarize and sort of give a direction to the way forward as to how your papers which and the sort of research you have done can be dealt with and taken on into the forward path. We had seven papers during this session. A to introduce the issue of lost fishing gear, abandoned fishing gear, and the need for identification of the owner as one of the biggest hurdle in having being able to implement anything which sort of stops this practice. As a solution, they talked of about biodegradable nets, the issue of applicability of garbage record book being not there below 400 GT, and thus most of the fishing vessels not requiring to comply with that was a, brought about the need for raising the awareness about plastic pollution and training was brought about. The prohibition of type six plastic was called for. They also mooted the idea of a statutory certificate for moving it into a rim, which comes into more sort of a regulatory mechanism. There were general support for all the concepts brought about, including the statutory certificate. However, things were pointed out that there are certain aspects, especially on port reception facility, their capabilities, and ship breaking yards, which, have, which are further things which require to be considered. So I will deal with the papers, and then I will try to summarize these points. B2 brought also about the issue of ALDFG, the abandoned lost fishing gear, the record keeping. They also brought about the issue of the record keeping both onshore as well as on vessels. Uh, they asked for revision of regulation six with respect to discharge in special areas. However, there were no elaborate views which came out about that. I suppose in future sessions, they come up, can come up with specific views on that. They also proposed clearing of what waste mechanisms uh, this is something which I believe member states who are doing this can share the information as information papers across so that best practices adopted worldwide can be known to other member states and they can take benefit of that. They also called for banning of single-use plastic. In general, there was support for action required on AD ALDFG, but one issue which was raised out that while they wanted every vessel to have an IMO number, including all fish vessels, even irrespective of size, was stated by some member states as not being a feasible solution for them. B3 also brought about the issue of those vessels below 400 gross tonnage not having a record book, and which 
generally will include a majority, rather the vast majority of fishing vessels and so provided a solution in the form of easier e-reporting, which would also tend to easier governance of this. There was also general support for this concept, including the e-reporting, but the need was felt to discuss it more. C1 also brought about the issue of certificate, calling it the IPPPC certificate. However, there were some comments on this as the certificate should also consider some aspects of the harm of paints on vessels uh, and also on digitalization of uh, garbage record book. And generally, there was some support for this concept. So definitely, there has been support for having a certificate under NX5, the terminology and the limit, if it requires any changes in NX5, required to be further worked upon. D1 highlighted the issues in passenger ships, especially with uh, the issue of plastic bottles and straws and plastic disposable bags and gave solutions for this. They were also in support of garbage record books below 400 GT, plus the review of garbage record records, how to be done, as well as a uh, statutory certificate. This also found support, though it was felt that this is limited in uh, implementation more to passenger vessels. But then I suppose every bit would count. So yes, these are also concepts of passenger vessels which could be taken up. And here the view came about is that general view on this garbage record book came that it should come below 400 GT to maybe 100 GT. And the management plan may be implemented for vessels below 100 GT. Even also talked about digitalization of garbage record book, recognizing that the moment you increase the number, unless you have a mechanism whereby it makes it simple and efficient to do it, it would not be feasible to move the program ahead. It also received uh, support and also uh, rather it received support where some member states felt that garbage record book should be made compulsory for all fishing vessels, irrespective of size. Team F2 gave ideas of substitutes for fish, uh, fishing nets as jute nets, etc. That is something which uh, has been mooted across and biodegradable nets. Member states who are doing R&D into that, both with respect to durability, time taken for them to biodegrade and not cause the damage to the environment, as well as there's reliability in terms of efficiency of catch. If member states in information to the secretariat can pass on such information, such information can be disseminated across the all the member states. So member states can utilize research and dwell, development done on biodegradable fishing gear overall, not only nets, and can take advantage of that. They also talked of the issue of single use plastic and also supported garbage record book which concept has received abundant support. Accordingly, what we propose is that on the term of statutory certificate, a correspondence group is formed under the chairpersonship of the team leader from A2. The A2 team will take the chair on the correspondence group. All members who want to join this correspondence group can continue the work on the structure of the statutory certificate, which would be attached to Annex 5. On the issue of ALDFG, there are two aspects. One is how to mark the gear so that it is recognizable and then it is traceable, and that could lead to going back and making sure it doesn't damage the environment by putting onus on somebody to recover it or recover the costs. So that aspect and the second aspect is the 
substitutes. If member states can go back and prepare detailed papers with their experience and suggestions on this, this can be taken up at the next session of MEPC. Regarding the garbage record books, it has been felt that we do require garbage records books below 400 tons and not have a differentiation. However, the issue of fishing vessels and IMO numbering also has also been brought up. We also do recognize that fishing vessels are categorized on the basis of length. And the, though the equivalence of that length in tonnage is under discussion, uh, I can check with Secretariat subsequently and come back to you. But my recollection of the thing is that 24 meter length fishing vessels corresponds to a GT of 300 and 45 meter corresponds to a GT of 950 uh, tons so it may not there may be still some alignment to be done between marpol and the other regulations covering fishing vessels and member states may look at how two aspects one is the merchant fleet 400 gt and 100 gt if the aim is to cover the fishing vessels in that will how will it be achieved and if for fishing vessels we require to bring it under what instrument and according to what tonnages we require to bring it and then accordingly put proposals on that to the next mepc simultaneously they may also share their proposals how to make it digital going forward proper filling and more importantly proper check on the garbage record would definitely benefit if there is technology which supports this and proposals with respect to that would be welcome so this can be moved forward with that summary i have finished my summarization of this session and i hand over back to gaurav thank you delegates thank you for a wonderful session thank you rajiv that was uh, indeed a very good summary. I am sure all the teams are now clear as to what points of this were relevant and what points were not. Uh, I now, <clears throat> the next uh, team to submit its papers uh, will be from the Mumbai campus. I now have the honor of introducing the Mumbai campus coordinator. Mumbai campus coordinator is Mr. Hare Ram Hare, a chief engineer, head of the Department of Marine Engineering at the IMU Mumbai Port Campus. He has been with the IMU for the past four years and is, in, as, and is indeed a pillar of strength there. He has extensive sailing experience of more than 20 years, including a large many years on LPG tankers, which is a speciality today. Moving on to the Mumbai Port Campus uh, Marpol guide, Mr. Ritesh Kaushik. Mr. Ritesh Kaushik is a marine engineer and <clears throat> an expert in international maritime law. Not a very common combination these days. Having su successfully completed his master's degree in international uh, maritime law from Southampton University, Mr. Ritesh Kaushik freelances for international firms in a variety of areas across the broad, broad spectrum of maritime law, which include but are not limited to general average, salvage claims, marine commercial and industrial disputes, shipboard casualties, insurance contracts, hull and machinery claims, admiralty law, international commercial arbitration, etc. He has published numerous articles on marine insurance, commercial maritime law, marine cyber risk law, and is currently co-authoring a book on maritime operations. With these introductions, ladies and gentlemen, I hand you over back to the chair for the Mumbai Port Campus session. Over to you, Rajiv. Thank you very much, Gaurav, and welcome Mumbai Campus delegates. Today, we will be taking up the agenda item on plastic litter and its impact on us. And so I have six papers from A1, B1, C1, D2, 
E1 and F1. I now invite A1 to introduce its paper. Thank you, Chairman, sir, for giving us the opportunity. Good morning, uh, Honorable Chairperson and my worthy delegates. We, Team A1 from IMU Mumbai Port Campus, are here to express our stance on action plan to address marine plastic litter from ships. Before moving ahead, we would like to lay down our demographics on which we have uh, based our observations and assessment upon. We fall under the category of developing nation. We are an international manpower supplier. We have limited tonnage. We do medium trade. We have moderate implementation of legislation. Our research and development budget is limited. And we have limited assessment and certification body for seafarers. We have put down our agenda for the motion in the following manner. We would be stating some prerequisites. We would be presenting our observations and putting forward our amendments and proposals for the same and finally the conclusion. For some prerequisite points, we all know that under the revised Marpol Annex 5, discharge of garbage into the sea is prohibited, except as specifically permitted in Regulations 3, 4, 5 and 6 of the Annex. Annex 5 reverses the historical presumption that garbage may be dis discarded into the sea based on, on the nature of the garbage and defined distances from the shore. Now, as a major seafaring nation and as a nation of rich fishing interest and maritime involvement, Marine pollution has always been an alarming issue to us and to the international society as well. And to tackle that, suggestive measures are required at national level, which goes in accordance with the international laws and culture. So as a major seafaring nation, what have we observed? We have observed the concern. We do acknowledge that it is our prime responsibility to work towards it. Now, garbage from ships can just be as lethal to marine ecosystem as oil or chemicals. The utmost danger originates from plastic, which can float for years. Now, most of the rubbish found comes from the transitory ships, which find it opportune to throw rubbish overboard rather than dispose of it in ports. So after discussing our observations, uh, we have our amendments and proposals lined up in the following manner. We have divided our proposals in three major points. Uh, first, uh, based on the loss and wrong disposal of fishing gears. As far as the current scenario is concerned, with regards to the loss and wrong disposal of garbage in seas, the regulation 10.6 of Marpol Annex 5 states that reports should be made to the flag state when and where the incident of loss and lost happened. Furthermore, the coastal state in whose jurisdiction the loss of fishing gear occurred must take this into account. Here, the change which we want to suggest is abandoning and disposing fishing gear directly into the sea should be strictly prohibited. Doing the same knowingly or unknowingly will be subjected to penalization and further jurisdiction under the respective flag state. Here are some points to be considered. Port authorities should constantly monitor such suspicious activities to minimize illegal disposal of waste into seas. Any fishing vessel should be thoroughly frisked and kept an eye upon. Any vessel violating the norms of that particular port or flag state should be held under charge and penalized. Now, as far as the loss of fishing gear is concerned, we have put forward a newly drafted data management report, which would have all the necessary information for better uh, initiation of retrieval programs. We have also provided this in our detailed paper earlier. Our second point is based on onboard garbage handling. For onboard garbage handling, according to the present regulations, Regulation 3 of Marpol Annex 5 provides that discharge of garbage into the sea is prohibited, but with limited exceptions. Now, compliance with Marpol Annex 5 involves personal equipment and procedures for collecting, sorting, processing, storing, recycling, reusing, and discharging garbage altogether. For this, we want to put forward that depending on the type of plastics, incinerations must be avoided. Instead of that, compaction should be promoted on board. Compaction firstly reduces the volume of garbage. And secondly, in most cases, the output from a compactor is, is a block of material, which facilitates both the shipboard storage of garbage and its discharging in a port facility. Now, for a merchant vessel intentionally or unintentionally, discharging unwanted waste into the vicinity of any port limit should strictly be followed and subsequent undertaking for non-compliance must be issued by the respective port authorities. Now, for the undertaking of non-compliance, we have the following clauses. This also we have mentioned in our paper earlier. The most important 
amendment and proposal put forward by our delegation is based on ship recycling and plastic waste. Now, being a major a contributor of ship breaking and ship recycling in the world, we do acknowledge that ship breaking has emerged as the most common method of ship disposal among them. The dirty ship breaking practices have resulted uh, in dumping of dangerous toxic materials such as asbestos and PVCs on beaches and other open spaces. For that, we propose the following actions to be considered. First of all, we have to st start isolating those parts of ships which are harmful and dangerous to both marine and human lives. We have to start conserving marine ecosystem by proper discarding of ship breaking waste. We also have to start reusing those parts of the ship that are important and can be reused successfully while making new ships, thus saving resources. We also have to help the ship owner benefit from the process by optimum utility of the ship's part. Now, since we have discussed our observations and amendments, which we want to put forward, we have also developed an action plan. We have divided our course of action into three parts, the short term goals, the mid term goals and the long term goals. For the short term goals, we want to achieve uh, optimization of data collection. We want to incorporate the drafts for uh, loss of fishing gears and wrong disposal efficiently and launch gear retrieval programs as soon as possible. We have also kept uh, the strategy planning for mid and long term goals as part of our short term targets as well. Coming to the mid term actions, we want to focus on replacements of incinerators with compactors on board and we also work upon uh, better port reception facilities. Uh, with that, we also have to constantly keep a check uh, on our short term targets being fulfilled. Now, coming to the long term targets uh, that would take a fair amount of time to achieve. We want to create a safe environment uh, for ship breaking facilities and incorporate the protocols mentioned in our proposal. We also have put uh, implementation of rules and regulation in, in our long term targets. Now, the most important factor is to establish international cooperation in our long term goals. It would benefit in mutual development within our allies. Therefore, winding up on a positive note, we would like to conclude by stating that it is the need of the hour to address the crunch and our proposals uh, should be mutually agreed upon and internationally acknowledged for reducing global marine pollution. We firmly believe that reforming the Marpol Annex 5 in accordance uh, with our proposal in this very committee would definitely bring about some strictness and would control the amount of marine plastic litter in specific. We therefore thank you, your honorable chairperson and all other respected delegates for lending your ears. We are now open for suggestions and support. Thank you. Thank you very much, Evan. I now open the floor for interventions. I see the card of Mr. Ajay Chatterjee up. Uh, Mr. Chatterjee, you would like to say something uh, before we start with the participants? Uh, yes, Rajiv. Uh, uh, I must, uh, I, I'm not a judge, but uh, I have an observation. The paper presentation was quite precise, and I congratulate the group. But what is my strong observation is, a lot of reference has been made to ship recycling. The subject is on operational plastic litter handling. Ship recycling is a whole new convention itself, and it takes care of all these aspects of plastics or whatever comes out of a ship, not only plastics, even other stuff. So I don't think it has diverted from the main topic, and the judges should consider this point. Uh, the, I leave it to the judgment, I mean, uh, to the uh, wisdom of the judges, but this is something, something completely out of the subject. Ship, a lot of uh, stress has been put on ship recycling. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I know how passionate you are about ship recycling, having been at the forefront on that. Uh, don't worry, sir. I will be taking that up in my summarization also. Thank you, sir. OK. I now open the floor to interventions. C1, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairman, sir, for the recognition. First of all, I appreciate the delegations of even for providing us with such proposals. But we are not in uh, support to their proposals because in their paper under the heading 7.3, they have put forward the proposal of not incinerating every plastic on board, but segregating it first on the basis of type of plastic. I would like to bring it under the notice of the chair that uh, we already have a uh, uh, that we already have an Excel 6 regulation 16 of MARPOL, which states that uh, incineration of uh, packaging plastic materials and 
PCBs, polychlorinated biphenyls, is already prohibited. So I don't think that we need another new convention giving us the same thing. Also, I would like to talk about their first proposal they have put forward about tracking the lost uh, gears, lost fishing gears, in which they have said that they will make a report and also share the place, the depth. Uh, by the by the uh, crew to the flag state so i would like to say that the, as we know that uh, ocean have waves so uh, the lost gear doesn't stay at one place only it keeps on going from here to there and eventually they end up washing ashore so this is not a complete remedy for which we are here thank you sir thank thank you c1 i see the card of e1 Thank you, sir, for the recognition. First of all, we would like to appreciate the kind of research which Team A1 has shown. Yes, we are going by this proposal as it has mentioned about the onboard onboard garbage handling. This will definitely give more exposure to our own seafarers and can enhance their training of the disposal of the garbage, which indirectly benefits the shipping companies who have registered ships under Panama. Thank you, sir. Thank you, E1. F1, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairperson, sir, for providing us this opportunity. Uh, we appreciate the policy of monitoring plastic waste and annual collection of all kinds to be reported. And it will work in favor with the policy which has been already implemented in their nation, that is plastic waste management implementation. So we support this proposal. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I see the card of B1 up. B1, you may take the floor. Thank you, Chair, for the recognition. We would like to appreciate the research done and measure put forward by the delegates of Team A1. But we would like to add some suggestions, like their proposal for compaction of plastic is supported, but it would prove to be more feasible for cruise ship designated for longer voyages as the cargo ship comparatively have low amount of plastic waste. Incinerators providing ability to deal with large variety of waste generated on board, whereas compactor will have only use of compaction of plastic waste generated. Therefore, we consider that compactors will just lead to the congestion in machinery space. So we offer full collaboration for work on to coming out with a complete feasible solution. Now coming to the third proposal, coming to the proposal of changing our approach for better ship recycling. We are in full support and would like to offer technological exchange to deal with other important element apart from apart from machinery like disposal of paints as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to highlight once again, ship recycling gets covered under a different convention. It has its own mechanisms of control. It is uh, something which happens at the end of a vessel's life and is uh, treated separately. And you can be rest assured if you go through those conventions, Hong Kong Convention, etc., you will find that adequate measures are in place to ensure that no impact on environment from, uh, from ship recycling takes place, including through leaching through the soil when the paint impact, etc., what has been considered. So that is something possibly the Hello. delegates would have to educate themselves on and take uh, that aspect of it not as a current mechanism, but as something which would uh, be dealt with under another, another convention and a knowledge of that convention should be taken due advantage of. I see the card of A1 is up. A1, uh, you want to respond. I also have one of the judges card up. Mr. Datta, you want to say something before I take the card of A1 up? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to ask you one thing after introduction made by uh, A1, uh, can you please tell me the sequence of intervention made by other groups? It was C1, E1, F1, uh, C1, B, E1, 
ఎక్వాన్స్ట్రాట్వన్స్టే and uh, we firmly believe that with such mutual cooperation at such an international forum uh, we together can work upon on these uh, shortcomings and uh, can provide better results and which will uh, basically fulfill the very need of this committee so thank you so much for the concerns thank you very much and uh, uh, mr chatterjee you had spoken your hand is still up is there something else you want to add on sir uh mr chatterjee uh, if if you could then lower your hand and we will move on i now request i am not getting a response back from mr chatterjee the uh, core committee can you just give a call to mr chatterjee and clarify while we move on uh, yeah, yeah. yes will do thank I you i have i have uh, finished i don't know why the thank you okay sir thank you very much sir thank you and yes uh, just to let you know that uh, he has been at the forefront when the whole recycling issue and is considered one of the gurus in that matter so the participants and all the students would do well to benefit from studying the recycling related conventions also separately thank you i now invite b1 to introduce their paper thank you chairperson sir for the recognition so here we are to discuss our action plan to address marine plastic litter from ships we are team b1 from imu mumbai port campus so we first move on to our country profile that is china so we are a developing nation having large research and development large trade large tonnage and we are a manpower supplying nation so we first move on to the analysis of issues certain issues that we have analyzed and we'll talk about them turn by turn so the first issue that we have discussed is accidental marine losses marine accidents are among the leading problems which are rising at alarming rates and will perpetuate to increase in future as outcomes of increasing economies and climate change here we have a timeline of recent accidents causing marine pol uh, plastic pollution the most recent one being of the mv express pearl near the coast of sri lanka where in this accident only approximately 4300 families were directly affected also the marine life was affected and about 80 million dollars of financial loss was incurred additionally to to these losses the clean up cost of these plastic accidents costs in millions to the society so it is better to prevent the accidents rather rather than acting after it has occurred now next we have is the issue of abandoned fishing gear so abandoned lost or otherwise discarded fishing gear is of increasing concern due to its numerous negative impacts as we can see it forms a considerable part of the total marine plastic litter that is there so the ability of abandoned fishing gear to continue to fish has detrimental impacts on fish stocks and potential impacts on endangered species and benthic environments according to the world wildlife fund almost 30% of the fishing population is directly affected due to the abandoned fishing gear as well as the commercial fishing industry and marine vessels themselves and then we move on to our third issue that is of plastic packaging so packaging is among the biggest application of plastic and can be considered as biggest source of plastic in sea trade 
approximately 36% and 7% of plastic is used for packaging and transportation respectively. Now these two factors are directly related to shipping and maritime industry has the potential to eradicate or reduce the plastic from sea trade. Now we have proposed certain solutions which we will be discussing turn by turn. Firstly being categorization and trackable airbag system which we suggest as an update to the IMDG code. So what we propose is the classification of plastic as environmentally hazardous cargo. And then further categorization of plastic based on environmental hazard and, and worth for protection approach. Now if we talk about there are two categories, category A and category B. The category A plastic goods are of moderate pollution risk or low worth. Whereas in category B, the plastic goods of high pollution risk and high values essentially having microplastic constituent are there. So if we talk about the approach to be followed for the same, so a common approach is setting standard for the container quality that is by increasing the cross members. And then for category A, we suggest the implementation of TAB system. Whereas for category B, we propose to make it mandate so the TAB system, that is the trackable airbag system, is a system that is installed on the roof panel of any container, a module containing pressure sensor, GPS unit and airbag mechanism. So if we talk about the working, while sinking, the pressure sensor activates the TAB module, leading to the inflation of airbag by initiating the chemical reaction. The inflation provides volume to the container, allowing it to float and provides support preventing spillage of constituents and talking about the recovery, the lost container can be recovered by tracing the location of the container and the GPS unit will help in a better tracking. Now we move on to our second proposed solution that was of acoustic tags. So acoustic tags are simple tags which provide a signal made up of acoustic pulses or pings. So if we talk about the working insertion of acoustic tags, on the fishing gears to make it easy to locate by tracking down the acoustic signals using hydrophone receiver, which will not only help in locating the discarded gears in the vast ocean, but also track down the vessels which are responsible for the same. Now, if we talk about its recovery, so followed by the tracking, the fishing gears can be retrieved and can be sent to the port recycling facilities for recycling or reuse. Now, if we talk about the port recycling facilities, that is improving them, which is our third proposal. So we have a proper channel that we have over here, where first thing is taking waste from ships and other sources to port recycling facilities, recycling the plastic waste and making it reusable, and then provided it to the logistic companies and ports for packaging of goods to be carried for voyage. Now here, we have a priority list for the same and then the top one being banning single use plastic, promoting plastic free packaging, followed by logistic companies to use recyclable plastic for cargo packaging and then encouraging cyclic use of resources and shift incentives to stop wasting. Now we have certain recommendations for improved implementation. So for implementing the TAB system. So considering the geopolitical scenarios and the prevailing situation, which has led to the disruption of container management system, causing an all time high container production rate as in China, under such a scenario, it is the prime period to implement the proposal of TAB system effectively. Then we talk about certain voluntary recovery projects. So we recommend the government of member states to facilitate and support new voluntary marine litter recovery projects along with undergoing pilot projects for recovery of marine litter lying at sea. Then third thing we want to focus upon is regulate fishing. So we recommend the member states to regulate fishing by taking strict action against illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing, leading to the better implications of law framework in future. So moving towards the conclusions, the outcomes that we focus upon are first reduction of marine plastic litter by accidents or loss of containers. 
second one is increase recycling of the plastic litter collected leading to reusability and the third one is reduction of marine plastic litter generated from fishing vessels and gears and to achieve these goals they can only be achieved by strengthened international cooperation and the implementation of advanced technological ideas and reforms according to their practicability so this was it from our side now we are open for questions and suggestions and we would like to thank chairperson sir and all the respected delegates for lending their ears thank you b1 and thank you for these suggestions uh, though directly not on nx5 but uh, our ideas worth listening to what other member states uh, delegates would feel about them so i open the floor for interventions please i see the card of c1 up c1 the floor is yours thank you chairman sir for giving me the opportunity uh, first of all i would like to appreciate and thank the delegations of b1 for giving such a good set of innovative proposals especially the tab technology so we lend our full support to you the delegations of b1 and we being denmark we have limited uh, seafarers and medium r and d so we would like to work together on such technologies and uh, and uh, work much effectively on the uh, problem of marine litter so thank you for all your uh, measures thank you thank you c1 and uh, i am sure such cooperations will go a long way in assisting us f1 the floor is yours thank you chair professor sir for providing this opportunity since we are uh, ngo having working motto of saving marine ecology the proposal of having tap box technology and acoustic tags work in our interest so we fully support their proposal and look forward for working with them in near future thank you sir thank you f1 uh even the floor is yours thank you chair person sir we would like to appreciate the research which team b1 has shown we are in the favor of this proposal as we have large tonnage and this action plan will definitely help in preventing the disposal of the containers in our ocean which can also helps to protect our marine biodiversity ecosystem thank you sir thank you even even the floor is yours thank you chairman sir for giving us the floor to express our views uh, we feel that uh, we are on the same page as far as uh, uh, it regards to fishing activities are concerned we do appreciate the proposal put forward for better port reception facilities as we have also proposed clauses for onboard garbage handling and how it can help in port disposals moreover we stand with the proposal on floor by team b1 and look forward to establish uh, bilateral exchange regarding the same thank you I see B1. You want to take the floor again? Go ahead, B1. Uh, we would like to acknowledge all the support provided to us by all the delegates, respected delegates from the teams, and we uh, welcome uh, for all the collaborations and working together for a better marine environment. Thank you, sir. Thank you, B1. I see no further cards on the floor, so I now invite C1 to. introduce their paper good morning chairman sir delegates and member nations today we are going to present our paper on action plan to address marine plastic litter from ships we are representing the country of denmark and this is the report of the maritime regulatory body the danish maritime authority under the ministry of economic and business affairs denmark now denmark is a developed nation with limited number of seafarers we have a medium r and d a large trade and a robust network of legislation and implementation This is the 77th session of the Marine Environment Protection Committee, and we have identified these three objectives as our way forward to take this paper. 
Firstly, uh, to find alternative methods to plastic waste management systems. Secondly, improvement of port reception facilities globally. Thirdly, to put forth propositions for amendments in the Marpol and Exeter file. Now, coming on to as to why do we need such proposals and amendments? Talking about Denmark, mainland Denmark is flanked by North Sea on the west and Baltic Sea on the east. The Baltic Sea is one of the most polluted seas in the world. More than two thirds of the pollution of the Baltic Sea is due to plastic litter. The North Sea, on the other hand, is confronted with several ecological balances due to overfishing, the use of plastic nets, and the eutrophication of the sea. For this, we have come up with the 248 principle, where we have introduced two appendices to the Marpol and Exeter file. We have come up with four proposals and we have made eight amendments in the Marpol and Exeter file. Now, coming on to our first proposal, that is the introduction to critical areas. In addition to the Marpol special areas, we have proposed the introduction of a new list under the same heading. This list can be called as the critical area list. Now, a region can be only classified as critical if and only if it fulfills these three conditions. That is, it should come under the special area list of Marpol and Exeter 5. It has been in the special area list under Marpol and Exeter 5 for 12 years or more. And there are no or negligible improvements in that region. Thirdly, presence of dead zones is pro prominent and prevalent in that region. Now, given these three conditions, we have been able to identify these six regions as critical. Uh, these are the countries, alliances and organizations that can take up the responsibility of plastic pollution prevention and environment protection in these particular regions, where EU stands for the European Union and ICAP stands for the International Council for Critical Area Protection. This is a sub part of our first proposal. Now, this uh, we, are, we plan to formulate this council to ensure that these pro the proposed amendments be properly implemented and enforced in critical areas. ICAP will be operational in close affiliation with local organizations and governments in or near critical areas. This is an obvious fact that IMO and its subsidiary bodies such as the MEPC, MSC, PPR, they will owe their preeminence and superiority over this multilateral council. And this council will have representations from all over the world. Now, coming on to our second proposal of biodegradable netting. So we have identified uh, alternative substances and materials uh, which can be used to make fishing gear, such as plastic derived from renewable sources, petroleum based biodegradable polymers, bioplastics and natural fabrics. Now, these won't uh, hamper the environment also, and they will not even harm the existing fishing practices. For this, we have introduced a new appendix to the existing two appendices of Marpol and Exeter 5, that is Appendix 3, which deals with the information to be submitted to IMO regarding fishing gear on ships operating in or near critical areas. Now, every fishing vessel operating in critical areas specifically will be frisked and tallied according to this, uh, according to the appendix we have formulated and uh, and T.2 accordance, the table that I have shown you is, is demarcated as T.2 is if T.2 accordance is followed or not followed. Next up is port reception facilities. So according to a report ESSF of uh, European Sustainable Shipping Forum, port reception as Danish ports is significantly well in order and very much in compliance with Marpol and Exeter 5. So we plan to work with other governments and ports in development and bringing port reception to uh, just uh, like copy the Danish template over all these uh, countries. Alternatively, we can extend the uh, proposed council's functioning to implement directives for PRFs or port reception facilities. We can use the council as a tool to uh, upbring and develop port reception facilities in different areas. These are some of the ports that we have identified that hold um, uh, significant importance and they hold a geographical proximity to critical areas that we have identified. Now, these can be added, uh, these can be introduced in developing their port reception facilities according to the Danish template. Next up is the plastic waste utilization as a component substance for road construction. So we have proposed to convert waste plastic discharges from ships and ports into roads. 
This process involves mixing waste plastic with heated bitumen and coating the mixture over stone. For every kilometer of road, one ton bitumen is saved, which costs about four hundred dollars. So we can see the economic benefits that this proposal might reap. Coming on to the next proposal, plastic waste management system, plastic waste management and utilization for operating port machinery. So we have devised a method for collecting plastic waste from ships and other areas and bring them to gasification plants where it will be used to synthesize methanol. Now all these plastics and complex polymers that we see on this uh, that we see on the screen, they com comprise of eighty five percent of the marine plastic litter. So we are uh, dealing with this eighty five percent plastic, and we are making something useful out of it. The most important point is we need a storage facility for this synthesized methanol. For that we have come up with mencons, that is the methanol containers, which have to. Uh, uh their construction is imperative Th their construction should be in compliance with this particular report over here uh so that this proposal can be enforced and implemented in critical areas for this we have uh, added a new appendix to the marpol and exter 5 that is the appendix 4 which list uh, which deals with the list of substances not to be stored near these methanol containers and the list of substances used to construct methanol containers on ports it this appendix has two parts now the time and action required we request to put the aforementioned proposals in the biennium agenda now these proposals can be classified as long term and short term depending on the time taken to implement the same we request the committee to take the information provided and take appropriate action thank you we are now open for intervention and suggestions thank you very thank much sivan for sharing this information with the delegates i now open the floor for interventions i see the card of d2 up d2 the floor is yours thank you chairperson for recognizing us and giving us this opportunity i would like to say that the ideas presented by the delegate of team c1 was very good and we actually like to support the idea where they propose construction of roads and co conversion into methanol i i actually am from a developed country and although this may not help our country much but since we are talking about a global reduction of plastic pollution i'm sure i can say on behalf of other developing countries that this idea can surely be a long term gain for achieving overall plastic reduction thank you Thank you, D two, B one. The floor is yours. I see no response from B1. Yes, sir. Sir, please okay. go ahead. Yes, sir. We appreciate the research done by the team C1 and support their proposal of port recycling facilities and utilization of plastic waste as a component for road construction. But we would like to put forward our consideration for proposals as well. Considering the first proposal, we would like to put forward our apprehension that. forming an international organization with aiming for the protection of critical area around the coast of europe only should be changed our suggestion for formation of international organization as suggested we need to extend approach to critical areas globally we agree with the proposal of implementation of biodegradable fishing nets but in critical areas only again we would like to bring our apprehension that as a developing nation with largest stake in fishing industry we would like to bring the fact that biodegradable fishing gears have low life and efficiency so we suggest to firstly rectify this challenge with collaborated research and we appreciate your proposed action of converting plastic waste to methanol alternative fuel are among the best solution for decarbonization such action will allow shipping companies to attain their emission reduction goals as well Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, B.
F1, go ahead. Thank you, Chaitanya sir, for this opportunity. First of all, I would like to congratulate Team C1 for their vital research about materials that can be used to manufacture biodegradable fishing nets. And their proposal, this proposal, totally aligns with our interest and hence we support their proposal. Thank you, sir. Thank you, F1. Even the floor is yours. Thank you, sir, for allowing this platform once again. We would like to appreciate Team C1's action plan, which is based to take the necessary action towards fishing gear by using the biodegradable nettings, port reception facilities, also the utilization of a plastic waste for operating port machineries and developing infrastructure like road. So yes, we are in the favor of this proposal. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, Ewan. I now invite Ewan to take the floor. Thank you, Chairman, sir, for the recognition. Uh, we do appreciate the classifications provided by the delegation from uh, Team C1. Uh, we are in support of the proposals put forward by them. And we firmly believe that their waste management action plan and uh, um, using plastic waste in road construction specifically can give new heights to our own indigenous port development and maritime development programs. And as we aim for a global benefit, that will also be achieved. Uh, therefore, we look forward to be working together with this in the future. Thank you. Thank you, A1. I see the card of C1 is up. I assume you want to respond to the point. C1, the floor is yours. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for providing me this opportunity. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude for, to all member nations and delegates who supported us and who had some differences with us. So we plan to work with them. Uh, we plan to collaborate with them uh, in the future. And let's see where the future takes us. Now, uh, just one point I, I need to make. There is a slight uh, misunderstanding for Team B1, where they have only uh, they have only considered that we have added Europe as uh, the coast of Europe as critical areas. So I would like to suggest to B1 to just go through our paper once. And you can see that. Uh, areas such as the Red Sea, Mediterranean Sea, and the Antarctic region is also added in critical areas, given those three conditions that we have been able to identify. So it was not just limited to Europe. So that was one thing. Other than that, uh, we thank uh, we thank the chair one more time for providing us this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, C1, for giving that clarification, uh, which I'm sure b1 is looking at but i think they were also looking at it from the global aspect yes, so sir. having said that uh, i uh, now invite d2 to introduce their paper thank you Chairperson, sir, for giving us the opportunity to present our idea here. Today, we'll be presenting our action plan to address marine plastic litter from ships. Our country has the following profile. It is a developed nation. It provides limited seafarers globally. It has a large tonnage. The research and development sector is quite large here. A large trading platform is available here. And the laws implementation is quite strong here. The purpose of this document is to provide relevant proposals and amendments to Marpol Annex 5. The majority of plastic control and reduction could be made by maintaining the already present reduction in garbage discharge from ships in vital areas that is basically the coastal waters of areas where problems exist or concern is present over its changing situation. Appropriate use of this archive will improve the agreement and capacity of committee individuals on a functional approach and welcome the world on a bleeding edge to build up solid reasoning on Marble Annex 5. It is also expected that this will empower the boards to improve their dynamic capacities additionally. Our first suggested measure to reduce plastic pollution at sea is by recovering of lost fishing gears. Approximately 8 million tons of plastic go into the sea each year and among which a large amount of plastic gear. So plastic gear forms a large amount of plastic pollution at sea. So removing the lost fishing gears from the sea is very important. By recovering them, we can reduce ghost fishing 
spread of smaller particles through fragmentation and reduce the risk of new gears going lost through collision and hooking so everyone should report about the lost fishing gears to the directorate of fisheries and that will help them during the annual retrieval survey to find the location of the lost fishing gears our next suggested measure is biodegradable alternative to plastic fishing nets as we all know the harmful chemical effects of plastic on marine life so it becomes very important to take step in this direction as we all know the plus the life of plastic at sea is very long the plastic bag needs up to 20 years to break down the plastic bottle can take up to 400 years to break down and the plastic plastic fishing nets can take 600 years to break down so biodegradable alternatives can put an end to all of this biodegradable biodegradable monofilament starts to degrade after 24 months in sea water by microorganism this will help us to put an end to coast fishing although the result in this field is promising but needs a combined effort to bring us about a sizable change our next suggested measure is policy creation for the control of plastic production till date there is no existing international framework that explicitly addresses the plastic pollution via the manufacturers so regulation regarding the control of plastic pollution by pl pl production of plastic by manufacturer has to be introduced the advantage of this policy can is that the amount of plastic in circulation will be reduced and, and in turn will decrease the plastic pollution and will help the recycling industry to gain more importance our next suggested measure is encouraging plastic recycling by paying for the collected plastic we need a proper logistic system as currently many countries have no logistic for handling the collected plastic and by paying for the collected plastic this will encourage people to do more recycling as this is more efficient than traditional waste processing the proposed system will help the poverty driven societies with the financial aid and currency being the reward will give the collector a strong motivation but some problem of paying regularly at the collecting hub can be overcome by collecting effort what are microplastics small items of plastics less than 5 mm in size are microplastics they are main in the very important component of marine litter being ubiquitous across all global marine environment according to unep approximately 8 million tons of plastic end up in the sea each year in that is 15 15 tons of plastic per minute as of today there is no global agreement to deal with marine litter in a comprehensive manner the unep has adopted four resolu resolutions on marine litter and microplastic in which waste management and waste prevention are the key to combating marine litter so the suggested measures are bleach cleanups the production of microplastic by the fragmentation of larger plastic items is most effective on beaches with high uv irradiation and physical abrasion by waves once submerged cooler temperature and reduced uv means fragmentation becomes cooler in other words beach cleanups are the huge difference because the combination of direct sunlight and strong force of waves are nature's best microplastic creator while beach cleanups are the best way to prevent microplastic in the first place the ocean cleanup project is the best way to clean up existing microplastic as well as reducing further microplastic take by the women for the pieces that should break down into smaller pieces over time the problems for the plastic waste the plastic waste problems are marine life economy human health and climate so the very recently the entire eu parliament has overwhelmingly voted to ban single use plastic every government in the world could do this rather easily and with relatively minimum pushback for consumers now we can see on the slide is how microplastic affects the environment microplastics can either be primary or secondary what we understand by primary microplastics are they enter the environment directly whereas the secondary is how they enter the environment is due to breakdown of larger plastic products these plastic products get weathered down due to various elements and get broken down into smaller microplastics now the microplastic get carried away by external forces such as wind and waves and on top of that they act as vector for other toxins that attach on the surface of these particles 
find their way into the food chain of marine life and harm the biological life due to its toxic and poisonous nature but a few changes are required because some plastic requires specific incinerator settings such as higher oxygen injection and temperatures of up to 1200 degree centigrade and if these conditions aren't met they talk they produce toxic gases to avoid this we suggest plastic incineration must be avoided in areas where suitable changes could be done and compaction should be promoted compaction and compression significantly reduces garbage volume and on top of that it facilitates the storage of garbage on ships and makes discharge at port facilities easy on that note i would like to conclude positively that the majority of marine issues that marine environment faces comes from micro plastics due to their bioaccumulation potential being very high these polymers have toxic and poisonous additives that can harm the marine environment to a very large extent it can be understood that quick actions are required for superfluous utilization of plastics and those techniques are how we can quantify and restrict further input of plastics into the sea modeling oceanographic boundaries to foresee how plastics move away from point sources and reamass would also be highly assistive and the point that would have the greatest contribution to environment is to gather and reuse the plastics that is already in circulation on that note we end our presentation and now we are open for intervention and any suggestion from other delegations thank you rajiv sir you are muted sir thank you d2 for your introduction of your paper and uh, yes you have uh, pointed out on production of plastics considering at imo we could be involved in this aspect on plastic on board under ship building etc so possibly those you further research is carried out by your delegation on that possibly you could look at how plastic industry usage on board vessels at the time of construction and during the life could work and introduce it to the relevant forum which covers with those technical aspects it is a view for your further taking up that aspect on a international level i do not know how manufacturing would do but possibly you could have a discussion with the secretariat as which you and body could work on such a international platform our relevant points biodegradable fishing nets etc so i open the floor for interventions from the other member states the floor is open for interventions c1 i see your card is up c1 the floor is yours thank you chairperson sir for recognition delegates from denmark would like to appreciate the research done by our counterparts of norway we would like to uh, extend our support to the proposal where you have proposed an incentive to the collected waste and also where you proposed uh, biodegradable nettings however you mentioned about retrieval of uh, lost fishing gears in your paper we feel that it's easy to retrieve the nets as a whole but due to various actions of sea uh, the fishing nets break down into fragments and get ingested into marine body which which is a major problem actually how are you uh, planning to tackle that problem also you mentioned about compaction of waste instead of incineration can you throw some light upon uh, do we need a new machinery slash de or devices uh, basically how economically viable is that process thank you sir thank you even the floor is your thank you chair for this opportunity i would like to say that the research done by team d2 is uh, very commendable and team even agrees with them uh, specifically on the idea of using biodegradable fishing nets although uh, they have considerably uh, lesser durability and efficiency but to address the issue of plastic litter is the need of the hour thank you thank you even b1 the floor is yours thank you chairperson sir for the recognition so we would like to congratulate our uh, 
the, the delegates of team D2 for their presentation and appreciate their uh, measures and proposals. We strongly support them on the ideas of recovery of fishing gear and also encouraging plastic recycling by providing incentives and provide our full support for their actions of beach and ocean cleanups. But we would like to mention that in the paragraph 5.2.3 of their paper, they have mentioned that the biodegradable fishing nets have poorer efficiency as compared to the current existing nets. So we extend that. Uh, so we uh, propose that we collaborate and work together on some technological advancements and practical aspects of the same so that we implement it with a better approach. And this will make it easier for implementation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. OK, well noted. And I'm sure D2 is noting your support for doing combined research to overcome the challenges which are there with biodegradable nets. F1, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairperson, sir. Uh, we appreciate the proposals and measures they have uh, mentioned in their base paper. But I would like to highlight a point which we have, they have mentioned over here. So in their paper 5.3, policy creation for the control or plastic litter production of marine plastic litter. In, the, in that, there is a sub point which mentions uh, for pollution increase, manufacturers should reduce its production. So some clarification is needed on this as reducing the production for increasing plastic litter may affect their uh, profit making skills and may un incur losses. So I think that some clarification should have been made over here, or maybe they will uh, work upon it uh, in the future. So we strongly support their proposal apart from that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well noted, F1. And yes, and including possibly production facilities internationally would be beyond the scope of this forum at this stage. So, but I'm sure D2 would have heard my comments and your comments on this 5.3 point. A1, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairman, sir, for the recognition. Uh, we appreciate the concerns uh, raised on harmful consequences of plastic litter in oceans. And uh, we would like to thank the respected delegation for making the committee aware on microplastics and its effects as well. Uh, we believe that there could have been more clarity on ocean cleanup drives as we were quite intrigued by the proposal of beach cleanup drive, cleanup drives and ocean drives. And uh, we are more than delighted to see that the delegation uh, from D2 and we are on exact same page as well, as far as uh, onboard garbage handling is concerned. However, the concerns regarding incineration is already uh, put forward before the committee earlier. Uh, therefore, we solemnly appreciate the thoughts and uh, together we want to work towards it in future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, A1. Uh, I am sure D2 would note that you would like more information on their ocean cleanup drives, and they would share that either in a bilateral basis, or they could even give an info paper to the secretariat, which would then circulate it to the member states. I now take D2's card is up. I assume you want to clarify something. D2, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair, for providing me the opportunity to clarify some of the doubts raised by my delegation counterparts. So at first, I'd like to thank you for the inputs they have provided. Since the world is still coping up with the plastic problem and many changes and research is required. So I'd like to say that their input is very helpful. So of course, there are going to be some shortcomings and issues on our part, but they can be solved with the help of other delegations. At first, I'd like to say how the delegation from Denmark asked about our compaction machine. So I'd like to politely say that the compaction machine is going to be a one-time investment if you are talking on board ship. And if you are talking about global reduction of plastic, one-time investment, which is not in a very large amount, can be done easily. And compaction machine basically uses a large amount of force to compress all the plastic in there and produce it into a single block of plastic litter that can be easily transported and handled at port facilities. On that note, I would like to issue the, oh, sorry, address the issue raised by our delegation 
counterpart from China on biodegradable nets. They asked about doing more research so that biodegradable nets can be more efficient. And yes, we highly we are highly thankful for extending a hand on that note. And we would like to cooperate with them into further research as to increase the efficiency of biodegradable nets. And finally, I'd like to address the issue raised by our NGO counterpart team F1. They said that manufacturing, stopping the plastic manufacturing could drive the companies to incur losses. And yes, he's totally right on his behalf to think about the company companies as they are how they are going to incur losses and how they are going to cope up with their losses. So on that note, I'd like to highlight the fact that this is something where everyone has to put their adjustment. They are going, we have, we have all to accommodate all the ideas and views as, as much as possible. And that can be only done if you work hand in hand. I can assure you that this is not the final ideas that is going to be there and if we work together some better ideas could be proposed and yes we will definitely try to accommodate all your views in our idea the best we can so thank you chairperson for lending your time to hearing our views thank you thank you d2 i now invite even to introduce the paper Good morning to Chairperson Sir, Judges and to all Delegates. First of all, thank you Chairperson Sir for allowing this opportunity to introduce our paper. We are the Delegates of Panama and we are going to present on the topic of action plan to address marine litters from ships. So we have a following salient features. We have large seafarers without training exposure, large tonnage, limited R&D, limited trade and moderate legislation. So we will go in the following manner, first with background, then with objectives, then understanding the problem, action plan, implementation of the programs and initiatives, then benefits, and then finally the conclusion. As we know, marine litter is a global concern affecting all the ocean of the world. It mainly consists of a plastic which has a prime pitfall of extremely slow degradations, which has shown negatively impact on fishery, tourism, and shipping industry. Panama is the host at Atlantic and Pacific Ocean. Hence, its economy is largely dependent on tourism and logistics. And these two sectors are the vital source of income for the Panama economy. Our action plans are mainly targeted towards finding an efficient solution of plastic litter to make an efficient use of shipping pathways, as our country occupies top position in FOC, which will ultimately boost the economy of our own country. Action plan will help in reviving the huge and the diverse marine ecosystem formed by the confluence of two great oceans, Atlantic and Pacific Ocean. So now let us understand what are, what are the problems which we are facing in the Panama right now. There is hardly any river is left which is uncovered in, in trash in dry season, which is affecting the marine based food items. Several flush, flood caused by the drainage being clogged by the litter. Debris associated with fishing activities are ropes, nets, fishing lines, fish hooks, beverages, containers. All these are causing serious threat to the Panama's marine, marine ecosystem. Also, there is a lack of proper waste management in barge and cruise ships. Uh, next up, we have the action plans, uh, which are as follows. Eradicating the discharge of persistent litter from vessels. Bringing regulations to prohibit and mechanism of auditing to avoid discharge of litter, particularly plastic from ships and creating awareness in order to avoid the discharge of persistent litter into the sea. Next, minimizing the disposal of fishing gears at the coastal region from ships. Regulations to penalize the abandonment of fishing gear at sea is advised, along with investigating, lodging, of the identification number for each item of fishing gear on board a fishing vessel. Further, to establish the large amounts of production, patterns of distribution and accumulation, 
and effects of marine litter in ports. Analyzations have to be made on patterns of marine litter transportation via waterways, identification of locations of aggregation, sinking and decay rates of different materials. Encouraging MTIs to stay interested in this topic is an important aspect. To recognize the problem of marine litter as a priority issue in the agendas of the countries. We require to develop activities for increasing awareness of passengers on cruises on the topic of marine litter and their associated costs. Moreover, relevant authorities, sectors need to be acknowledged the link between their activities and the problems of marine litter. Reducing the use of disposable uh, containers and wrappings of persistent materials that can eventually become marine litter. The utilization of holders and wrappings of materials which eventually adds to marine litter needs to be minimized. Further, improving the potency of port reception and facilities and treatment in reducing marine plastic litter. A separate plastic garbage collection system has to be provided provocation of the member states to implement their obligation to provide sufficient facilities at ports and terminals for the reception of garbage as per regulation is suggested. Enhancing awareness, education and seafarer training is necessary so as to inculcate better habits and hence reduce marine litter. Moving further into the implementations of initiatives and programs regarding marine litter. Number one, education campaigns. An innovative and comprehensive policy should be implemented to spread awareness towards marine litter by government and organization through different mediums like radio, television ads, printed media, etc. Number two, effective legislation and enforcement. All the legislation policy needs to be evaluated and cross-examined by observing groups, which should be unknown to law enforcing groups. Number three, establishing responsible government authority. Responsibility of marine litter is diverse among several government agencies and NGOs, which leads to the strengthening the effectiveness of ma management of marine litter programs. Number four, assessment of impact of marine litter. Research needs to be uh, conducted to specify the impact of marine litter on marine wildlife habitats, economic government bodies, and shipping groups. Number five, maritime monitoring programs. It was introduced to collect the data of ocean on a regular basis and make changes in the reformatory programs to minimize marine litter. So by implementing our proposed action plan, we will get the following benefits, such as flora and fauna of the marine biodiversity will flourish. It will attract huge amount of tourism through cruise ships registered under Panama. It will boost the production of marine-based food items, which will attract more fishing vessels to meet the requirement of the marine food for the entire Caribbean region. It will reduce the cleanliness and maintenance taxes on boarding as well as off-boarding on the Panama ports for the ships. It will allow a more number of ships passage every day due to smooth pathways of Panama Canal, which should ultimately save time for the transportation of cargo. As more number of ships are passing, it will increase the revenue collected on every day basis. As there is a huge traffic in Panama Canal, accidents can be avoided if we have a pathways free from marine litter. At last, we as a Panama has an impactful implementation which will revolutionize the marine litter campaign in huge number of countries who have registered ship under our country. So we as a Panama served as a godfather in the marine litter campaign to preserve Panama's marine biodiversity in Atlantic as well as Pacific Ocean. And thank you all of you for spending our, your time to listening to us patiently. And yes, we are open for the suggestions. The floor is open for interventions. 
F1, you can take the floor. Thank you, Chairperson, sir. We appreciate the proposals made by the team and specifically the point 6.7 in the proposal of educating people about their duties and problems due to marine plastic litter align with our interest and organization. So we support the proposal full heartedly. Thank you, sir. Thank you. To clarify, F1, you are supporting the proposal of their about education training awareness. Yes, sir. Thank you. B1. Thank you, Chairperson, sir, for the recognition. So we uh, appreciate all the research done and the measures proposed by Team E1. And we strongly support their proposals on the redu reducing the plastic litter that is being discharged and also their proposal on how to reduce the use of disposable plastic and increasing awareness. And also we would like to mention on their measure of stopping or minimizing the disposal of fishing gear in coastal regions by international cooperation and technological exchange, we can extend it to the deep oceans also. That's it from our side and thank you for such a great presentation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Evan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairman, sir, for the recognition. Uh, we do want to appreciate the part where uh, the respected delegation had uh, expressed their concerns on lack of awareness. We do believe for these proposals and our suggested ideas as well, to make this reality, awareness and cooperation of citizens is an important factor to consider. Furthermore, uh, we are in support of the delegation's proposals on garbage collection methods and incorporation of uh, uh, research bodies for detailed analysis as well. Therefore, we look forward to the same. Thank you. Thank you. C1, the floor is yours. Thank you, sir, for providing us this opportunity. First of all, I would li like to congratulate my Panamian counterparts for, uh, for their research and their hard work in their paper. Now, uh, however, we want to point out that uh, for our interests, the Danish interests, we are a country with medium research and development, and we look for look forward to technical ideas and innovative ideas, which I saw uh, a lack, a lack of innovation and lack of, uh, you know, new ideas to th that were presented in their paper. Their paper, uh, the Panamian paper was a little too preachy for us to understand. So we won't say that we don't support their paper, but we are not exactly in terms with them. Thank you. But uh, that is Panama view and you must uh, respect that. You, if you feel their research and development is uh, you have more research and development facilities, please feel free to, I assume as a nation, you are doing the, your best. Well, sir, we, so uh, Thank you. Uh, that will be. Okay, sir. Unless you have some specific point to add. No, sir. Nothing, nothing specific. Thank you. Okay. So thank you, Ivan, again for your introduction and the interventions made by other member states. I now call upon F1 to introduce their paper. Thank you, Chairperson, sir, for providing us this opportunity. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone present over here. We, the delegates of Greenpeace Environment, are here to present our paper on action plan to protect marine ecology from vessel blessed plastic litter. Starting with, we have the overview of our presentation. We will first read the introduction to the topic, sources of marine plastic litter, background, addressing the issues, adverse effects, preventive measures uh, and pro our proposals, innovative techniques, and then we will conclude. So as per the decisions and outcomes of uh, previous MEPC sessions, such as MEPC 74, various organizations were instructed to create an action plan, keeping in mind various short, mid and long term goals and various parameters such as background sources, present enforcements and etc. So accordingly, our report addresses the issues towards a complete action plan. Let's see the sources of marine plastic litter. 
so we have three sources over here first one the most common one and most common 10 types we have identified in the form of pie chart uh, we can see here plastic ropes bottle caps plastic beverage bottles and many more and second in the second figure we have listed the sources from which we see this plastic occurs so we have classified broadly classified the sources as microplastic and microplastic so basically microplastics are the fragmented and degraded form of microplastics and the sources we can clearly see in the second figure in the third figure uh, we indicate the offshore oil rig decommissioning procedure or we can say the dismantling uh, in which we remove the underwater structure after decommissioning which leads to uh, emergence of deep sea earth sediments uh, that is basically fossil fuels and parent material of plastic which may which pollutes the marine ecology so the current background and scenarios which are now over here in the first box we have indicated that the china the biggest producer of plastics it's said to become the world's plastic world's largest plastic polluting country as the government in 2019 banned the dumping of plastic waste in the rivers which led to promotion of dumping in seas whereas in the second box we can see the european region uh, has managed to keep its plastic pollution in control by implementing various laws and that's a good thing in the third box uh, we have listed uh, major coastal countries there are various laws made for plastic pollution to be controlled but these lack enforcement uh, for instance, India has passed Plastic Waste Management Act in 2016, uh, but only 14 of 29 states provided the statistical data, which shows there is a lack of enforcement. Uh, in the fourth box, we have uh, uh, indicated some stats about plastic. So at 8 million tons of plastics uh, end up in our oceans every year. And uh, from the ship building and ship recycling activities uh, lead to increase in percentage of marine plastic litter. So in the image, we have shown the plastics that have entered already entered into the oceans. So distribution, we can see in the water and the, on the land. Uh, the, uh, we can clearly see here that 86 million tons, according to our sources, have already entered the oceans. And about 23 million tons are on the coastal region. And other than that, 34 million tons are in the deep sea floor and such the distribution is there so let's address the issues the lost fishing gear it poses life hazard to marine flow fauna by entanglement consumption of degraded mi micronet particles thus leading to death uh, and second one is the plastic and mlps which we all know the common forms we have listed over here and the mlps are the major ones uh, which we use to carry our stuff for daily use the microplastics are the degraded form, as I have stated earlier. The degraded forms are of rubber tires, pads, and other plastic components, which disintegrate, disintegrate with time, forming microplastics. So as we know, plastics have uh, adverse effects. And we can clearly see we have uh, mentioned some of them. Plastic ingestion by seabirds, ship accidents, such as the recent one, the Emily Express, for which uh, spilled millions of plastic pellets damage to coral reefs, damage to human health by consumption, uh, toxic gases are produced by burning, depletion in quality of fishing, sea species degradation and tourism degradation. So apart from this, there are many more, but we have uh, indicated some major ones. Now my colleague will continue. Now we are going to discuss about the preventive measures. Enforcement of marfoil at ground level is an important step. The local people, industry, post governing bodies should be educated about the toxic effect of plastic waste on marine life and help them to dispose them properly. Second is creating a regional action plan like NAPAC, which is executed by China, Japan, South Korea and Russia. These experienced countries should share their methods and plan and guide other countries to implement them. Third is reduce, reuse, recycle. This policy should be strictly implemented in the ground levels and the use of recycled paper should be promoted and not new paper as it causes deforestation. Identifying lost fishing gears by marking them with IMO ship identification number, name of the vessel, time, position, etc. Fifth is sustainable use of oil rigs by using it as artificial reefs, making them 
wind farms etc instead of dismantling them which may harm the marine ecosystem sixth is strategic law enforcement european union has passed plastic law which is effective since 3 july 2021 to reduce marine plastic litter and set up various short term mid term and long term goals now innovative technology and proposals thermo catalytic depolymerization this is a method used to break down plastic into polyfuel which is an alternative fuel and can its products are synthetic gas tar sludge the sea cleaners mantra is a highly sophisticated sailboat which uses floating plastic waste for propulsion and generates synthetic gas to rotate turbines to produce electricity ocean cleaner device is a boom like structure which covers certain area of the sea and collects plastic waste from it it uses natural energy like wave wind and current to propagate now design makers is a kenyan company which uses plastic waste from factories and makes brick which can be used in road making and they are cheaper and lighter ecolf is a spanish company which collects plastics from fishers men who collect them in their nets while fishing and they make clothes out of it tension government environmentalist they are dipping the dead palms trees and branches to create artificial reefs for marine life now i would like to conclude that most of the measures can be universally adopted irrespective of nation's financial status and no don't need any additional financial investment thus this report sums up some key aspects that need to be addressed in the alarming hour and would guide several nations and policy makers to regulate and frame action plan for greater cleaner brighter future thank you chairperson sir and delegates for lending your ears we look forward for your support thank you thank you f1 and highlighting the various innovative technologies available i now open the floor for interventions i see the card of b1 is up b1 you have the floor thank you chairperson sir for the recognition we strongly support and appreciate the team for the inno innovative ideas they they have proposed especially on their idea of sea cleaners mantra that they proposed we feel that it is something which may require financial uh, implications so we suggest that international co collaboration can be done for the same so that this can be made available to all the member states also we support their idea of ocean cleanup devices and the various uses of plastics that they have proposed through innovative measures and we welcome to collaborate and are open for research programs but also we would like to mention that uh, in the presentation there was some confusion regarding our banning of plastic disposal in rivers in china which was said to be a reason for increase in pollution through the nation but we feel as a nation this is a step towards stopping the pol plastic pollution because eventually it reaches to the ocean from the rivers also and as the delegate only mentioned that we are a part of nowpap also and we are working in global globally to stop this marine litter so we feel uh, that this is something which will eventually help in a longer run thank you that's it from our side thank you delegates And thank you, Chair Sir. Thank you, B1, for that clarification, which I am sure F1 would note. Thank you for that, uh, and also I, I suppose other member countries would note, who would have observed that. Uh, I hand over the floor to C1. Thank you, Chairperson, for the recognition. Uh, our delegate, our delegation would like to extend full support to the. Uh, Uh, proposals proposed by the uh, delegates of F1, and also thank you for addressing the plastic pollution uh, um, caused by oil rigs, as it is an untouched area. So thank you for addressing that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, C1, A1. You may take the floor. Thank you, Chair, for the recognition. 
uh, we appreciate the delegation's views on uh, innovative measures and uh, efforts on ground level implementation of marpol regulations we often miss that out overall the proposals go hand in hand with what we have put forward to the committee therefore we are in favor of the delegation from team f1 and we look forward to positive collaborations thank you even the floor is yours uh, thank you chair i on behalf of my team would like to congratulate team f1 on the research made by them uh, and i think we are on the same page with the team uh, with the team about uh, identifying fishing gears like many other teams that spoke today and we look forward to uh, working with them on the topic uh, in the near future thank you chair thank you very much even d2 the floor is yours thank you chair for giving me the time to express my views first of all i'd like to congratulate the delegates from greenpeace on presenting such informative presentation their concern of rapidly rising plastic pollution is highly commendable and we the delegates from norway are in full support of their views to control them i'd like to specifically highlight their idea of identifying lost fishing gear as this is aligned with our interest and something which just piqued my interest is utilization of oil rigs as bay farms and artificial reefs this sounds something that could go a longer length in help helping reduce plastic pollution but some clarification on how our greenpeace counterparts are hoping to achieve this fit would be helpful since they are an ngo and as i can assume that conversion of oil rigs into bay farms and artificial reefs is not going to be cheap so i'd like to just ask them on how they could achieve some fit some just some clarification is required and just thank you for giving me the time thank you chair and once again thank you delegates from greenpeace i see f1 you have your card race i assume you would like to address the issue of wind farms if you have done some research work on that f1 the floor is yours thank you sir uh, we would like to clarify that wind farm point Uh, we have stated that wind farm point for the uh, oil rigs which are to be dismantled, Dismantle. which are going to be dismantled in near future, so such as at North Sea and in US parts where oil rig decommissioning is going on rapid pace. So at that point, we suggest this wind farm uh, technology and not for the regular oil rigs. And clarifying the issue raised by B1, uh, we would like to say that the NOPEP which we have stated was implemented much before the law. of 2019 which are china passed that uh, in 2019 china has passed that uh, banning of uh, dumping in rivers but it has led to increase in dumping in seas but uh, the, in the now pap they work towards that only in the sea uh, the marine litter in the seas they clear of uh, from the now pap act so this is something uh, good only not uh, contradicting the point but these are the points need to be considered Uh, they are working for oceans also. They are working for their own rivers also. So these two acts somewhat uh, clash to each other. Thank you, sir. Thank you, F one and C uh, one. You have some specific point. Yes, uh, sir. Then you can take the floor. Yes. Yes, sir. So adding on to my colleague uh, Akash's uh, point of uh, raising awareness in their oil rig pollution prevention. they have done a good job in their paper they have presented this paper uh, they have done a good research in that uh, but uh, uh, extending this st uh, stance we we would uh, we would like to throw some light on the innovative techniques that they have presented the uh, a lack of innovation was seen in this paper also and uh, we as a country we are even, looking for even I, i would request you that if you could highlight what you would like to support and uh, keep it focused on that because okay, we require to close the session also okay sir so i would like to suggest my uh, uh, f1 counterparts to work up more on uh, new innovative ideas and research so you would like more information on that is what yes, you are saying yes sir i am sure during the breaks you can get in touch with them and discuss with them with ideas uh, what they want to convey across in their innovative methods yes sir thank you c1 there being no other cards on the table we are now at 12 22
we will come back at 12.35 to summarize the session, where after I will hand it over to the to Gaurav to decide on the lunch timings. So I'll see you back at 12.35. Thank you.
Thank you very much and welcome back, delegates, an interesting session, plenty of research outputs available to us during the session, quite a few innovative ideas also expressed by some member states. And now I will try to do my best to try and summarize the session so that we can have a way forward which would benefit everybody because yes recognition i think all the research shows that plastic pollution is really impacting all of us and it does require to be addressed a1 brought about the issues of alf dg had views on onboard garbage handling and how to deal with plastic waste. They did suggest various methodologies. ALFDG is generally supported that it requires to be addressed, and we do require to have a plan to address that. The replacement of an incinerator by a compactor did not find support, though subsequently, uh, Though subsequently, also other people have proposed compactors, people are not very clear as what sort of equipment the compactor would have. Therefore, possibly further papers on compactors, not in lieu of incinerators, but as an additional equipment, if found feasible, economical, and serving the purpose would be welcome. Moving on to that, B1 introduced a concept on containers, the how plastic escaping from containers lost at sea, either during an incident or otherwise, are also contributing, which is a fact. Besides LDFG is another major issue. They also highlighted the issue of plastic packaging materials. As far as the containers are concerned, the proposal they can take, uh, discuss with the secretariat, because presently IMDG code recognizes nine classes, how this can be incorporated, plus the innovative idea on how containers lost at sea can be recovered. If they are fine to, and why apply to plastics? Why not apply it to any container which contains hazardous material, which should not be lost out at sea? that could be taken up further in the appropriate forum. They also talked of LDFG and acoustic tax, which is something which we will take forward uh, for further study to make sure that it is economically viable and implementable. Port reception facilities is another aspect which requires to be covered up so that appropriate disposal of plastic waste. And that is where support generally for these aspects was there from other member states. C1 introduced the concept of critical areas within special areas. While some member states recognize the necessity, however, some member states felt that our solution for plastic litter should be global and not for specific regions. So at the moment, critical areas concept 
we are not able to move forward. However, in their papers, paper, as they have proposed uh, biodegradable netting on a universal basis, that should part, form part of the study on LFDG as we go forward. Plus, the proposals they had on using of plastic waste into construction of roads, methanol, found support. And those they can share in further papers with other member states. And other member states can also come up with similar ideas to the next session or with papers on the same. Team D2 also highlighted the issue of lost fishing gear. Plastic production at source, if you want to develop further, the appropriate forum would need to be gone to. They had introduced the concept of ocean cleanup. Member states were desirous to know of how they are approaching that. So they could submit either an information paper or any other member state also doing a similar work could submit papers to that aspect on in the next session of uh, MEPC. The recovery of fishing beer, uh, gear, the R&D involved will deal with ALFDG in a consolidated way. We had the paper from even which talked about an important aspect which got support from nearly all the participants regarding education awareness and training required and so that this information is spread more widely and it gets the appropriate importance that it deserves considering the harmful impact it is having on not only the ecology on everybody's health other points would be similar to what has been expressed on lost fishing gear team F1 provided us with research on the sources of plastic litter, multi-layered plastics, microplastics, and shared a lot of information and did point out that sharing information of best practices would be one of the best ways going forward. Thus, we encourage all member states who have any experience on dealing with this through information papers to share the information. F1 did highlight one issue regarding a lot of decommissioning activity, which is likely to take place in North Sea and US Gulf and has a potential to cause plastic pollution. Being aware of that, if some appropriate steps can be taken, is what is their proposal. Considering that this forum may at this stage may not be appropriate since it is dealing with vessels which are covered under NX5, though fixed floating platforms are also covered. But this would deal with when they are coming up for decommissioning. A discussion with the Secretariat can be done so that appropriate papers can go to the appropriate forum for being taken up so that in advance plans are in place how to deal with the potential of certain issues coming up with respect to NX5 related or any other MARPOL related marine pollution danger coming when you are doing decommissioning of an oil installation, floating platform, or any other similar platform. And such information be disseminated where it may not be currently in process, but in future could come up. Now, coming specifically to the issue of ALFDG, we propose a correspondence group be formed to study two aspects. One, how to identify the lost fishing gear so that traceability and accountability can be held. And second is the biodegradable research and development, how they can assist in replacing over a period of time in a sustainable fashion, the existing plastic-based fishing gear. This correspondence group would be formed under the chairpersonship of A1. All member states who are interested in joining this correspondence group may give their details to the secretariat, who would set up the timetable and schedule 
and we will set up the two terms of reference for this correspondence group. With this, I conclude this session. Thank you very much. And I suppose after a lot of food for thought in this session, it's time to have some food. So I hand it over to Gaurav. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you very much for conducting that session so admirably in your usual style. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are about 45 minutes ahead of time. So uh, I, I suggest we take, I propose we take a uh, lunch break till 13.30. We will assemble, re reassemble here at 1.330 hours. Thank you very much, everybody.
Are the Kolkata campus teams ready? Kolkata campus. They are joining now, uh, one by one, because they didn't have a link. So I just sent them the link. I don't know how come. Oh, okay, sir. Roger. Yes, they're joining. I just put the link on the WhatsApp group. So they okay. join. Joining now. I'm okay. still waiting for it to join. Start with. Radish. Radish, are you there? Okay, uh, Captain Gajanan. Sir, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, are we ready to go ahead? As your so, A three is still joining. I mean, okay. in this prepondent. Uh, I think so. Message didn't go to them. I had put it on the WhatsApp group that time only. The this thing is prepondent to thirteen thirty. Okay. I think they're joining now. Okay. Will you let me know? Most of them are there. Yeah, just about two minutes. I think so. Okay. Uh, can okay. we wait? I mean. If you don't yeah, mind, we can wait. No issue. With the permission of chair, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, with the permission of chair, I think we can, uh, ex you know, uh, wait for another five minutes. Yes, ma'am. Another couple of minutes, wait. No issue. No issue. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Captain Gajanan is Archan Bishwas 8052 also a part of the team, then is joined not in a correct fashion. Correct, correct. I told you already. Okay. So meeting, please take care of that. They join. Get out again and again, uh, reform the re re yeah. change their names. Okay. Thank you. 
अजीब अजीब नहीं हेयर मी यस आई कैन हेयर यू या आई जस्ट वांट टू से कैन वी फिनिश दिस अबाउट 15 मिनट्स बिफोर 5 बिकॉज़ वी हैव अ प्रोग्राम फ्रॉम 5 इज इट प्रोग्राम आई आई थिंक वी शुड बी एबल टू डू दैट सर since we are slightly ahead of schedule i think it should be possible yeah. anyway our target was to close by 5 yeah chairman sir i see that three members of the team a3 kolkata have joined maybe we can commence just a minute po we just get a one more minute 1335 we'll start <coughs> I think we can start. Yeah, A three is already there. Okay, thank you, Captain. So, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, after the lunch break to the third session of today's uh, topic on Marpol. Uh, the third session features the Kolkata campus of the IMU. The campus coordinator is Mr. Sudhir. Sena, Mr. Sena is an alumnus of the World Maritime University, and he superannuated from the DG Shipping in February 2018 as principal officer, and is presently a faculty in the IMU Kolkata campus. Thank you, Mr. Sena, for your very valuable contribution to this event. I take great pleasure in uh, introducing Captain Gajanan Karanjikar, the guide. 
for the Marpal at the uh, Kolkata campus. A multifaceted personality, Captain Gajanan is a multimodal transport expert, blue economy activist, visiting faculty at IIM, president of the All India Maritime Pilots Association, a firm and strong believer in women empowerment, executive coach, and when he has time from all this, he is also the head of the Coastal Shipping Division at Seekal Logistics Limited. Mr. Karanjikar is indeed a versatile maritime professional. Apart from the above, he still finds time to, uh, he's presently writing two books, one on ancient seafaring and the second one on blue economy. Amongst his lobby, uh, hobbies which he has listed is horse riding. He is also a member of the Bombay Natural History Society and very interestingly, he is the founder of Free India, Finding and Research of Endangered Environment. That is Captain Gajanan Karanjikar. Thank you very much, sir, for your valuable guidance to the uh, participants on the Kolkata campus in the IMU topic. I, Thank you, sir. I now hand you over to the chair, to Mr. Nayar for conduct of the next session. Over to you, Rajiv. Mr. Nayar? Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome Kolkata campus delegates. We will commence now the agenda item development of an action plan to address marine plastic litter from ships. We have submissions from eight member states, A3, B2, B3, C2, D2, E1, E3, and F2. I will go by that sequence and be inviting you to introduce your paper, followed by interventions, and then a small break, and then summarizing the session. So A A3, you may now introduce your paper. A very good afternoon, respected chair, fellow delegates, and everyone present here. Firstly, a sincere thanks for providing us the opportunity to present our paper on development of an action plan. Far too much of 300 million tons of plastic produced every year find its way into our oceans, food chains, ecosystems, damaging our health in the process. Marine litter causes serious environmental, health, and economic threats to oceans and coastal ecosystems. However, need to remember that well-crafted laws alone cannot solve the problem of maritime litter, but they are an important piece of the puzzle. Today, we team A3 from IMU Kolkata campus are very pleased to put our valuable suggestions forward in front of chair, which are a result of thorough research work done by team delegates on this subject. We would also like to mention through the suggestions that we are not imposing any kind of request or regulations for its adoption, rather considering it is a suggestive approach. We would like to thank all our viewers for providing their valuable time and would request to support the suggestions here. While. The subject of presentation is development of an action plan to address marine plastic litter from ships, by means of which we would be representing Vietnam which falls under the category of developing nation. Now, through our presentation, we have suggested some action plans which would be thoroughly depicted in the following slides. Now, I would like to hand over the proceedings to my fellow delegate Raghav, who would be speaking about fishing gear management. Uh, thank you, co-delegate. Continuing on the subject matter, 
I would like to start by stating that abundant, lost, or other discarded fishing gear happens to be one of the primary sources of marine plastic litters. Fishing gear is uh, thought to be uh, responsible for about 10% of worldwide maritime plastic trash, and according to estimates. Our first proposal is for improving the marking and data quality available for fishing gear management. There is presently no worldwide coordination or global information repository for the losses of fishing gear. In the light of the present status of information about fishing gear, pollution, and for the requirement of global efforts, reporting of the discharge and accidental losses of fishing gear becomes imminent. We identify the need for the establishment of an international data repository for reporting fishing gear losses and discharges. We propose uptake of voluntary guidelines on the marking fishing gear by making marking mandatory via an amendment to MAPOL and Extra 5. Each item of fishing gear should be recorded in the official books with the relevant information. It will strengthen international oversight of compliance and informants and also provide harmonization in reported data. In the second proposal, we recommend defining the reasonable measures that should be taken to avoid a major loophole that weakens the prohibition and leads to inconsistent implementation across countries. Several measures should be considered reasonable at a global level, and if they are not taken, a ship should not be eligible for the reasonable precaution exemption. For example, equipment on board to try to recover any lost fishing gear, equipping fishing gear with wires and trackers to enable their location and recovery and fishing vessel personnel should be regularly trained to prevent accidental losses, reduce soak times and best stowage practices. With Proposal 3 on garbage management plans and cost structure, our team suggests that there is currently no guidance on the components and design for port reception facilities of uh, trash at ports. As a result, we suggest enabling ships to dump all their Marple and Extra 5 trash in port for a set cost, known as a 100% indirect fee, in order to remove the motivation for uh, fishing vessels to illegally abandon fishing gears at sea. We also recommend the reduction of the 400 GD minimum tonnage essential for garbage management plants in Marple and Extra 5. Since most of the fishing vessels fall below the margin, we also request to provide greater advice on acceptable losses and gear labeling and provide quantitative guidelines for port receiving facilities. Now, I again will request my fellow delegate to deliver ending note to our presentation. Thank you, fellow delegate Raghav, for his words. Now, I'm going to highlight some key points about our propositions. We being the representatives of Vietnam, a developing nation with mentioned limitations and constraints have tried to make our proposal as effective and easy to implement as possible. And being a primarily fish-based society with heavy consumer, we have primarily focused on fishing gear reforms. We, along with recognizing the importance of regional work, have advocated for a better international cooperation so as to provide much needed synergy for effective solution. We have focused highly upon finding the loopholes and shortcomings of the current system and thus providing suggestions along with them like we have recognized the need for defining reasonable measures in NXJ5. We identify that there is a need for coordinated effort across the agencies and stakeholders for effective solution of the problem. Thank you very much for your patient listening. These are personal suggestions and can be worked out further in discussions with the working group. We would try to put the points presented in this paper as they would benefit each and every developing nation in best possible way it can, making our oceans worldwide plastic free, which is significant for entire marine ecosystem. Thanks to the chair and co-chair for patient hearing. We are open to all type of comments. You are muted, sir. Thank you. Technology takes its toll. I just want a clarification being in the chair. When you say personal view, are you talking of yourself as an individual or are you representing A3? 
सर ए थ्री थैंक यू फॉर द क्लैरिफिकेशन आई विल नॉट टेक द कार्ड ऑफ इवन इवन द फ्लोर इज योर्स yeah thank you respected uh, chairperson and co chairperson uh team a3 has suggested that fishing uh, um, fishing nets provide only 10% of the pollution that is part of the world of the ocean plastic pollution uh, i would also say that we support the training of fishing vessel personnel in their proposal 2 and in their presentation they have said that uh, the 10% plastics are part of uh, the 10% of the plastics which is part of the ocean pollution is co coming from the fishing fleet right so we had the concerns that what about the 90% other plastics that are part of the plastic pollutions in oceans thank you even okay uh, b3 the floor is yours uh with the permission of chair uh we would like to comment uh in 2019 in the 6th annual uh, our ocean conference in oslo panama revealed its fishing vessel tracking data through the gfw global fishing watch where gps tracking of fishing vessels have been extensively used uh the republic of panama wants to implement the gps tracking of fishing gear but failed to understand how it is a cost effective strategy because a gps tracking device is of a significantly higher cost in comparison to a fishing gear thank you sir thank you b3 c2 the floor is yours Thank you, Chair, for the recognition. Can I say something, uh, Mr. Chair, with your by permission? Well, Mr. Datta, is that your hand up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I please. just would like to request uh, the participants to specify whether they are supporting the documents or opposing the document. That is not come out from the last two speakers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Datta. I hope in your interventions. please be concise clear as what you are trying to say c2 the floor is yours uh thank you chair for the recognition as a3 mentioned the need of establishment of an international data repository for reporting fishing gear losses as a developed nation we believe setting up a public portal and tagging each gear with their unique country code along with their registration number would prove a vital in their pro progressing this scheme further with the large participation of fishermen and the seafarers in identifying and locating marine plastic litter during their fishing activities we would also request imo to set up a international fund for the enhancement of this program as it would be enable the developing nation to participate the large number uh, we the delegates of denmark extended our full support to them and we look forward to working with them thank you sir and as far as your request to imo you may kindly put it forward in a paper as to what request you have specifically to imo at a relevant session uh, carrying on with the interventions on the paper of a3 at the moment we would restrict the interventions on that content if you have any other views which you want to take up they would have to come through paper submissions i hope c2 uh, that addresses your query on imo establishing a fund e3 the floor is yours thank you chair for your recognition we would like to extend our support to the proposal of team a3 for the reduction of 400 gt minimum tonnage for the garbage management plant and we would also like to suggest an additional point that uh, the garbage manage management plan should be modulated according to the requirement of smaller vessel uh, to the requirement smaller vessel that is according to the amount of garbage produced and the garbage management facilities available on the board thank you sir. 
Uh, A3, uh, can you please switch off your mute yourself? You're coming in as disturbance. Thank you. A3, D2, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairperson, sir, for yielding the floor. First of all, uh, as the delegates of United Kingdom, we would like to extend our support to the proposal of setting up of international repository for fishing gear losses. We believe our implementation of blockchain technology uh, at port reception facilities where these direct fishing gears can be treated will also prove vital and we look for, forward to working with you. Secondly, we would like to raise our apprehensions regarding the cost effective uh, cost effectivity of the proposal of uh, uh, using sensors on fishing nets for tracking as they will also require regular maintenance. Thank you. D2, B2, the floor is yours. Thank you, Rekhpeta Chair, for the permission to speak. We would like to support A3 for reduction of 400 GT tonnage proposal. Thank you, sir. Thank you, B2. I see no further cards on the floor. So I now invite B2 to introduce their paper. Good afternoon, respected chair, co-chair, and delegates from all countries. We are glad to have this opportunity to present the paper on amending energy of five of Marco so as to protect marine ecology from vessel-based marine plastic litter. We were very pleased to put forward our suggestions and the research work done by our team on this subject. I would like to reiterate that these are suggestions and not imposing any kind of regulations. We would request everyone to support our ideas. We are the delegates of Russia. Here is our introduction. We as a developing nation under Division B, our team roles in IMO proceedings are large interest in providing shipping services, large tonnage, limited legislation, fisheries, national level manpower supplier, and large R&D. Here we go with our 2050 strategy, which is already mentioned in 27th and of our base paper. According to UNEP, every year, 8 million metric tons of plastics enter our ocean. To, on top of that, 150 million metric tons that currently circulate our marine environment. That's like dumping one New York City full of plastic into the ocean every minute of every day for an entire year. And that much plastic is bound to have an impact on ocean's ecosystems. Here we are with our three strategies, reduce, fine, and remove. As our idea is to reduce plastic litter, here we are with the first idea about fishing gears. The fishing gears are mainly classified into two types. One is active fishing gear method, another is passive fishing gear method. For the benefit of IMO delegates, we have mentioned this in the 21st and 26th points of our base paper. The most often used technique by the fishermen is active gearing method. This is beneficial to the fishermen, but not to the marine life. It is a fact that Catching capacity of the fishes is high in active gearing with least amount of time. But this method have been killing targeted and non-targeted organisms, including endangered and protected species. In this way, active gearing method leads to ghost gearing. Probability of losing nets is high in active gearing due to poor weather conditions, conflict with other vehicles, vessels, gear overuse are the few possibilities which may lead to loss of gears. Discarded fishing gear that is no longer under the control of fishermen, which may lead to trap and kill aquatic life. Passive gears are relatively simple in their design, construction, and use. They are gradually handled without mechanized assistance other than a boat, and they require very little specialized training to operate. So we can strongly say that the weather condition will never affect the passive gearing because the gears were fixed at certain areas. The fisherman is very low. The, co the count of losing their nets for the fisherman is very low in passive gearing because the control of the net is not in the hands of the fisherman to get out of his control. 
As we can see on the screen, active gearing method specifically implies that organisms caught in derelict fishing gears die as a result of predation and starvation. Derelict fishing nets uh, and trapping being kill, killing targeted and non-targeted organisms, including endangered and protected species. In this way, active gearing method leads to coarse gearing and can continue to ghost fishing for years once the gears are lost under the water surface. In conclusion, active gearing is major disruptive method, so we promote passive gearing, which is future of marine life. Me and my co-delegates request IMO to conduct awareness programs to educate fishermen about passive gearing method, and also to fishing companies encourage the method of passive fishing gear, which helps to reduce coast gears. With the permission of Chair, I would like to invite my co-delegate Pula Gautami to continue the presentation. In continuation of paper by my colleague delegate, with Chair permission, I would like to present. Good afternoon, Chair, and good afternoon, my colleague delegates. There are many organizations which cleans the floating plastic on the water. Then what about the plastic going deep inside the oceans? According to the point of 16 and 17 of our base paper, here we are with our second idea, which includes our other two strategies. Analysis of ocean sediments from deep has deep three kilometers suggests there could be more than 30 times as much plastic at the bottom of the world's ocean than there is floating at the surface. Suspended plastic materials in the ocean have been more harmful as the plastic materials are swallowed by marine animals and fisheries will cause them suffocation, which also leads to their death. We all know that sonar has been used to detect the submarines and underwater equipment since 1916. To detect the underwater plastic materials, we suggest to use Navy ship sonar waves, also known as military sonar waves. These waves are eco-friendly waves as they don't harm any fisheries. So we strongly suggest to use this military sonar waves to find the plastic litters deep inside the ocean. When we completely detect the plastic materials along with the location of the plastic, we will detect the type of the plastic and the density of the plastic in the ocean using these waves, which will help us to find the suspended plastic. Then we have to implement our third strategy of removing. We are proposing to use merchant submarines to complete our third strategy. According to our research, there are two digit number of submarines present with our developing nation, Russia. So we are proposing to use the merchant submarines to implement this methodology effectively to collect the gears and abandoned plastic, which is settled at the bottom and affecting the flora and fauna of the ecosystem. We would like IMO to kindly promote this to other countries which have naval provisions in their countries. Inactive submarines can also be taken into consideration. You all know that we are looking at this kind of exercise to remove the plastic from the ocean. I suggest IMO to take this crucial step to remove the plastic suspended in the ocean. Over to Jansi for the further presentation. So respected chair and co-chair and all the IMO delegates, I'm repeating again how our research work done. You can see the front part of the merchant submarine is a navy ship sonar dome specially made to detect plastics and gears without harming marine animals, which is our motto. The merchant submarine is a barrier and conveyor belt system that concentrates and extracts plastic from deep ocean. The flow path is uninterrupted due to the catamaran design, which allows plastic to flow freely into the device and the water to continue with the current. Now, this is all our B2 team entire research about. Thank you, respected chair and co-chair for patient listening. We are open for the comments. Thank you, B2, for sharing us your research and the results of your research and this proposal. I now open the floor for interventions. Uh, C2, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairperson, sir. We are skeptical about the economic viability of using Navy ship uh, to clean marine litter. As an alternative, 
we suggest using sonar surveys uh, using dragging of grapples and arrays of hooks that could be used to locate and then retrieve lost gear to a depth of as deep as 100 meter. As a developed nation, we would like to extend our support to team B2 and we look forward to working together. Thank you, C2. B3. So with the permission of the chair, I'd like to comment. So 83% of the fishing economy of Panama corresponds to the industrial fisheries, like the swordfish industry. We would like to express our concern for the usage of passive gear on commercial fishing, as using hooks and lines instead of fishing nets will significantly decrease our annual gross tonnage of 150,000 as recorded in 2019. Being a developing country which largely depends on commercial fishing, we would like to raise our concern on the, regarding this proposition. Thank you, sir. Thank you, B3. B3, I see your card is up again with two more hands. Uh, so I will, is it for the same intervention or is it for different intervention? So it is for different intervention, sir. Okay, B3, Sahil, you may have the floor. With the permission of the chair, I would like to state a concern regarding the proposition of the sonar used to detect the plastic. We would also like to understand the basis in which the government of a developing nation like ours will approve the usage of military grade sonar for waste tracking purposes only. Thank you, B3. D2, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairperson, sir, for providing us the opportunity to speak. We, the delegates of the United Kingdom, would like to extend our support to the proposal of encouraging passive gear fishing. But at the same time, we would request a clarification on the use of submarines to collect the plastic debris after locating them through application of sonar. Thank you. Thank you, D2. F2, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair, for giving us the opportunity to comment. Firstly, I would like to extend my support and regarding the, their concern of plastic present underneath the ocean. But on the other hand, I would also like to raise my concern regarding the usage of submarine in order to extract those pre-located plastic since their location may change in the due course of time. Thank you. Noted F2, C2, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair, for giving your recognition. We are the delegates of the Denmark who would like to support and appreciate the idea of delegates of the Russia for the following amendment of recycling plastic litter such as reusing and recycling. At the same point, we would like to also some add that these numbers are in very huge across the globe. So this can be also reduced by using these plastics to converting by into the roads and bridges. Uh, and these are also we already in the use in few countries even in india government order in 2015 that made it mandatory for all the roads in the country to use wasted plastics along with the leguminous mixture for the road construction thank you thank you c2 and i see the cards keep popping up a3 the floor uh, is yours thank you chair for giving us opportunity b a3 want to support B2 for the suggestion of starting awareness program for fishermen. Thank you. Thank you, A3. I see before I go on to B3, you have had the floor earlier. I will go to E1 first and then if you have something new, I will take it up E B3. E1, go ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you, respected chairperson and co-chairperson. With your permission, we would like to raise our concerns regarding the suggested amendment sections of the paper of B2. The paper mentions on page 5.15 that onboard processing or treatment should be implemented. No processes are mentioned thereafter. In the subsequent point, it is mentioned that discharge of waste into the sea can be considered in special situations. No special situations are mentioned. Regardless, we believe that plastic shouldn't be dumped into the ocean in any circumstances. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. 
P3, I see two cards of yours up. I assume it is something different from what you have stated earlier. If it is the same, you may put your card down. If it is something different, Rajneesh, you can take the floor. Thank you, Chairperson, for Chairperson for giving me the opportunity to speak. We would like to extend. We would like to concern about the marine, our the military sonar. No doubt, it's a good idea to track our plastic. But as a Republic of Panama, we may face a high national security threat as we are putting our classified project at risk, which are which is for benefit of the world, but yet to complete. This would re result in the project being un being co comp compromised, and they might result to, to be hand in in the wrong hand. Thank you, sir. Thank you, B three B three Anurag. You have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair, for sharing the stage. Uh, we would like to raise our concern about the cost effectiveness of this proposition. As they've mentioned about a decommissioned submarine, uh, which will be recommissioned for the sole purpose of plastic debris tracking and not retrieving. So, we, sir, that's we are uh, concerned about cost effectiveness. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I see again card of okay. E3, you would like to take the floor? Go ahead. Sir. Thank you, Chair. For, thank you, Chair, for your recognition. Uh, we like we like to extend our support to the team B2 for their uh, proposal of uh, a passive uh, passive fishing gear, passive gearing fishing techniques, and we would also concern about the econ economic uh, economic difference between the active fishing gearings and passive fishing gearings. Thank you. Could you repeat the last part? I don't think it was very clear to me. What Sir, you we would to like say. to. We, we are also concerned about the econ the economic difference between this their active fishing gearings and passive gear fishing gearings. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I see the B two would like to respond to some of the things. Uh, B two, yes, you can, and please. Uh, Keep it focused to the point. Thank you, Chair. I would like to thank every core delegates of IMO for their comments. And I would like to uh, make that clear that our fishing, passive fishing gears are made with hooks and nets, which are which will not last under this uh, water. Cause it will help. Cause it will uh, help marine animals to not stuck in the gears and not get killed. And I would like to tell that sonar. Everyone asking about sonar, which is sonars which are attached to the merchant submarine are just to detect the plastic under the sea. And the merchant submarine, which is Already we have said before, it is having a conveyor belt system which will collect the plastics in the, the way it was going on. This is all my comments about. Thank you. Thank you for the clarifications, B2. I see no further cards on the table. I now invite B3 to introduce their paper. We live in a golden era of technological advancements in the maritime industry. The notion that a 21st century world is subjected to accelerating advances is so dominant that it seems childish to even challenge it. Yet, a moment's thought tells us that this vision of unparalleled innovation can't be right. That many of these breathless reports of progress are in fact mere hype, broad speculations or in some cases even fantasy. A very good afternoon to the respected chair, co-chair, and the other delegates from the member states in attendance here. We, the delegates representing the Republic of Panama in her powers as an IMO member state, would like to present a collaborating action plan to address marine-based plastic litter emanating from vessels. Representing Panama, which has been a member of the IMO Council since 1972, essentially means that we are adhering to all the parameters mentioned in the presented slide in front of the respected chair. 
since its inception, the group has tried to come up with ideas that are going to be an improvement on the pre-existing model of waste management, whilst being cost effective as well. The idea was to bring together a set of innovations that are going to be adequately sustainable in the long run of operations, putting pre-existing technological advancements to use. The action plan is chalked out meticulously so that both the asset-rich member states of UK and Denmark and the relatively poorer IMO member states of the African belt and associated states can implement the amendments without any significant extra charges to the state's treasury. The first action plan would like to propose are measures to specifically address the loss of abundant and derelict fishing gears. Position of a unique identification number mandatory for all fishing gears on board a fishing vessel flying the flag of any of the IMO member states can be considered. These IMO license numbers would contain information about the vessel carrying it along with its date of manufacture and other relevant information. But how is this going to be cost effective you ask? This leads us to our next agenda on the plan, initiation of time-bound subsidies for the replacement of fishing gear by the concerned port authority under the dominion of any of the member states can be taken under consideration. These subsidies would be given on the basis of gross degradation of the fishing gear relative to the original condition in which the fishing gear was received by the vessel itself. The persistence of the IMO integration number after the fishing gear return would also remain a necessity in this subsidy-based scheme. This strategy can basically act as an incentive for the fishing vessels and subsequently their owners to address the issue of coast gear at its root. Making a database consisting of the details pertaining to the IMO integration number and the subsidy based program on the fishing gear would successfully fulfill one of our major agendas of preventing, mitigating and essentially curing the seas of the world of the dire impact that these coast gears have on them. Please look at the sample database prepared by the group while I call upon my fellow delegate to continue with the same presentation. Thank you. Thank you, co-delegate Pratne Biswas. Anthropogenic pollution poses a major threat to the marine environment due to its perilous effect on the biota, ecosystem and functionality. Keeping this in mind, the next major agenda on the action plan is to consider the construction of offshore disposal structures under the umbrella of a pre-existing offshore structure directly or indirectly aided by a member IMO state. The control center for the same will be located at the nearest port logistics facility present on shore. Only after a thorough inspection of the documents at this control center, the vessels will be given the green signal to dispose their waste at these offshore facilities. An adequate number of waste disposal structures would be strategically positioned around the pre-existing offshore platform and associated structures. Only the ships possessing the IMO identification number ratified by the Cape Town Agreement can discharge their waste at these disposal sites, thus ensuring minimum security concerns for the offshore platform. Furthermore, each of these disposal sites will act as a primary threat detection and security outpost for the offshore platform it is associated with. These waste disposal structures will also store the waste generated by the parent offshore structure, which can act as a valuable raw material in a low carbon economy without incurring any of the extra charges. But what about the vessels that are... This brings us to the last proposition in action plan. Construction and commissioning of a fleet of offshore vessels that would have the operational capability of transferring garbage from vessels directly can be considered. The use of decommissioned vessels by the IMO member states can be considered as these vessels will serve the rudimentary purpose of storing garbage from ships. The vessels can be manually tailored to provide maximum storage capacity, essentially scrapping off all the unwanted appendages it might possess. This can be a huge incentive for the shipping owners as this would ensure the conservation of fuel and also the disposal of waste without having to pay any of the port charges. Needless to say, technological advancements will always be a necessity in this new age. But trying to make the most out of the pre-existing ones must be the next line of action at this moment. Moreover, these propositions are basically suggestions that we as a representative of the Republic of Panama would like to put on the table for consideration of each and every one of the IMO member states. All these propositions envisioned add up to one single objective, one common goal. Mission 2023, a two-year joint operation by each and every one of the IMO member states and their organs to completely eradicate the malicious impact of plastic in the marine biota. 
the propositions as previously mentioned are stand alone but can be implemented in a manner that complements each other resulting in a more effective and economical way of dealing with waste it can be implemented into a course of action as shown in the flow chart the flow chart is a representation of what the accumulated action plan incorporating all the propositions we have made would look like the flow chart starts from the accumulation of plastic on board followed by systematic and decisive usage of the propositions given in the action plan to ultimately reach plastic recycling hubs these plastic recycling hubs will be created by the investment and participation of private and public stakeholders the central feature of this broad scheme however is the ultimate destination where the plastic debris will be accumulated irrespective of its source that is the port reception facilities and finally the recycling hubs the government can attract these stakeholders into this initiative by providing tax deductions and other incentives as they deem fit the recycled plastic as a raw material will be used or made profitable which is upon the sole discretion of the partakers of the merger the profit made from selling these products will be shared among all the stakeholders according to a percent investment share in the consortium the facilities would just not create the termination of plastic waste but also act as a boost for the plastic recycling sector and increase the gdp of the state and employability of low income families profitable businesses and a better world are no more conflicting goals as the measures stated are made keeping in mind that no losses are incurred and they tend to complement each other the measures also create a new sector and boost for innovation opportunity market research and generation of wealth we'll be glad to entertain any doubts or inquisitions that anyone might have to the respected chair and our fellow delegates it's been an honor thank you thank you very much b3 and i see cards are up d2 the floor is yours thank you chair person sir for yielding the floor to us uh, we the delegates of united kingdom would like to extend our support to, to the proposals made by panama first proposal as mentioned as point number 1 on page number 16 replacement of plastic single use plastic with biodegradable plastic alternatives we we propose a similar approach and we would like to work with you on these secondly we would also like to support the proposal of uh, establishment of pr uh, port reception facilities in and out of ports wherever profitable and sustainable we believe the implementation of our uh, proposal of blockchain technology will make these port reception facilities more efficient and accountable in their work just one apprehension and concern that we have is that in case of collision or turbulent weathers the waste that is collected on offshore waste disposal facilities might get dumped accidentally into the ocean uh, what plans do you have about these thank you sir thank you d2 even you may take the floor uh, thank you respected chairperson and co-chairperson we would like to raise two vital concerns for team b3 as they mentioned in page 16 and point 1 in their paper firstly mentioned the use of bioplastics over plastic which they mentioned made of corn starch and other plant based materials and this promotes deforestation we are already facing huge crisis of deforestation and secondly for use of cardboard instead of plastic but as we know cardboard is neither waterproof nor airtight please elaborate thank you thank you even c2 khalid the floor is yours thank you chairperson sir resonating with the views put forward by the delegates of panama of improving port uh, reception facilities we believe a uh, fisherman can bring back marine plastic litter which could be purchased at a uh, treatment facility which could be disposed in at a treatment uh, facilities at the port reception facilities and uh, uh, this we have mentioned in our base paper as the buyback program we as a developed nation would like to propose to lead this uh, program and we look forward to working with them together thank you e3 the floor is yours thank you chair and co chair for giving us the recognition we would with the delegates of uh, with the delegates of uh, 
Bahamas would like to lend our heartfelt support uh, for uh, for the uh, implementing of data logbooks as well as for using as as uh, their idea the prisoners with our idea and using decommissioned vessels for garbage storing from ships and we like we we like to work with you thank you thank you c2 kishan you can have the floor thank you chair for the recognition uh, in in b3 paper as mentioned on page 8 para 32 Point four about the microplastic released into the sea from the gradual bearing of epoxy paint due to iv saline sea water. So, what are your views regarding to this point? You want to raise the issue of microplastics coming from vessels hull paints. As I see it in their. introduction of the paper they have not touched upon the topic so if they wish to in the response elaborate on that they could having said that f2 the floor is yours thank you chair for the recognition we would like to raise our concern regarding the safety of the crew on board the decommissioned vessels being used as there might be some uh, technical difficulties in the vessel before decommissioning well noted f2 a3 the floor is yours thank you chairperson sir we team a3 would like to extend our full support and assure that we fully resonate with the team b3 for advocating the implementation of unique fish gear identification system okay B two, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you, sir. With the permission of chair and co-chair, I would like to support the thought about port system and the reducing of fishing gas. And I would like to raise the query about the mission twenty twenty three. What they have told about the economic budget? Sorry, uh, the last part what you said was not clear. Could mission twenty slowly. Yes, sir. The mission twenty twenty three. They have told about the budget issue, economic budget issue. I have a small query related to that. To that. What is the query? I just want to know the economic, uh, the budget issue. The uh, how much it takes to reduce the. The that, that uh, you can discuss on a bilateral issue. Okay, sir. Okay. even you have spoken before is there something besides what you have spoken before yes sir this is a different question thank you Please sir go ahead. and sir we would like to raise our concerns regarding point 4.2 on page 19 of their paper sir they have mentioned here that they are going to uh, use offshore vessels offshore vessels to store waste sir so we are considering the efficiency of this since we can easily use land based uh, land fills to store waste thank you sir thank you even i still see certain cards coming up f2 you have also spoken before you want to have another point yes sir okay go ahead thank you chair for giving me this opportunity to comment firstly i would like to extend my support regarding their usage of biodegradable plastic but also on the other hand i would like to raise my concern regarding to be very precise regarding what is the source material for uh, making this biodegradable plastic as they can face various objections regarding deforestation and all but there are some sources which could be used or which could be implemented and also simultaneously they would also not have to do a deforestation that was my concern thank you thank you and i see the card of e3 up e3 you have earlier supported their data log books and uh, decommission ship concept is it something different from that yes sir it is different from that sir okay go ahead thank you chair person for your recognition the we would like to extend our support for the team b3 uh, for the establishment of the recycling hub uh, beside the port reception facilities 
and it will help us to improve the functionality of port reception facilities and we believe that it will help to establish a better sustainable garbage management plan on port reception facilities and we would like to we would like to collaborate with you in the future thank you thank you for your interventions and yes uh, the concept of an offshore waste disposal structure to the best of my knowledge offshore exploration areas are very carefully guarded against from fishing traffic etc because you could have various incidents there is a security as well as a safety issue on offshore areas i trust the member states have taken that into consideration while they make their have put up their proposal because offshore installations do have specific characteristics which cover both safety and security angles having said that there being no further cards on the table i now invite c2 to introduce their paper c2 you may proceed excuse me sir sir i had the uh, answer to some of the comments sir if i could i uh, we are on to the next uh, please be in time if we have sufficient time i would take your point down i am noting it but we'll come later now c2 is in the process we will yes, continue sir. with them yes sir a very good afternoon to the respected chairperson sir co chair sir and all the honorable delegates present here today we thank the council for giving us the opportunity to represent as delegates of denmark and present our proposals the marine ecology from vessel based marine plastic litter 11 million tons of plastics are found every year in the open seas one of the most pernicious form of marine plastic pollution is discarded lost or abandoned fishing gear dubbed ghost gear every year a depressing number of 10000 nets and fishing gear are lost in the baltic sea alone we would like to point out that ghost gear might cause a navigational danger that threatens the safety of seafarers as well as cause harm to the aquatic life while ghost gear and plastic pollution are worldwide problems we still don't have an international agreement to tack tackle the matter owing to fragmented legislation therefore we attempt to quantify the problem locally and regionally and depict the immensity of the problem for the international maritime organization to discuss upon further owing to limited legislative implementation our developed nation focuses on the domestic coastal areas in the baltic region to mitigate the problem of marine plastic litter by abandoned fishing gear it is necessary to first locate and then remove them we as a developed nation with medium research and development coupled with strong manufacturing and industry capability propose a three step plan that could be implemented for efficient determination and collection of marine plastic litter with a particular focus on abundant fishing gear first we have sonar surveys surveyors can photograph pre defined regions of the sea floor using underwater acoustic sonar scanning sonar technology can be deployed with a resolution sufficient enough to depict objects with a diameter of less than 1 meter sonar scanning is capable of operating at a range of depths which has been used to identify ghost gear in waters as deep as 100 meters now we survey by dragging of hooks after there is a known location of concentration of lost fishing gear in a certain region methodical dragging of grippers or arrays of hooks can be used to locate and then retrieve the gear in most cases removal can be completed quickly after the gear has been located by utilizing the same grippers or hooks that were used to locate the ghost gear in the first place if not we document the location with bows or other means following further removal by authorities we proceed further by using surface visual surveys 
Visual surveys from boats are a great way to find the bores of missing traps and gill nets. Boat-based surveys, however, are best undertaken in areas where concentration of lost gear are previously identified. When the grapples attached to the small fishing boats and survey vessels with outboard motors catch a ghost gear, it would be pulled up to the surface, a boy would be attached to it and then would be released. Subsequently, larger vessels can follow the surveys and remove the gear. Moving forward, we must consider how often fishing gear is lost and we believe having an effective management strategy would be the most efficient way to avoid the abundant fishing gear from resulting in ghost gear in the first place. In this view, we propose a fishing gear identification program. This may be developed where fishermen would be required to tag their fishing gear with personally identifiable information. This program's objective is to ban excessive fishing gear use and thereby its unlawful disposal in order to eventually regulate and manage the use of fishing nets and traps. Denmark's economy is heavily influenced by fishing and seafood products and regulating illegal fishing will help boost our economy. Likewise, we propose this keeping in mind that developing nations with a growing economy will also benefit heavily from this scheme. Additionally, in order to enhance the implementation of this program, the Council may conduct two types of evaluations. First, to verify the program's effectiveness through the introduction of demonstration projects. And second, to encourage fishermen to participate voluntarily in the program through the execution of sustainable public relations activities. One such activity would be an establishment of a public portal through which fishermen and other seafarers can record sightings of consolidated marine plastic litter for further identification and subsequent removal by authorities. We are pleased to have the support of Team A3 as they also believe reporting of lost fishing gear is critical to solving the problem of ghost gear. Now we call upon our fellow delegate Shomudip Shah for further deliberations. For the next part, we focus on the problem of plastic usage on board ships. We are dealing with a tremendous marine plastic litter problem as a result of the daily use of a huge number of plastic components present on board ships, which are discarded casually into the sea. Plastics are a critical element of garbage that reaches the oceans and this is mostly due to an inefficient management of everyday items that are discarded by ships even 12 nautical miles away from the shore. We propose for all foreign flag ships to prohibit the onboard use of all plastic whilst in the Danish territorial region. We believe this can be achieved with the ban of single-use plastic on board a ship. Polyethylene, which is abundantly found in the Baltic Sea, is the most prevalent type of plastic used nowadays. A non-perishable petroleum-based chemical substance that is likely to prevail for decades after it is casually discarded to the open seas. As a result, we propose to implement a complete ban on single-use plastics on board ships. As alternatives, we suggest biodegradable plastics. Researchers that could degrade in as little as a few months. It has already been effective in mass usage in various parts of the world and could also be welcomed into the shipping sector. A startup called Envy Green, based in India, has been mass producing biodegradable plastics since 2012. Our final proposal is the buyback program. It aims at the utilization of recovered marine plastic litter. The buyback program's fundamental objective is to incentivize fishermen to remove and collect marine debris. When fishermen recover marine plastic litter during their commercial fishing, they normally toss them back overboard, owing to their lack of utility and difficulty of storing them on board until they are unloaded at the relevant port reception and treatment facilities for collection and disposal. 
This could be solved with the buyback program, which is colloquially referred to as the purchase program that can be implemented by developed countries with the primary objective of preventing the discharge of marine litter lifted on board during fishing activities by encouraging fishermen to bring back marine litter collected during their fishing activities. We believe all member nations present here whose economy is influenced by fishing and their fishermen will highly benefit from this scheme. We thank the chair and delegates of all member nations for their patience. We are now open to questions. Thank you, C2. And I call upon Ivan to take the floor. Thank you, respected chairperson and co-chairperson. We would like to extend our support on point three mentioning buyback program under force of action. However, there is one critical concern that we would like to point out in point number 6.2.4 under course of action which states, a public portal will be established online through which fishermen and other seafarers can record sightings of marine plastic waste for further identification and subsequent removal by authorities. Our concern is, how can sighting of plastic actually help during the removal process, keeping in mind that we have two major hindrances in the form of ocean currents and harsh weather? Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. F2, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair, for giving us the opportunity to comment. I would like, we would like to raise our concern regarding the usage of hooks or the array of hooks which C2 has prescribed, as it may happen that it can harm any marine organism. So, uh, keeping that in uh, keeping that in mind, we would definitely want them to be concerned regarding this mishap. Thank you. Thank you, F two, E three. You may take the floor. Thank you, Chair, for giving us the recognition. We want to raise the concern regarding the complete panel single use plastic on board, as it will not really be cost effective, and uh, also about the use of biodegradable plastic, as uh, biodegradable plastics uh, require high temperature for their degradation, and when it enters the water waters, then they will not be able to get the required temperature for the degradation and add on to the marine plastic litter. So, how do you plan to address that? Thank you, sir. So, if I understood, you have an apprehension that the biodegradable plastics will not also degrade once they are in the colder waters. Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. D2, you may take the floor. Thank you, Chairperson, sir, for providing us the opportunity. Uh, sir, we, the delegates of United Kingdom, welcome the proposal of buyback programs for the plastic litter and ghost gear. And as we also have a similar approach in our action plan, we also support the proposal of use of bioplastics on board the ships as an alternative to plastics. We would like to work with Denmark for the collective good. Uh, uh, using this floor, uh, we would also like to praise the efforts of organizations behind the initiatives like Glow Litter Project based on similar concepts as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you, B D2, B3, you can take the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair, for sharing us this day. Uh, we want to extend our support as a representative of uh, Public of Panama to the buyback program uh, proposed by Denmark, as it closely aligns with our subsidy-based scheme. A coordinated strategy by both the countries can make this prop proposition a reality. Uh, thank you for giving this opportunity to comment. Thank you, sir. OK, B2, you may take the floor now. Thank you, Chairperson. With the permission of with the permission of Chair and Co-Chair, we are the representatives of Russia. We would like to appreciate the, their ideas. And as you uh, has be, has C2 mentioned in their page paper 6.1.4, that the frequency of the sonar waves are 300 kilohertz, uh, kilohertz to 600 kilo, kilohertz, which may harm marine animals. So we suggest to use less than 200 kilohertz sonars or navy ship sonars, eco-friendly sonars. Then we can collab with C2. So in principle, you are OK with sonar, provided it's eco-friendly sonar in usage. Yes, is, is my understanding correct? Yes, sir. Thank you, B2. 
F2, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, for the recognition. We would like to support the idea of C2 of using biodegradable plastic as an alternative. Thank you. Thank you, F2. A3, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairperson, sir. We would like to extend our support for advocating the implementation of fish fear identification system, but would like to raise apprehension regarding the point which stating that biodegradable plastics will degrade faster in the presence of sunlight, but we need to deal with plastic that is dumped in the ocean. We would like to know how a biodegradable solution will be viable in that case. Thank you. A3. C2, I see your cards are up and you want to respond, but I still have comments from E3 and B2 again. Uh, E3 and B2, I assume it is something else you want to talk about. If that is the case, first E3, you may take the floor. If it is something already covered, you can put your card down. No, sir, it is something else. Sir. Thank you, Chairperson, for your recognition. Uh, we would like to support our uh, extend our support to the team C2 for the location and removal of gear by hooks. And we also want a clarification on the on their proposal of ban of access using gear gear when we ban of access using gear rings when we when we ban anything on board then there then their illegal action or non-adherence to the law come into the action now i want a clarification from pmc to what can be the suggestive plan to deal with this issue thank you uh number uh, I could not understand. Ban on which gear? Ban of ban on use of excess gearing, sir. Fishing gearings. Excessive fishing gearings. Excessing gear. Yes. Okay. B two, the floor is yours, and cards are still popping up. Uh, I see even as again raised card. I would request you to keep your interventions pointed, sharp, and concise and preferably at the same time b2 the floor is yours thank you respected chairperson sir for the permission to speak we like to raise the concern by which they are using hooks and chains which may cause marine animals would be trapped and dragged by them as my memory goes the same issue has been raised by f2 so you align with the views of f2 okay i see no further cards except for c2 which would like to respond c2 my request is if there are some things which are of generic nature you can deal with them during breaks but specific you would like something to be told to the organization you please go ahead and i see two cards i suppose you should be able to handle it uh, in one go yes sir Thank you, Chairperson, sir. First of all, the concerns, uh, we would like to thank for the valuable suggestions, and we would like to uh, address some of the concerns raised by the fellow delegates. Uh, using the public portal, we have uh, mentioned it in our presentation that we will be focusing solely on the consolidated marine plastic litter, which could be uh, identified and removed by the authorities. Regarding the use of hooks in uh, removing uh, plastic litter, we have mentioned in our base paper that we specifically will avoid uh, reefs and seagrass beds where there is a habitation of uh, aquatic life in high number. And we have also mentioned in our presentation that uh, as a developed nation with medium uh, research and development, we focus mainly around the, uh, the coastal areas where we can clean up better and in a more effective way without harming aquatic life in a uh, great way. Uh, I would also like to uh, address the concern regarding 
the use of uh, biodegradable plastic underwater sea when it is dumped we are using oxo uh, oxo biodegradable plastic which contains a uh, additive uh, that uh, degrades faster in comparison to uh, compostable uh, plastic so we believe that it can be beneficial uh, using biodegradable plastic on board ships that will be also thank you very much c2 and i see your colleague agrees with you and so has decided to put the card down so that could lead us to a faster cup of tea but having said that no i have one job to do b3 wanted to respond to the queries on the paper which i could not take last time uh, i now invite b3 and i would request delegates to now focus back on b3 paper you had raised certain queries b3 would like to respond to them and giving them this opportunity though the hand got raised after c who had started presenting so b3 uh, i am suddenly getting lot of disturbance uh, can you please mute your mics thank you very much b3 the floor is yours yes sir so by the uh... sir we would like to comment to d2's proposition so we would like to uh, extend our support to d2 as well because uh, they have extended the support for two of our points we would like to collaborate with them on the same but uh, they had a concern regarding the uh, waste the uh, waste disposal facilities offshore waste disposal facilities that are going to be in the ocean as like there were many other teams that did have a concern on this i would like to address them together as these waste offshore facilities would be uh under the umbrella of the pre existing offshore facility already present we are very concerned about the security risk that uh, that is getting presented because of this but we are uh, having a lot of amendments that will help with this security this risk reducing measures sir like we are going Thank to you. use racon on these waste disposal facilities we are going to install collision risk auto warning systems on these waste disposal facilities there are going to be solar rescue boats on these facilities these are going to be on the outer edges of the buffer zone that these offshore parent offshore facilities have so these are going to be a primary threat detection and a waste detection primary facility that is going to detect the uh, coming of ships so uh, the collision between ships and these offshore vessels will uh, offshore structures will be greatly minimized and uh, the cost effectiveness part of it so these will be made by the public and private stakeholder merger a consortium of sorts that we have talked about in our presentation before and uh, so that's the uh, concern i would like to raise about the offshore waste disposal facilities the other concerns that are there it will be uh, raised by my colleague delegate thank you sir Uh, yes uh, on the offshore yes i would recommend that you also keep in mind the other arms of imo especially with respect to concerns over underwater pipelines etc which yes, would be a navigational hazard if vessels are allowed closer to these offshore installations yes, yes sir your colleague can take the floor now and go ahead you are on mute anurag you have to unmute right sir uh thank you chair for sharing us this stage uh we would like to comment or uh, answer the comment of f2 uh, as they have mentioned about decommissioned vessel uh decommissioned vessels will be brought according to the basic requirement given in a catalog which will be formed accordingly answering to the comments of e1 and f2 Uh, using bioplastic is not a proposal of parity for us since we are fishing based nation bioplastic can be implemented by nation which can have a decent amount of production in agriculture also cardboard is not a parity proposal since it will be applicable where the problem of seeping through the content of con container is not there and also i would like to answer the comment of e1 the ship would not have to pay the surcharges revived in using the port Uh, thus, this would ensure that it's economical for ship and a measure of ensuring employment for the nation. I hope, sir. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yes. <coughs> Sorry, I hear somebody speaking. Uh, B three, you have one more candidate wanting to take the floor. 
yes sir even sorry it is not open for any further interventions it was only to allow this you can put your card down thank you b3 okay. sir we would like to thank d2 c2 e3 a3 and f2 for the support and we would like we would love to cooperate with them and uh, make pl reduce plastic in the oceans sir thank, thank you very much with that i think it is a bit of time b3 i think i am out of time now it is not a constant Right. Fastest fingers, first competition. So please, you had your opportunity. Thank you very much. So now, thank you for giving us the opportunity, sir. You are welcome. Thank you very much. We now take a, I think, a well-deserved tea break. We require a bit of action to get back to the next four introductions. So we will take a break until. Ten past three, we will gather at fifteen ten, and proceed further. Thank you.
Good afternoon and welcome back, delegates. Uh, Mr. Datta and Mr. Ramamurthy, I hope you have rejoined us. Then I will like to commence the last session of the day. Thanks, Mr. Rajiv Nayar. I am back, Ramamurthy. Thank you, sir. I am there. Thank, thank you, Mr. Datta. So welcome back, delegates. And we take up where we left off from and continue with our agenda item of developing an action plan to address marine plastic litter from ships. I now invite delegates from D2 to introduce their paper. Thank you, Chairperson, sir. Good afternoon to the respected chairperson, sir, co-chairperson, sir, and all the earnest delegates present here. We, the delegates from the United Kingdom, are extremely grateful for the opportunity given to draft an action plan to suggest amendments in Annexure 5, 7378 of MARPOL for protecting marine ecology from the menace of marine plastic litter. Our action plan envisions a plastic-free ocean, and therefore, we de have devised the policies for efficient implementation across the globe. We seek cooperation from all the respected delegates for scrutiny and suitable modifications in the policies for it to ultimately achieve our collective vision. For tackling a challenge as alarming as marine plastic litter, an action plan targeted at its source is vital. The most prominent sources are shipping vessels, cruise passenger ships, which are responsible for generation of significant amount of plastic litter. Apart from these, inadequate port reception facilities and large-scale mismanagement of ghost gear by fisheries contribute to the menace. Our multifold action plan consists of five promising proposals tackling the challenges posed by the sources mentioned earlier. Requested your kind attention, we will move forward with to our proposals. Recycling plastic is not the ultimate solution, as only 10% of plastics ever produced get recycled or rather say decycled as its quality deteriorates. Therefore, we propose a reduction in consumption of single-use plastic on board vessels right from the source by gradually replacing it with biofriendly alternatives like fibers extracted from corn, mushroom, bubbles of seaweed water and cellophane made from wood pulp. Other plastic materials like straws, Q-tips, stirrers are proposed to be replaced by paper or bamboo alternatives. Similarly, packaging materials extensively used on board can be replaced by upcycling corrugated bubble wrap, air pillows, cardboard, and paper. We also propose replacement of plastic bottles with recyclable aluminum can, as recycling aluminum saves 20% more energy than recycling plastics. Many of these alternatives are already under use in various industries, even shipping. As a developed nation with access to a formidable R&D, we aim to make the application of bio degradable plastic alternatives like the ones mentioned above more accessible and affordable by developing innovative methods of production. Moving forward to our next proposal, cruise ships over the years have become most frequent violators of MARPOL regulations. By large scale dumping of plastic along with food waste, Carnival Corp Corporation, a prominent cruise liner in 2019, paid a sum of 20 million US, US dollars as a fine for its violation. We suggest that the countries take a lead in implementing legislative action to prevent such. Therefore, we propose cruise ships already under use to be retrofitted with biodigesters, a new innovative machinery over the period of two years. And the ones built after 2021 are proposed to be built with similar upgradation. Biodigester completely separates plastic from food waste. When the mixture is added with flour and certain mixture of enzymes, leaving behind a non-hazardous liquid byproduct and separated plastic left to be stored and processed later on port reception facilities. We suggest that the functioning of biodigesters be inspected during regular audits of cruise ships by port authorities in coordination with the environmental officers for a stringent implementation of policy. We believe the proposal to be economically feasible as the average cost is minimal in comparison to hefty fines paid by cruise liners for violations. Biodigesters are already witnessing acceptance among few cruise liners. Now, I kindly request the Honorable Chairperson, sir, to allow me to introduce our fellow delegate to carry out the 
remaining presentation. Thank you, sir. Moving forward towards our next proposal. Digitalization is one of the most up prominent upcoming trends in the maritime industry. We believe gradual digitalization can make reception facilities more accountable. Therefore, we propose execution of blockchain technology and IoT at port reception facilities for efficient handling of plastic litter. Blockchain technology along with IoT will be used to ensure that there is no lapse in handling of the plastic litter at reception facilities by making the data of garbage record book available to the concerned authorities through a centralized server system of port authorities. To make the proposal economical, implementation of extended producer responsibility is vital, wherein the non-recyclable litter will be segregated at the reception facilities on the basis of manufacturers and hence make them completely or partially liable for appropriate disposal. Our next proposal is concerned with ghost care. Ghost cares are the discarded fishing gears which continue to harm the marine ecosystem and can last for 600 years. We propose the enactment of semi-biodegradable fishing gear, which is essentially a complex fiber made from blending, the synthetic fiber with the biodegradable fibers of PBAT and PBS resins, and simultaneously registering more fishing vessels across the country with IMO to bring them under, under the jurisdiction of Marpol. This would ensure the effective implementation of our proposal and a check on intentional laws of fishing gear. The use of biodegradable resins in the proposed fishing gear reduces its lifespan, thereby reducing the harm done to the marine ecosystem. At the same time, semi-biodegradable gear is more viable than biodegradable, as it is economically feasible than the biodegradable counterpart. In our country, the fisheries ministry has extensive exposure and strong legislative implementation, which makes it feasible for our nation to adopt this policy and to put it into action. All the efforts given above deem meaningless in the absence of necessary recovery of the plastic debris in the ocean. In a random fishing experiment, it is found that on an average, the ratio of fish to plastic collected in major fisheries is 60 to 40. Therefore, he suggests that the governments provide some incentives, whether monetary or non-monetary, and create awareness among the people associated with maritime industry, like fishing and diving communities, to collect those plastics and derelict cares which they find in the ocean. These collected plastic items can be recycled at port reception facilities to make into usable items, which will be partially funded by the EPR. South Korea launched back in 2003 the Derelict Care Buyback Program, in which the government provided fishers the money in return for the ghost care they provided. Similar projects are also launched by authorities like NOAA. The Glow Litter Project, which is an IMO-affiliated initiative headquartered in our soil, is doing a wonderful job at curbing marine pollution. It supports the developing nations in identification of opportunities for the prevention and mitigation of marine litter, with a special focus on plastic litter. Being a part of such a project on an international level, we would request all the member states to join hands with us. We have the support of Denmark, and we look forward to work with them. We believe that the policy proposals mentioned in the action plan are well-rounded, economical, and have, a, and have a viable worldwide applicability. We, in the spirit of world cooperation, aim to spearhead these necessary changes. Our action plan encompasses the spirit to fight for plastic-free ocean being a joint cause. Therefore, we seek humble support from the member states ranging from providing dedicated workforce to collaborative R&D ventures and from social awareness to high manufacturing power for efficient implementation of action plans, and thus save humankind and its consciousness from the cycle of the mass seeker being committed daily on marine ecology. Thanking the chairperson, sir, the co-chairperson, co co sir, and all the respected delegates for patiently listening to us. We are open for interventions. Thank you. Thank you, D2. And I open the floor for interventions. B3. Thank you to the respected chair for allowing the Republic of Panama to comment. IMO 2020 regulations for the reduction of SOX and NOx emissions essentially is crippled ship owners across the world and especially in Panama being one of the largest exporters of shipping and shipbuilding services. 
the most effective way of complying with this regulation is retrofitting of scrubbers which cost 1 to 5 million dollars for a single retrofit thus our main concern lies on the fact that the, about the cost effectiveness of the retrofitting of the digesters bio digesters on top of it thank you sir thank you for allowing me to answer thank you b3 f2 the floor is yours thank you chair for giving us the opportunity to comment i would like to fully uh, we would like to fully support d2 on their plan of using biodegradable plastic and since it's in alignment with the suggestions we have but would also suggest to be a bit precise regarding the source as i have as we have mentioned earlier that what source they are using for for making those biodegradable plastics thank you thank you f2 even the floor is yours thank you sir thank you respected chairperson and co chairperson with your permission we would like to raise a concern regarding the retrofitting of cruise ships with biodigesters a plan which is still under testing also we know that there already exists a sewage treatment plant in sea going vessels biodigesters require quite some time sometimes as much as 40 days to completely neuter waste How do the delegates of D2 plan to upscale the treatment plant, which will also increase the production of harmful gases like hydrogen sulfide and methane, which are a concern in passenger vessels? Thank you. Thank you, Evan. B3. I have again B3. Anurag, I assume it is a different. Uh, with the permission of chair, I would like to comment. Uh, sir, Panama is a nation of limited legislative and technological implementation. Uh, because of that, uh, the representative of the Republic of Panama would like to address the function difficulties of adoption of the blockchain technology. Uh, the manpower of for the uh, ports of Rotterdam, Antwerp, and Hamburg, who have already implemented this technology, is very diversified in terms of size, operational level, and availability of resources, and also belong to developed nation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, B three. I now call upon F two to take the floor. Thank you, Chair, for providing us the opportunity. Uh, sir, as they mentioned, to use the uh, semi biodegradable plastic as an alternative, we would like to seek some more information regarding the decomposition of semi biodegradable plastic, as the name itself suggests to have a part of plastic in it. thank you f2 though this is the second time you're taking the floor on the same issue of biodegradable plastics i am sure d2 would have heard you and would clarify c2 the floor is yours thank you chair for your recognition we support the delegates of united states of proposal for the providing incentives to the maritime communities for the recovery of plastics but we have apprehensive regarding the economic feasibility of semi biodegradable fishing gear okay e3 the floor is yours thank you chair person for your recognition we would like to support team d2 for their proposal of digitalization of port reception facilities with the blockchain and iot and we believe that this will help uh, help us in establishing a sustainable management plan on port reception facilities and we are looking for your collaboration thank you thank you e3 d2 i assume you want to respond so you have the floor now thank you chair person sir for yielding the floor to for responding to the comments raised and concerns raised by member states first of all i would like to like to thank uh, teams uh, c2 e3 and uh, others who have supported our proposals now addressing the concerns raised by others first of all for implementation of blockchain technology in developing countries who believe that they do not have enough infrastructure for implementation we do understand that digitalization needs to be gradual and therefore and as we are a developed nations we believe that other uh, along with other developed nations will help you in implementation of blockchain technology to make these uh, efforts sustainable talk about semi biodegradable nets uh, who have raised uh, concerns about their uh, viability we know that 
currently there is not abundance of them but with a large uh, formidable r&d sector we believe that we will uh, produce more uh, efficient large scale production and manufacturing processes and will require the help of developing nations who have a manufacturing power in production of these so that these can be used on a larger scale talk about biodigesters on cruise ships biodigesters that are under testing can reduce food separate plastic from food waste within within uh, 48 to 72 hours and it will result in only a uh, non hazardous liquid by product that can be dumped into the ocean there is, a, uh, there is an, a very small amount of release of these uh, uh, of these uh, harmful gases plus these can also be used in form of biogas uh, which is an energy source that can be used as a few as energy source on ships in the future talk about uh, bioplastics we are not saying that we should we are saying that bi- uh, single use plastic should be uh, replaced with bioplastics and uh, the development of these will be through r&d and the manufacturing power of the developing nations bioplastics are not supposed to be dumped into ocean intentionally they are to be brought back to the port reception facilities where they can be recycled and be reused in, uh, unlike the single use plastic but in sense uh, if if in, unintentionally there is a dumping of bioplastic into the ocean the life span or the harmful effect that is done to the marine ecology gets reduced significantly therefore we propose this thank you thank that will you. be all from our side thank you d2 and uh, there being no further cards on the table i now invite even to introduce the table a very good afternoon to all dignitaries and my fellow delegates present here I am Aurelio Mandal, representing the Republic of Marshall Islands. Our delegation is honored to have this opportunity to present our strategies, which address marine plastic litter from ships. I would like to reiterate that these are mere suggestions, keeping in mind the huge threat posed by marine plastic litter to the biosphere. I would request all the delegates to listen to our suggestions carefully and critique them well. As an island nation. with a significant portion of tonnage in the world maritime fleet we are highly dependent on both the ocean and ship during our deliberations we came to the conclusion that pollution by microplastics is already a huge emergency and researching and calculating statistics should only be a secondary concern as compared to acting on strategies which give an immediate effect with long lasting consequences being mindful of this we have drafted four strategies keeping in mind three key areas of the plastic production disposal system strategies 1 and 2 will focus on reducing plastic waste discharge at the source strategy 3 will attempt to streamline plastic garbage disposal systems and strategy 4 will add and modify to the existing legislations regarding fishing vessels venturing into deep sea now i request my fellow delegate archan biswas to take over the proceedings and explain the strategies in detail Thank you, co-delegate Aurelio. The first strategy that we propose is the introduction of an emergency plan called the Shipboard Accidental Plastic Discharge Emergency Plan, abbreviated as SAPDEP. This is to be an emergency plan that is to be followed in case there is an accidental discharge of plastics above a certain threshold. The SAPDEP calls for an amendment of Annex Five of the Marpole Convention and. Ch- Marple Convention and shall take its outline from the already existing SOPEP and SMPEP emergency plans. SAPDEP shall ensure that there is a combined effort by all the stakeholders and the nearest member states from the accident site to take up clean up operations and recover the maximum amount of plastics that has been discharged and also consider recovering sunk plastic. In case the SAPDEP is enforced all the data is to be collected by stakeholders involved and the member states and submitted to the pollution prevention and response team for analysis and not cause any further mishappenings the second strategy that we propose is to reduce the use of plastic packaging on board ships we aim to use the least amount most preferably biodegradable or completely eliminate plastic packaging on board ships 
we propose a certification committee under the guidance of the joint group of experts on scientific aspects of marine environmental protection or ges amp to certify the plastics that can be used in ships and also issue a certificate to the ships and ship chandlers allowing them to use certified plastics if this strategy is to become law the ships and vessels should only use products which are packaged in certified grades of plastic the ship chandlers shall also abide by this law and only deliver goods in certain plastic packaging in case of non adherence of this law it would attract fines along with cancellation of the certificates of the ships and the ship chandlers that would no longer allow them to use plastics on board or supply plastics to other vessels i now give the floor to my fellow delegate sumit das to explain the further two strategies thank you co delegate achan biswas in the third strategy we propose the setting up of a committee under the guidance of gsam that would monitor the creation and maintenance of uniform garbage reception facilities at ports the uniformity in garbage and plastic collection facilities would ensure quick and efficient transfer of garbage and thus plastics this strategy aims to reduce the production of plastic waste in sea going vessel by limiting the amount of plastic waste that they can produce this committee will receive funding from all the ratifying states and shall use its resources to maintain uniformity in recycling plant infrastructure also we would like to pr propose two record books one by the ship staff in the garbage record book to keep a record of the amount of garbage produced along with the amount of plastic waste produced second record book is to be maintained by the port facilities as to how much garbage and plastics were collected by them to various vessels there will be a maximum limit to plastic garbage produced in ship in a year which shall be recorded in the garbage record book now let us talk about a post strategy once the fishing gear has deteriorated to the point where it can no longer be used it can be recycled however it is dumped into the sea or stored rather than recycled as there is not a sufficient amount of incentive to bring the nets to recycling facilities this problem can be solved if the imo states and businesses work together and create a pull factor to reuse fishing nets keeping this in mind several precautions should be deemed reasonable and if not undertaken should preclude a deep sea fishing vessel from claiming the reasonable precautions exemption this precautions include deep sea fishing vessels should have equipment on board to attempt immediate retrieval of any lost fishing gear large fishing gear should be equipped with buoys and trackers to enable their location and recovery and to connect them with their owners in case of loss periodic training of deep sea uh, fishing vessel personnel should be undertaken covering topics such as the precautions to be taken to prevent accidental losses the above course will also teach the use of fishing gear retrieval equipment mentioned in point 1 this training will be administered by the registry under which the deep sea going vessel is recorded the training will be given to the crew of the vessel after the owner has declared his crew on successful completion of the training the owner shall receive or renew their registration this strategy aims to fix loopholes in marpol annex 5 and to create a strict environment on fishing net recycling this will mean that fishing uh, vessels will be careful with their nets as the legal side of the situation will not be lax on behalf of team e1 i thank everyone to give us an opportunity to present our ideas and strategies we are now open for comments and suggestions thank you thank you e1 for your presentation and your strategies i now open the floor to interventions team b3 thank you to the respected chair for giving the representative of panama the opportunity to comment we would like to raise the concern regarding the certification system for minimizing plastic in packaging and fail to grasp the understanding from the base paper and the subsequent presentation about how this is going to be an apt incentive for the packaging companies to reduce the plastic content in their packaging since only legislative reforms take more time to be put to practice and the dire issue of microplastic and vessel waste money later needs to be addressed as soon as possible thank you thank you b3 e3 swaraj thank you chairperson for your recognition uh, as the team e1 mentioned in their strategy 2 that that is ship should be stocked with the product that are certified with the certified with the minimal plastic we want a clarification that who will be responsible for the non adherence to the law 
as its uh, safe authority product manufacturing companies or other body involved in the system thank you thank you e3 d2 the floor is yours thank you chairperson sir for providing the opportunity we the delegates of uk extend our support for the strategy of sabdap under the ppr which aims for the achievement of common goal of reduction in marine plastic litter we also extend our support and would like to implement blockchain which we proposed in our paper for the maintenance of logbook as mentioned on page number 6.4.3.1 thank you thank you d2 i see the card of e3 up e3 somalia yes sir Th uh, thank you chair and co chair for giving us recognition we would uh, extend our support to the strategy 4 which deals with the grouping of vessels uh, according to amount of waste generated and you are also looking uh, for for the for your collaboration thank you thank you e3 uh okay even you want to respond to this go ahead yes uh thank you sir for sharing the stage with us uh, we would firstly like to thank team d2 and team e3 for extending their support to our strategies as for the queries of team b3 it is mentioned in our paper that in 4.2.3 in the expected outcomes section that the committee will spend some time to test the initial measures as we understand that any legal reforms take some time to uh, to get properly implemented but this is absolutely necessary because we are not thinking about just the initial conditions we are also thinking about the future and we believe in the future it will help out a lot thank you thank you even for your clarification i still see even card is up so archan yes, you want to take the floor yes sir go ahead thank you chairperson and co-chairperson for the second uh, concern that we had it was who would be responsible for the second strategy we'd like to say that we had already mentioned in the presentation that in case uh, these there is a non adherence of this law it would attract fines along with cancellation of the certificates for the ship as well as the ship chandlers because they will be the people who would buy it from the manufacturers right so if you don't it's a basic rule of the economics if you have demand you'll have supply so the manufacturers will su supply the grades of plastics when there is a demand of such grading grades of plastics thank you thank you i see the card of even popping up again Yes, we would like to add to the point of question that in our paper, in action section, we have a, a point: if non-adherence to norms by an agent slash organization is discovered, the certification will be voided, and the organization will be penalized on the basis of state laws. So the states have to take an action and formulate the laws. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you for your replies. I see no further cards. so i will now call upon f2 to introduce their sorry i will call upon e3 to introduce their paper my apologies a very good afternoon to respected chair and co co, co chair good afternoon to all the delegates present here Thank you very much for the opportunity to present the paper on development of action plan to address the plastic litter from ships. We are very pleased to put forward the suggestions and the research work that me and my colleague delegates have done on this subject. I would also like to say that these are some mere suggestions and not imposing any kind of regulation on the member states. Thank you very much. We would request everyone to support the suggestions given here by. The subject of the presentation is to reduce the number of abandoned, lost, and discharged fishing gears, and we also have. some questions regarding improved functioning of the port disposal facility uh we are representing bahamas just to give a small gist of us we are a flag of convenience with large tonnage moderate legislation limited trade large scale domestic fisheries limited research and development and plus if there is what with no training experience 
as we know that how plastic is wreaking havoc in our ecosystems it is said that plastic will outnumber many species by the year 2050 and imo is planning for zero plastic discharge from ships in the year 2025 and in that process there are some hurdles like effective reporting of the plastic waste seafarer training for proper disposal of waste which is needed to be done for the results we are aiming for we have suggested some action plans and here they are We know that Regulation Six of Marpol and its five deals with the exception and the accidental loss of fishing gear is mentioned. We are suggesting to remove the word "accidental" and take these measures to restrict the loss of fishing gear as well as reduce waste. In Proposal One, we talk about the effective and effective marking system. Marking could be done of all types of fishing gear, be it nets, rods, or buoys. An effective and affordable marking system should be designed, which can be easily adopted by all the fishermen. The marking can be the registration number of the vessel. And should ensure effective readability. The type of marking material should also be environment friendly and should not erode easily. The using of certain codes like barcodes and QR codes can be etched on the fishing gear. With which we come to the next point, proposal two. We are living in the digital era and we are trying to impose artificial intelligence in everything. Many things are getting digitalized. So using digital code on the fishing gears will be helpful for easy inventorizing of the gears. This logbook will be used to keep various data, such as the time of issue, return, type of the gear, the manufacturer of the gear, and all these data can be accessed by scanning the code on the gear. The JDA logbooks can also be provided to other flag states as well as other member states as a report on all the inventories of, to avoid any discrepancies regarding ALDFGs. Coming to proposal three, the frequency of the reporting of the AL, uh, abandoned, lost, and discharged fishing gears would be based on their material. If the gear is made up of plastic, the coastal bodies should be reported within 24 hours, and the same report should be sent to the flag state within 40, less than 48 hours. If the material is environment friendly, then the report to coastal body should be done at the earliest, and an annual report to the uh, to the flag state should be sent. Along with this, the ge geographical coordinates, weather conditions should also be mentioned in the report, which will help in further investigations, and that would lead to finding out if the disposal of the gear was a Of gear by a particular vessel was an unlawful one or an accident or really an accidental one. Now, according to the aforementioned affirmation changes, the possible outcomes might be that the number of unreported, abandoned, lost, and discharged fishing gears will come down as the frequency of reporting will increase if this marking scheme is implemented successfully. Vessels will be careful with their improper disposal as investigations might lead to serious actions like a hefty fine being imposed on them. Thank you for your patience hearing now i would like to hand over the proceedings of the presentation to my colleague delegate swaraj pur thank you thank you my colleague delegate for giving me the floor in order to address the problem of ship generated marine litter there is a strong need for the introduction of marine litter management policies and the system that might cover issue of marine litter management on board and reception of litter via reception facilities in ports To make the implementation of MARPOL more effective and applicable, we would like to suggest few guidelines which need to be added in the revised guideline adopted by the MEPC on March 2018. The guidelines are as follows: the first, the disposed plastic, disposed plastic from the ship should be segregated, and the recyclable, recyclable plastic from them should be transferred for the recycling process. And a receipt would be demanded, which may include type of type and amount of plastic. Date of handover, etc., for record purposes. And the second part is the port reception facilities should not accept the disposed recyclable plastic from the ship if they don't have a proper recycling facilities, such as a small island. There might be the possibilities of discharge of these plastic to the seas. And the third part has two sub part. Part A: Port reception facilities should display a placard that notify the worker about the requirement of guideline one and two. The card shall be written in the English and original language of the port state. And the part B, a play card may be made of any plastic, metal, or other material capable of standing without deterioration or a substantial reduction in effectiveness exposure to the open weather condition. The play card should be renewed in every three months. And the last part will be port reception facilities maintain garbage record book. Which contain all the records related to the transfer of plastic for recycling process attached with the receipt received from the recycling body, and all other information related to the management of disposed plastic. To implement these guidelines effectively, 
work reception facilities require manpower support. That's why we are proposing the idea of requesting to the local municipalities of a particular port state to send their work officers and workers for spreading awareness and maintenance respectively. We propose to the subcommittee for flag state implementation for revising the guideline which will lead to the effective result that we are aiming for. And we request IMO to invite all the member government and parties to the Marpol Convention to bring this guideline to the attention of all parties concerned. In particular, port state are invited to make it available at a port reception facility. Thank you for your presence here and we are looking for your support and collaboration to achieve complete litter free marine ecology and we are open for all type of comment. Thank you. Thank you very much, E3. Uh, with the permission of the judges, I would like to just make one observation. Uh, Mr. Ramamurthy and Mr. Datta, if I have your permission. Uh, I, Sir, go, please go ahead. Yes. I please have go, heard this disclaimer from in this session quite a few times that we are not proposing a regulation or a mandatory thing. Please understand, we are doing a IMO mock session. If that is not what you are doing, that is what we are here for. In your, you start by saying remove the word accidental from Regulation 6. And I'm not specifically mentioning about Team E3. There are other teams also who have done the same thing. So I would, I just wanted to take a minute off and tell you, yes, it is a job to be done. There are regulations and we are here for the purpose of improving, amending, whatever. But we are in the job of discussing regulations here. So please do not get into a disclaimer that we are not. I don't know what is the purpose of that. The whole purpose of the exercise, if you're saying remove the word accidental from regulation 6 and X5, you are asking for an amendment to the regulation. Then how can you at the same time take a disclaimer that we are not talking about regulatory issues? We are the whole purpose of IMO is to talk about regulatory issues. This is a generic comment to all the teams of Calcutta because I felt that somewhere along the line, you possibly, there may be various reasons, but I just wanted to set my views on this. If the judges have something to add on that, I would like to take it now before I open the floor for any uh, interventions. I fully agree with you. <coughs> The chair, that this act is probably it is a common thing for this entire presentation what has been made in Calcutta. Probably uh, they have been uh, taught in a way that probably this has been made that way. I am not sure about it, but you are absolutely right. We should go into the mind that the purpose of making these presentations are looking for any loopholes in the regulations and to ensure that any amendment can be made in the regulations in order to ensure the purpose is served. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. So, so I uh, just, uh, miss, miss, can I get the floor, please? Sorry, sir. Please go ahead, can I Mr. Get the floor, please? Yes, Mr. Dutta, please yeah, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair, for allowing me the floor. I also aligned myself with uh, Ramamurthy, sir, the other judge, because uh, this mock session has been made to intervene and give your opinion. And you have a right and you have full authority using parliamentary words for amendment, anything. So uh, you can have this kind of disclaimer is not accepted for the participant. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Datta. I see Captain Gajanan would like to say something on this. Uh, it is on the same subject, Captain Gajanan. Sure, sir. Very good evening to you. Probably they are trying to say they're not imposing anything onto the, uh, as, by the way of, you know, sovereign rights. So yes, and that is what we want something. to tell them. Yeah, yeah, that's what we want to tell them. Your job is to, if you feel something is wrong, that is your job sitting here in IMO to get it right. But please, please don't, 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 don't need to put putting forward yeah. a suggestion. You know, okay. so they want to say it humbly, putting a suggestion forward, not imposing anything. Could be a language is very funny, English, you know, as we are. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Thanks, 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 Thank Captain Gajanan. But yes, sir. I, I wanted to correct the flow so that they don't carry a misconception in their mind. Our final aim is to teach you how things work at IMO. Therefore, I felt it necessary to step in. I now open the floor 
for interventions. Even the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, respected uh, chairperson and co-chairperson. We'd like to support Team E3's paper, page number, page 4.2.4, and support the marking uh, to ensure effective readability and facilitate easy recognition. We'd also support Team E3's papers, page number 8, guideline 3.4.1, in the uh, which uh, allow, which allows to segregate plastics. However, we would like to raise concerns on what will be the methods used for segregating recyclable plastics on board a vessel, as stated in the paper. And we would also like to raise concerns in guideline 3.4.2 as to what will be the course of action if the port reception facilities refuse to accept plastics if they have if even if they have a recycling facility. Thank you. Uh to answer your question on port reception facility, if they have, uh, there are various rules covering what the port reception facility can accept or not accept. If they have the capability, they will definitely accept. In the case of plastics, even for small nation states, if I recollect correctly, they can enter into small regional uh, areas understandings memorandum of agreements where if one part is not able to do the other one does so that is how they go about it but uh, you should not have an occasion to say that port reception facility will not accept it is not under the laws it is not an acceptable mechanism just to clarify uh, b3 yes sir thank you okay uh, f yeah Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair, for allowing the delegates of the Republic of Panama. Uh, we would like to extend our support to work with the delegates of Bahamas on their first protocol of an effective making system as it will be synchronized with our proposal about possession of unique identification number mandatory for all fishing gears. And their second protocol of the introduction of digitized database, logbooks, and other record keeping books to be used for garbage management plan as it will align with our ideas of common database to keep track of marine-based plastic litter. We, the representative of Panama, would strive to work with Bahamas in making this proposition a reality in the very future. Thank you, sir. Thank you, B3. Uh, F2, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairperson, for giving us the opportunity to comment. We would like to support the idea of using barcodes and marking systems in the fishing gear and nets act as it will help to keep the records of them and less pollute the water bodies. Thank you. Thank you, F2. I see the card of D2 up. D2, the floor is yours. D2, Samarth. Thank you, Chairperson, sir, uh, for, uh, for the opportunity to speak. Uh, sir, uh, we, the delegates of United Kingdom, extend our support to the proposal of Bahamas for uh, Maintaining maintenance of a garbage record book by port reception facilities. And so we would like to extend our helping hand by working with them to digitalize this, digitalize this process and make the data more secure by implementation of proposal of blockchain technology and Internet of Things at these facilities. Thank you, Chairperson, sir. Thank you, D2. And I see no other member state except E3 wants to take the floor. So E3, you can respond now. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair and Co-Chair for uh, giving us the recognition. We would like to thank uh, delegates of E1, B3, F2, and D2 for their uh, kind support. And we would definitely be uh, looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you, E3. Thank you, I Chairperson. E3 Swaraj, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairperson, for your recognition. And I would like to answer a queries of E1. They have a question about the what is the what who will responsible or who will take the responsibility of segregation of recyclable plastic on port. As I have mentioned in the second guideline, the as I have mentioned in the first guideline that the municip municipal in the my action plan that the municipal port reception port estate have to should 
request to the municipalities of their uh, particular port state to send their workers and officers for worker and officer for their maintenance and maintenance and awareness at the port then the officers are could be responsible for the recycling uh, segregation of these recycling plastics recyclable plastics and for their second for their second concern that the port reception facilities should not accept why the if the port what we will do if the port reception facilities should not accept the plastic then i will go with the chair opinion of our chairperson daji mayor sir thank you okay so you put me in the spot thank you great but uh, anyway uh, i suppose i can leave it to you to discuss with even in the break the details of how things could be done i'm sure if the aim is clear solutions can be found so with that i open the floor to f2 to introduce their paper Good evening to the esteemed chair, co-chair, and my fellow delegates. We, the delegates from the Green Sea NGO, are going to present the paper on development of action plan for addressing plastic litter from ships. Plastic is a threat to marine ecology. Its constant exposure to sunlight and water makes it brittle, and thus it breaks down into finer pieces. As per estimates, there are approximately six to twelve million metric tons of plastic going into the oceans every year. That works to be around fifteen shopping bags of plastic for each meter of the global coastline. Their increasing amount has led to the formation of garbage patch, which is a gyre of marine debris particles. caused by the effects of ocean currents and increase and increasing plastics firstly the ngo came up with the awareness creation plan to aware and educate the marine fraternity regarding the seriousness of the issue initially we target the marine personnel available on port and demonstrate them the seriousness of the issue with various survey reports and data available once it's done the next step is to do the same via social media to aware common public so that plastic from local water bodies like rivers can be reduced secondly after a lot of research regarding proposing an alternative to plastic we came up with the usage of hemp plastic which is completely biodegradable in nature and even least toxic its production uses 20 to 45% less energy than conventional plastic and it's affordable and heat resistant too plastic waste from ships are collected at various ports but it is better to use up the plastic rather than just dumping it so the ngo came up with two plans firstly we can channelize those plastics to plastic recycling plants where those waste can be transformed into something usable like bottles etc secondly after going through a lot many ways to transform plastic we came up with the process of plasma pyrolysis now using this plastic can be used as a raw material in order to produce methane and hydrogen which are both considered as clean fuel even ethylene and other hydrocarbons can also be produced from this which are raw materials for various other polymers this process is rapid and potentially cheap thus provides a range of business opportunity to turn something we currently waste into a usable product now i would like to pass the podium to shubhrajit shubhrajit please continue as my colleague delegate has clearly mentioned in the second slide about the large quantity of plastics available from the data it is very important to understand where the plastic is coming from into the sea 
the first and primary source from which the plastic is entering the oceans are rivers and water bodies if we are able to reduce or limit the entrance of plastic from rivers to the oceans it shall prove to be a great measure so now the question arises how the green seas would like to bring it to the notice of the imo to increase the use of interceptor for this purpose with the cooperation of member states interceptor is basically a floating device which has a capacity to harvest up to 1 lakh kg of plastics every day here is a photo giving the interior parts of an interceptor another source that adds to the increase in plastic in oceans is due to fishing vessels it is very evident that the fishing vessels have to carry a lot of instruments and materials made up of plastic for their work purposes at the same time it shall also be noted that these fishing gears when misplaced in the ocean greatly adds up to the increasing amount of plastic in the oceans as a solution to this problem we would like to propose to create separate passages in the fishing vessel area to be checked and the gears being carried would be noted and again be rechecked for any misplace of gears when coming back from the sea last but not the least we would like to bring it to the notice of the imo regarding some necessary amendments that are required in the point 2.4.9 of marpol 5 73 by 78 to make it fully implementable which states that seafarers are encouraged to recover persistent garbage from the sea during routine operations as opportunities arise and prudent practice permits and to retain the material for discharge to port reception facilities the first question that arises whether the crew will be able to implement the same firstly we would like to propose that some time relaxation be given to the vessels carrying out such operations that is the master or the crew should not be in any position to get charged or questioned by the charter or their delay during the process secondly lack of special mechanism in the vessels also adds to the point not getting implement to its full potential for this purpose the mechanism being used up by the ocean cleanup crew can be brought under the line the main benefit of using this mechanism is that it does not require any any extra source of energy for its purpose and the wind energy is sufficient to collect the plastic in the range of its operation lastly we would like to conclude our presentation by thanking the chair and co chair for providing us the platform to put forward our ideas and we are hopeful that with correct implementation of the ideas put forward we are sure to make about a change thank you for patience here now we are open to questions thank you f2 i now open the floor for interventions even the floor is yours thank you respected chairperson and co chairperson we would like to point out one concern under draft action plan in the penalty point penalty make point it states that a book must also be maintained to keep a note of lost equipment and the probable uh, coordinate of where it is lost must be mentioned in order to make its recovery easier our concern is how can probable coordinate of plastic make recovery easier keeping in mind the impediment in the form of ocean currents and harsh weather conditions thank you thank you even b2 the floor is yours thank you chairman sir for pro providing us the floor we the delegates of the united kingdom welcome the proposal of use of plasma pyrolysis for future generation fuels from methane and hydrogen and also support the proposal to encourage the use of hemp plastic as a nation with formidable r&d we extend our help helping hand for the support thank you sir thank you thank you for the cooperation shown b3 the floor is yours with the permission of the chair we would like to support the proposition made here as they have mentioned that through social media they can create awareness through which the plastic pollution can be reduced such initiatives should be taken at the utmost level our country too prioritizes these initiatives at the great level also we would like to extend our support and collaborate with team f2 on using plasma pyrolysis method which can be used for effective recycling of plastic in our proposed plastic recycling hubs we look forward to working with f2 towards this common goal thank you thank you very much b3 uh, d2 the floor is yours now or did you did you drop your card
Okay, then I will move on to B2. Bravo to Ruthwick. Thank you, sir, for your recognition. We have a small concern about the plasma pyrolysis. It means disadvantages are it needs large investment costs and operation, high operational cost related to that of incineration. Thank you, sir. Thank you, B2. B3, the floor is yours. Thank you to the respected chair and the co chair for allowing the delegates of Panama to connect, comment. <coughs> Panama is heavily dependent on inland fisheries as there are 13,062 individual fishermen based on this industry. We want to implement the idea of using interceptors to reduce the impact of plastic in the inland waterway, but fail to understand how it can be implemented by the Republic of Panama, which has a medium R&D in shipbuilding, as these interceptors nearly cost about 777000 US dollars to retrofit. Thank you. So B3, effectively, you are saying is it's a commercial issue for you. Yes, sir. Thank you, B3. E3, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair, for uh, giving us recognition. You would like to support the delegates of uh, F2 on the plasma pyrolysis method as well as the as well as the limit set for uh, as well as in the page three in the base paper we have mentioned the limit set for each car, each type of vessels to carry uh, in case of plastic usage. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. E three C two. The floor is yours. Thank you, Chair, for the recognition. We, the delegates of Denmark, support the Green Sea NGO for using hemp plastic instead of non-biodegradable plastic. Since the initiative was matched with our action plan, we would like to further cooperate in the near future. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I see D2, your card is up now. D2, you can have the Sir, sir I believe there was some kind of confusion earlier. D2 had already commented uh, before you uh, okay. asked, requested us to speak. That was Delegate Radhika Kumari, uh, who represented United Kingdom. Thank you very much for the clarification. F2, you would like to respond? Yes, sir. Thank you, Chair, for giving me for giving us the opportunity to comment. Firstly, uh, we would like to thank the delegates of D2, B3, E3, uh, then again B3, for extending their support, and we would like to work with everyone now coming to the concern firstly that of e1 the record book which we uh, which we have planned to build regarding the uh, loss of fishing uh, fishing equipments firstly the concern is to monitor the loss for so monitor the losses the probable location is just it will just provide a hint and that can also be calculated with the flow of uh, flow or the currents in case of tremendous weather condition, there may there can be a problem. But the primary goal is to monitor the loss of fishing weapon. Secondly, as the concern regarding plasma pyrolysis, plasma pyrolysis, yes, it's a one-time investment that is done, and it's yeah, the amount is a bit high. But once the plant is in process and uh, plant is in process. It's quite affordable and it's economic too, since the, it uses only the 15% of the energy produced by itself to run, rather leaving a great amount of energy to be distributed and can be used in various conventional ways. Thank you. Thank you, F2. And I see you have responded to the queries, some of the queries. With that, I have no further cards on the table. So now. I require my break. So it is 16.09. We will reassemble at 16.25. I'm going to take a bit of extra time because we have eight papers to summarize the session. So I will see you back at 16.25. Thank you.
Sudhir Sinha, sir. Sudhir Sinha, sir. I don't have his phone number. Let me try.
Thank you and welcome back, delegates. With the permission of the judges, I can proceed to sum up after the break. Please go ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Datta. Uh, I hope Mr. Ramamurthy is also joined back. Yes, I am back. Please go ahead, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, delegates. Thank you. We had eight introductions of their papers in this session. We commenced with A3, lost fishing gear, discarded fishing gear were discussed, the necessity of marking of theirs, and international data repository was idea was mooted. There were also issues expressed about the NX5 garbage record book being applicable only to 400 tons and above. And there was also requirement to look at the word reasonable pre precaution. And in a subsequent paper, uh, also certain views were expressed on defining these terms so as to be able to have better implementation. While in principle, all the member states agree to the concept of marking. However, there are issues with respect to its being economical, feasible, and implementable. Similarly, team B2 talked of passive fishing gear instead of active fishing gear to control the effect of discarded uh, nets, etc., and also mooted an idea of using submarines. Both the proposals didn't get got some support for passive fishing, but not much. There were still a lot of queries on how it will work. And also on the aspect of using submarines, there was a question on both the economical and security aspects of such a move. Team B2 is requested that if they still support the passive fishing gear concept, maybe they would have to produce another paper giving more details of how that will be applicable in all areas and not create other issues, especially where the soil is of different types and you have various other ecosystems down there. So further research work and work may be required on that. B3 paper introduced concepts of port reception facilities of a different nature by utilizing offshore facilities as an umbrella under which an offshore reception facility is made, and also utilizing decommissioned vessels or offshore vessels to be able to do that. While the idea was welcomed by some, the views were also expressed that a lot more views, research may need to be done on this to see if it is feasible considering the various aspects involved with offshore industry and whether it would be beneficial enough just to save port charges from coming in and disposing of waste when on a port visit. Again, the issues of lost fishing gear and re return of them having some financial incentive or subsidy as means to control not being discarded at sea, but being brought back ashore to proper reception facilities. Bioplastic was proposed by them, while the idea of anything which is more bio-friendly, eco-friendly was welcomed by all, but there were still issues raised regarding is every impact of this studied and given in detail. Team C2 also brought about the issue of the financial incentive buyback system. They also proposed a public portal whereby if any fishing gear is lost or cited, information could be shared all across. Uh, while it was welcomed by some, some expressed that it may also lead to a situation where due to wind and currents, data is available, but when administrations start spending money on trying to chase them, they may not find them there because either the sightings 
were not reliable or it has shifted due to wind and currents. So possibly some further study and the economic aspect of this public, public portal requires to be studied. D2 highlighted the issues on cruise ships and proposed a biodigester. While in principle, people accepted it, but had some apprehensions regarding the capabilities of biodigesters. So D2 is advised to give further information and further papers on such biodigesters so that the technical aspect of these equipments are clear, including the commercial aspect, and then it can be taken up appropriately at various forums if it is a suggested equipment for cruise industry. They brought in the concept of port reception facility data handling, which I will deal with in a bit later, which found support as people felt that that would be helpful in assessing whether how plastic is getting dealt with, which is a major concern. Lost fishing gear, incentive and training were also highlighted in this paper. Even brought in the concept, the concept of sap dip. We've been used to SOPEP. They brought in an equivalent plastic sap dip. Some support was seen for this introduction, and they are advised to submit further detailed papers on how this could be a feasible solution for vessels. Team E3 wanted uh, to bring about marking of gears. They proposed on that. Further, they also wanted the word accidental to be removed from NX6 regulation, uh, regulation 6, NX5. Uh, there was not much reaction to this. So at the moment, this does not move forward. Effectively, the regulations aspect where they were proposed did not get much reaction from the other member states. Member states are requested to study them. And if there's some amendment in the regulations to be done, they are, proposed, they are requested to submit papers to the next session of MBPC. Team E3 also supported marking of gear and also digital uh, movement towards the uh, movement, uh, garbage record book so that real-time data is available. Team F2 brought in the concept of plasma pyrolysis as a means for recycling of plastic into something useful. The issue generated interest among the member states. However, they would like more information. So team F2 is requested to provide more information to that at the next session, along with any other member state who has done similar research. and would like to share it with the other member states. Of course, F2 also highlighted biodegradable plastic, the necessity of a raising awareness and of marking of fishing gears. To summarize, the issue of marking of gears is an accepted methodology for fishing gear. However, how to do it remains not very clear considering there are commercial implications. Thus, all member states are requested to submit papers on marking as how that can be taken up. Further, as I stated, since on the regulations, there was not much discussion. Member states who have views on regulations and their amendments are requested to submit papers to the next session, which would also cover the issue of implementing garbage record book for vessels less than 400 gross tonnage. Here, I would remind member states that if they intend to cover fishing vessels under this, they must take care to correlate it with the other conventions and other international agreements to make sure that similar and not contradictory terminology or tonnages are used. With respect to the International repository of data proposal put forward by D2 involved Internet of Things, blockchain technology, 
I propose we set up a correspondence group under their leadership. Any other member wishing to join can join that correspondence group and they can come with a detailed report to the next session of MEPC. For dealing with the issue of substitution of plastics, ban on single-use single use plastics, and substitution by biodegradable, bioplastics, hemp, and other materials, member states are requested to base their R&D, industry experience, etc., submit papers to the next session so that decisions can be taken as to which would be acceptable because in all aspects, it should not be that we look at one aspect and then find that it is leading to deforestation, etc., as pointed out by some member states. So considering all aspects, uh, member states are requested to put papers on the same. Finally, coming to the last two topics, awareness training. How to do that? Social media was proposed by a member state. Other member states supposed it. Considering the experience member states have on this, it would be helpful if they could share their experiences either as info papers or as submissions to the next session. And also on the incentive and buyback methodologies, subsidy, subsidy methodologies which member states have adopted to assist them in recovering plastic from the oceans and taking them to the recycling facilities would be helpful and member states are encouraged to submit reports on that. With that, I conclude today's last session. Thank you very much, Kolkata campus delegates, for fruitful discussions. And with this methodology, we wish to take it forward. Thank you. Over to you, Gaurav. Thank you, Rajiv. That was indeed one marathon session. But I, I presume at IMO also this happens. So it's good practice and training for our participants. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we proceed further, I have a small uh, announcement to make. Uh, last Saturday, when I was introducing the Kochi campus, uh, I, I wrongly introduced Mr. C.R. Dash, Dash as the Kochi campus uh, HCW guide. It was in fact Captain Kersey, and the mistake was mine. So I take the, I will just give you a brief uh, introduction to uh, Captain uh, Debu, Captain Kersey Debu, uh, who is the Kochi Campus HCW guide, sailed for 17 years before coming ashore to set up the Anglo Eastern Maritime Academy Training Center in in Mumbai. He is currently its uh, director and principal. He has a responsibility for developing and monitoring training carried out at various anglo Eastern training centers in Philippines, Eastern Europe, and India, which involves around 19,000 seafarers. Captain Debu has been actively involved in, in uh, many maritime fora. He has served as a member of the Indian delegation to IMO HW subcommittee meetings over the last decade and has chaired the drafting group for validation of IMO model training courses in the last five IMO subcommittee meetings. He is also the recipient of the prestigious national award for outstanding contribution to marine education and training. My apologies for that mistake. And uh, let us continue. Today we had a marathon session of eight of uh, 22 papers. Uh, it was indeed long. And uh, uh, thank you, guests and audience, the, even those on YouTube, for encouraging us by signing in and watching the proceedings. Thank you, participants, for your enthusiasm and excellent performance. Thank you, guides and campus coordinators, for working with the participants and thereby enabling a high level of performance from them. Thank you, judges, for your extreme patience in executing the onerous task of evaluating the 22 papers today. But as somebody famous said, there is no rest for the weary. There are 22 more papers tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Uh, a big thank you to Mr. Shakti Rajan. IT manager at IMU headquarters Chennai for taking care of the uh, IT aspects and Mr. Sanjeev Mehra of the Institute of Marine Engineers for his constant support in, in matters IT and publicity. Special thanks to my colleagues on the core committee. 
especially Mr. Rajiv Nayar for making this event possible. Today we had the uh, Navi Mumbai, Mumbai and Kolkata campuses. Tomorrow will be the Vizag, Chennai and Kochi campuses. 22 papers. Tomorrow morning's program will start at 8.45 uh, sharp. Please log in accordingly and be well in time. Stay safe. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, Thanks the chair. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Main coordinator. Yeah, by chair. Thank you, sir. Okay, good night, everybody. Thanks, Thanks all. Good night, sir. Bye. Good night, good night. Bye.